Okay, let's get this rolling here. Need to fix something. Boom. And here comes. Yeah, okay, that's right. Click. Click. Allow. Kelly, stop. No. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Kirk Fromm is here. God, I love Kirk Fromm. You guys ready for the campfire? It's in two hours. Mega D4 campfire stop. Well, it's going to be the biggest changes ever to Diablo 4. I already know what the changes are, by the way. It's going to be a lot, actually. You might be surprised. Or maybe not. It's going to be pretty, pretty major. D4 saved. Some people will think so. Some people won't. Some people will hate it anyway. We'll see. We'll see. Let's move this over here. Michigan M3X, 56 month resub at T3. Are you fisting me, M3X? Thank you, my dude. When is the campfire? Two hours. Two hours away. I'm not ready to increase the corruption level yet. Let's go this way. How is the new PoE reveal? I think it's tomorrow, right? Isn't it tomorrow? PoE reveal tomorrow. Diablo 4 today, PoE tomorrow. To me, the sound is a little bit too high here. Let me turn it down. Let's go like that. Yeah, this is a big week for ARPGs. I am aware of the campfire chat coming up. They did brief the content creators ahead of time, so... I'm interested, I'm interested to hear what you guys think about it. Did I ever play Dungeon Runners? I don't think I, only have I never played it, I've never heard of it.
Hello from Luxembourg. Hell yeah, Luxembourg. How are we doing, buddy? And there's people from all over the world here. Hell yeah. Two hours, guys. Two hours for Diablo 4. I'll switch over like 30 minutes before. Check Discord. If I die for this, Lee. Oh. Uh, oops. Me. Give me one second, guys. I messed something up. Oopsie. Hold on a second. Be right back. I made a boo boo. Hold on a second. I messed something up for Lee, and I gotta fix it right now. Give me a second. I messed something up. Give me a, it's not gonna take me long. Give me two seconds. I messed something up. Okay, I think I fixed it now. Let's go back. Okay, I made a mistake there. That campfire in two. Yeah, you don't need leech if they can't hit you. One way you can get leech though is to put health on kill or health on melee hit will work. What did I mess up? Something for YouTube. Messed up something for YouTube. Not for anything right now. I fixed it. Should be fine now. Anybody ever played Brotato? It's a sweet game. I've actually I've actually heard that before. I've actually heard of that game and people liking it. I don't know what it is though.
JK just gifted five memberships. What a god. Thank you, my dude. B squared, hello from Seattle. What's up, man? Is it rainy over there in Seattle? Corin just gifted or donated $13. Said, these are for your godly guides on YouTube. I want to give something back. Thank you, my friend. That was super nice of you. Very nice of you. Appreciate that. <laughs> How's the loot filter treating you guys? It's on point. It's good. But the loot RNG Jesus hasn't been nice to you. Keep slaying, man. It'll the stuff will drop. I don't understand. I don't understand. How do I beat this? I can't click this. Okay. That was weird. Cuba Pudding Jr. Big Easier Mad Junglist B squared. Thank you so much for the subs and the gifted subs, guys. Two hours for the D4 campfire. I think... I think for a lot of these changes, a lot of people are going to say... These should have already been in the game. Like, I think everyone... I think everyone's going to agree that the changes make Diablo 4 a better game. I don't think anyone's going to think that it's making the game worse. But I think a lot of people are going to say, Oh, this should have already been in the game. Oh, that should have already been in the game. Oh, that? That definitely should have already been in the game. They won't make you re reinstall it. Easy. Too easy. They're killing PvE and Overwatch because eight hundred they need eight hundred people to make the game. I'm not sure. I don't understand. Were they going to have like 
Are you saying they were going to make like a campaign for Overwatch and now they're getting rid of it? Or you're talking about there were raids planned for Overwatch or something? I don't understand. I thought that Blizzard's resources would have only increased when Microsoft acquired them. Like, okay, you get the initial layoffs from a merger, right? That happens every time. For the industry standard, for like how, how severe these layoffs usually are, the layoffs at Blizzard actually weren't that bad. But then, I did not expect them to start cancelling everything. I thought it would enable them to do stuff. See, but that's what I said, though. That's what I said, and half the chat said that I was extremely stupid and I had no idea what I was talking about. I said, a lot of the- a lot of this, like, the- characters the the maps a lot of the a lot of the upcoming things are going to be done by ai and what half of the chat told me was keck w racks you don't know how ai works all ai does is copy everything they don't ha can't make any original content that is the equivalent of saying hey I think we're going to be dry, like, that's like being in the 1910s and, or whenever, the 1920s, and Henry Ford makes the Model T. It's an absolute piece of shit gas guzzler that goes 20 miles an hour top speed. And then you say, oh, yeah, one of these days, cars are going to rule our world. Oh, racks, cars, they take so much gas. We would need gas stations everywhere. There would need to be insurance for crashes. You'd need tires and mechanics and only go 20 miles an hour and there's no streets or anything it's never gonna work yeah right it's just, it's, a, it's the it's the same argument AI is gonna do AI let me put it to you this way AI already has a significant impact on my channel doing work for me already AI makes my thumbnails. I just go in and I say, give me a last epoch, st like, uh, take my uh, five years streaming every day. I said, because it was going to be a story, I said, give me, give me a thumbnail of a guy in a blue hoodie reading a story to someone. And then it spits out 30 options. Done. Boom. Done. Yeah, that's what people say about electric cars and solar solar power. Grandpa John, awesome. Thanks for the subs, guys. You'll make my thumbnails for me? I don't know. I don't know, Kirk. AI makes them for free. I don't think it's fair to pay you nothing. I work in automotive research and development, and you haven't been given a non-electric project since 2019. I mean, exactly. Um, someone's asking, I think we use Bing images, Bing AI, which I don't think is the best AI. It's just free. Might have to drop something. Uh, guys, let me tell you a story. Listen to this story. It's funny. 
at, I think at three different points in my content creation career, I paid three different top tier graphical artists to make me a blue hoodie logo. They were allowing me all the revisions that I wanted. I gave them like, I gave them like what I wanted my design to be this or that or this or that. Um, so after paying them hundreds of dollars with all three of them, we reached the same conclusion. You can't make me, you can't make me a hoodie logo. You just, you can't do it. Like, I don't know why this is so hard. It seems like the easiest thing to do in the world. But after trying for three times, I gave up and I was just going to use the picture of me playing the guitar for the rest of my life. Then, when we started using uh, AI to make our thumbnails, just for fun one day, I typed in blue hoodie logo digital art da 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 da. I gave it some parameters and I hit create and it created like, you know, 10 different blue hoodie logos. The very first one, the first image was the logo that you see me using now i looked at it i was like okay that one actually looks really good the very first one looks better than the other nine it gave me and this is a million times better than the months and months and the hundreds and hundreds of dollars that i spent paying an artist that's what i want yeah ai tax filing god Dude, can AI do my taxes for me? Well, like, for example, like, this is how I envision, here's how I envision AI working like alongside like I don't think AI is going to instantly take over video game artwork or anything like that what I think AI is going to do is it's going to supplement it so for example if I'm making a new game and AI can make me a thousand different maps. One of them is fire. One of them is a garden. One of them is a desert. One of them is an oasis. One of them is a savanna. One of them is sci-fi futuristic. You know, whatever. Whatever it is. I could pay one or one artist, one, to go through and look at what the AI created and their job would be to tell the AI, to train the AI, hey, this map needs to be brighter. This map, you need to remove all of the orange in this map and replace it with this color. This or that or this or that, you know what I mean? And that is how I envision it working together. Instead of you hire a bunch of artists to design the maps, you hire a bunch of artists to work with AI to make the maps that they envision. That's how I, that's how I, it goes in my mind anyway. Because that's exactly how it works with our thumbnails. Exactly like that. Here's what I want you to make. It tries to make it. Okay, I like what you did here, but I want you to do this, and I want you to stop doing this. It gets better, it gets better, and then you finally have the thing that you actually wanted in the first place. Another thing that AI does sometimes is it can actually just come up with good ideas for you. Where you're sitting there and you're like, show me a massive celebration. Like Diablo for finally making, you know, amazing change. Show me, show me a, um, an HD wallpaper of a, of an incredible celebration. And when it's vague, when it's open like that, you never know what you're going to get. 
then they might give you an idea. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a cool idea. We could do something with that. Okay, now I want you... Oh, fireworks. Yeah, so do something with fireworks like this. True, but AI is average. Uh, well. AI is average? What? Okay, boys, big fight here. Here we go. Good fight, good fight. Here we go. This is what I wanted. I want the Void Res for sure. One off of the nut low roll, but... It's not a genius. It's average by default. Um, well, I'm not sure I agree with that, but it's only going to get better. It's not going to get worse. I'm not sure that I would agree that AI is average. Urban, hey duck, smile dune smile dune Am I waiting for the next PoE league? Yes, I will be there. I'll be there. How many classes are there? There are 15 masteries. Three base classes, 15 masteries. That's how it will work in the beginning, Greg, right? AI will do a lot of the manual labor jobs, and then humans can focus on being more creative or whatever until uh, until AI gets smarter, and then it's I think it's going to bleed over and take even more stuff eventually. Fizz, 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 fizz. Okay, so these idols are gone. So this is nice. We're going to be able to cap everything. So I need one fire and one lightning, right? And then our, our resistances are going to be capped. Let's go fire resistance. And I'll take whichever one has the most health on it. Five, five percent. And then I'll take the lightning resistance. I'll take whichever one has 5%. Beautiful. Look at that. Wow. Sometimes dreams do come true, boys. And we crack 2,000 health. Radix, how are you? Do I know what the PTR changes are? I do, actually. They shared it with the content creators ahead of time. But I'm not going to spoil it. I'm going to let Blizzard tell their story. I do know what's coming. In my, in my opinion, the changes are very significant. And they will, they will massively improve the game. But the million dollar question is, will people care? Will people care is the million dollar question. And the answer to that, we will find out in one hour and 45 minutes. You're going to look into my eyes to decipher what's coming. There you go. I won't care. So I won't care. So you don't care. I care. I would like Diablo 4 to be a good game. Um, if Diablo 4... Okay, so let me put it to you this way. With all the changes that they've made so far in Diablo 4, they changed resistances, they let you port in Nightmare Dungeons, they removed most of the objectives, they added some uber bosses, but it wasn't very good. Um, yada, 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 right? 
with all the changes they've made so far, the bug fixes, da 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 da. And then you add everything they're going to present today. If you add all of these things up, which is essentially one extra year of development into Diablo 4, and you would have released Diablo 4 like that, if it would have released like that, I think people would say it's a fantastic game. But it needed to release like that. It's still shit, but you haven't seen the campfire today. One thing that I think is going to surprise you guys, there is something that is going to surprise you. You're going to be surprised how many things they're changing. It's literally like they took one of my 30-minute bitch videos and just said, okay, let's do that. Yeah, that, that, let's do that, 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 that. Yeah, that, 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 that. Yeah, let's just... You're gonna... I think you're going to be surprised. There's quite a few changes coming in the campfire. You're going to see. Be right back one second.
Alrighty. Woody says blasters will be disappointed, but the casual community will feel good. I agree with that assessment. Dozeball just gifted 10 subs. Are you kidding me, Dozeball? They, uh, Viking, Noxious, Fiddle, Phoenix. Thank you so much for the subs, guys, and the primes. Callie, stop it doing that. No. Don't do that. My resistances are capped and... I have 2,100 health. Getting there. I need way more health than this. On my BIS planner, I have 3,300 health, so... Let's go get some prophecies here. But do you have crit avoidance? I don't, but I have reduced damage from crits. I thought I had another roll of it. Yeah, reduced damage from crits again. So I got... I got that. Okay, let's get some prophecies for some three LP gel cores. <laughs> this works. Temporal Sanctum works for me. This works for me. Fine. I need unique dagger thingy, my bobs. That's beautiful. Boy, I need to kill these siege golems. Drixus, how we doing, man? Somebody gifted memberships. Jeff gifted 10 memberships on YouTube. This guy, man. Thank you for that, Jeff. You're the man.
Campfire is coming up here. Father's time, Mr. Main. So much for the subs, guys. No, you demand. No, you demand. Guys, I learned something from one of my Twitch viewers the other day. Did you know that Jeff Bezos has a poor Mexican cousin named Jefe Pesos? I had no idea. Why is everybody laughing? That's his brother. Or his cousin. Oh, hell yeah. Listen to this song. You're playing FF7 Rebirth? I'm in Chapter 9. I'm running around doing the Cactuar... Uh... Thingies. And I'm going to go look for the Tonberry King. Wait a second, this isn't D4. We're going to, We'll swap categories in about one hour. It, it doesn't start for an hour and 30 minutes. If I, w if I would have started the category in T4, then I would have heard the whole time, Rex, this is in D4. <sighs> so, to avoid that, we'll only switch like 30 minutes before the campfire starts. And then if one person says that this isn't D4, I'm going to call the dildo police to run around and go slap everybody across the face with one. I think it starts in an hour and 30.
gone. All right. Let's go over here. You absolutely love the build and never killed bosses so fast. Yeah, this this build rules. I'm actually trying to I'm way more concerned with my defense than I am with my offense. But my offense could get so much better. Nice. I need to tack on a thousand health onto my build. And I need uh, my resistances are capped. I need to raise my endurance threshold by a lot. Actually, my endurance threshold is great. 1260? That's actually pretty damn good. I definitely need more armor as well. Need more armor, a lot more armor, and I need more. I need to cap my endurance. My endurance needs to be 60. I need to cap that. Um. And then a thousand more health, and then I should be, then I can focus on damage. I'm still running Acid Flask, yep. LP Excusey I got gel cores but they're only 1 LP Yeah, I have a lot of 1 LP smoke weavers though. Okay, stash tab number 33 is done. Time for 34. Okay. Dude, there are no Jim Tomes. Wah. Is a skill considered a spell? You're going to have to mouse over it and see the tags. 
So for example, this is not a spell. This is a throwing attack. This is a throwing attack. This is a traversal. This is a throwing attack, and this is a melee. <laughs> Faith, thank you for that sticker, the little hippo. Heck, W. Do I get full price for the stickers? I let me be com I'm going to be completely honest with you Faith. This goes for YouTube and for Twitch. I genuinely have no idea. I don't ever look at the the monetization payout breakdowns. If someone offered me a quiz on what percentage of subs I get or bits or stickers or super chats for a million dollars I had to get it right I would literally guess on every single question I have no idea I got no idea it's a good question though I should know the, these answers I just don't YouTube takes 30% of donations is that true Is that actually true? That's like crazy bad. Isn't it? If you want to donate to a creator, YouTube takes 30% of it? No, someone says no, YouTube takes 10. But people are saying it's, it is 30. All right, now we have to Google it. Half the people are saying it's 30, half the people are saying it's 10. Stone says it's 30, he just looked it up. How much does YouTube take from stickers and super chats? And I will never, ever, ever, ever super chat in someone's YouTube stream. Like, I'm, I'm not telling you guys not to do it. But I'm saying me, as, me as a viewer, I will never do that now. No, knowing that, I'll never do that. I'm going to go to their PayPal and just give it to them. 30%. Huh? That to me is insane. Thank you for asking me that question, by the way. I genuinely had no idea. Thirty percent, huh? Yo, I direly need this. This thing that we just got. Beautiful. Doesn't Twitch take 50%? It used to. Twitch has changed their mind like 300 times, which is why I don't know the answer. They were switching it to 73 30 if you're a partner plus and then there was a 100k cap on how much you could make and then I think they removed the cap I don't know they changed mine like 10,000 times so I, I again I don't know the answer here's what I think it is if I was to guess I think I get 70% of the sub and there's no cap. I think that's what they're landing on right now.
I think they removed the cap. It used to be 100k. And now there's no cap. Because the cap only hurts the best content creators. If you hurt the best content creators, they leave. So... You're drinking coffee, Boiler? How do you make your coffee? Do you just drink it black? Do you put cream and sugar in it? What do you do? You put half and half and sugar in it, but not a lot of either. That's exactly what I do. I put cream and sugar in my coffee to make it taste better, but I don't, I don't drown it in it. I just put enough to make it taste good, and that's it. What graphics card do I have? 4090. Starforge hooked it up. You like your cream with a, with a splash of coffee? Yeah, you, just, you start off 80% of the cup is half and half. You think Starforge is the best? I'm going to be honest. I really, really, really like my Starforge PC. If Starforge wants to stay with me, I will 100% stay with Starforge. I just genuinely like this PC a lot. When is the campfire chat? One hour, 12 minutes. We'll switch over 30 minutes before it starts. Do I expect anything big from the campfire chat? The changes are quite significant. I already know what's going to happen. I already know what the changes. Can you have a Starforge PC, but you don't have any cash? Oh yeah, Cajun. Let me let me get you a Starforge PC. No problem. Yeah, anybody anybody else in chat? I mean, uh, yeah, I can I can just conjure them up out of nowhere. Does anybody else want one? By the way, by the way, Um, my YouTube manager. Okay, we have a we have a finale to the story. So, for those of you that missed the story, on Friday, I released a detonating arrow marksman guide. 
I incorrectly, people incorrectly reported my video as stolen content. I didn't steal anybody's content. It's whatever. YouTube demonetized my video. I appealed it and I said, I did not steal the content and I can prove it. YouTube automatically declined me. Their system doesn't give a shit what I can prove. I reached out to my YouTube manager and we were wondering if the YouTube manager would do anything about it. The YouTube manager appealed it with YouTube and won. My video is now monetized again. It got reversed. He did reverse it. He did reverse it. And so the last question that I have, I told him, thank you, and I'll consider this a win. But my question to him was, how can we stop this from happening in the future, although I don't think it's ever going to happen to me again? And the other question is, is are you going to give me the money back for all the views that we got on the stream for this last week? So we'll see. We'll see if if we can get that back or not. Yeah, he said sorry. Again, it wasn't it wasn't his fault. It wasn't him. It was it was his community. His community thought I stole his content. I'll watch it again. No, it, thank you, man. You don't have to do that. The only reason I'm just giving you the ending to the story. Uh he did solve it for me. Again, let me be clear. It wasn't Matt who did it. Matt did not report me. Matt did not say that I stole his content. Matt did not tell his community to report me. So it's not Matt's fault. He even apologized to me for something he didn't even do. So that was nice of him. He didn't even do it. So... No retaliation needed on Matt, and, and we wouldn't retaliate anyway. No retaliation needed. Yeah. He apologized for something he didn't even do. I knew he didn't do it from the beginning, but his, his viewers thought that I stole it. I could kind of understand why you would think that, but... You can't report somebody before you get any information. If you report somebody as fraudulent content, then you might want to do at least, I don't know, 10 seconds of research. If anybody would have came to my stream and asked me if I stole his planner, I could prove to you that I didn't because I built the planner from scratch on stream with chat and I changed my mind a hundred times. And the planner is not the same as Matt's. So, it's very easy to see I did not steal his content. It's clear as day. But no, they reported me first. And then now we're in this position. Father, Mr. Trulim, Confuse, Trogdizzle, Boz, Franco. Thank you so much for the subs, guys. Yeah, it is pretty cold in here, actually. Did you order Chick-fil-A? Oh. Yeah, do you want to punch in what you want? God, I love Mario music.
Were you talking to me? Oh, what? What? <laughs> I thought you were talking to Callie. What? What happened? Best unique ring for this build? Uh, well, the best one would be red ring, but red ring is very, very rare. Siphon of Anguish is very good. Uh, Ocheron is very good. Can I just call it Ocean? I can't say that word. I'm just going to call it Ocean. I'm too stupid. What? What did you say? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, we can. What do you want to do? Guys, Sarah and I had a very, very, very exciting Helldivers experience last night. God, it was good. Fired up Helldivers. Spent one hour trying to get each other to... Uh, uh, on each other's friends list, spent one hour Googling Reddit, YouTube, everything, how to get, how to accept friend requests. People say it's like a massive bug where you, it just doesn't work. And then we said, okay, well, I guess, uh, I guess we will, um, Just not play. Just not play. So, we didn't play. Simple as that. We couldn't... We couldn't... We couldn't get in the game. Simple error. We couldn't uh, get in each other's lobbies. Cross-platform friends is bugged. When are they going to fix it? What did you just think of? Yeah, people are saying it is crossplay is bugged here. What version of the song is this? It's a live cover by I think their band name is called Stranger Boy. They actually have way better covers than that one, but for some reason they don't put them on Spotify. I don't know why. Oh, Callie did the funniest thing when I was out there. You would have died laughing. I was, one of the tree branches fell down. So I was like kind of jumping on it. It was a big branch. And then I was chatting on the phone and then I saw Callie zoom by me and she had the branch in her mouth. <laughs> it was like four times bigger than her. She was just running around with it. I'm like, wow, Callie, I've never been so proud. Who picks my playlist? I made this playlist, Kirk. I made it a long time ago. Anybody can use it, exclamation playlist. I just put in a bunch of songs that I like and I just sent it. That's it. There's pretty much no rap and there's no country. Anything else is fair game. There are some Eminem songs by popular request. I didn't originally have Eminem in the playlist, but I can I can tolerate him, so the most country thing you'll see in my playlist is John Denver.
But if I hear one more song about blue jeans and trucks, then I'm gonna commit Sudoku. You could consider maybe... I like the Dixie Chicks, so... Dixie Chicks can be in there. I don't know if they're country or not. I love Dick, yeah. That's why I put the Dixie Chicks in there. Their name is practically the Dicks. Love Dick. Yeah. Mods loves cock and Rax loves dick. Tfos getting in the stream first. How does he do it every time? I joined in an awkward moment. What's awkward? What? What? This is a normal moment. Yeah, commit Sudoku like the Jam Japanese Samurais. That's what they call it. Sudoku. Did I comment on the patch notes? What patch notes? No, guys. It's Sudoku. Yo, this has got to be a glitch. Uh, I can't see. Okay. Okay. Got to report this. Excuse me, EHG. EHG, are you fucking kidding me right now? Are you fisting me right now? Wait. Yo, I'm gonna lose my character. Yo, can I get the fuck out of here? What is happening here? I don't want any of these blessings. Uh. God. Alright. Get the fuck out of here. <sighs> Alright.
All right. Lonko, thanks to the 43 man shard of hate. Thanks for the sub. There's new last epoch patch notes. Okay. Uh, where, where? Anyone have a link for me? Thank you. Okay, none of these, none of these seem super game breaking, but it's nice to know that they're still updating the game. Yeah, the I don't mind the ballista thing because it's a bug. We voted for that, right? Seventy five percent of people, including myself, voted that if you have a bug, you can fix it. So no problems there. Would the Fighting Chance Gloves work well with the Detonating Arrow build? Fighting Chance is with melee stuff, right? I have to read exactly what they do. Campfire chats in 50 minutes. the ultimate goal in the game push corruption get rank run on the arena leaderboard next patch they have a pinnacle boss system coming out prepare to die laughing oh i don't think any of you guys are going to be laughing the the changes are going to make the game a lot better the question is going to be, do you guys think it's enough? A lot of people have already written off Diablo 4. They don't give a shit about Diablo 4. They don't care what happens. The campfire chat's going to make the game better, for sure.
I don't think anybody's gonna be laughing. Um... I think it's gonna vary. Do I think it's enough? I think it's gonna vary. I think some people are gonna be like, okay, that's... Those are tremendous improvements. And some people are gonna... And then you're gonna get some people like, I don't care. Diablo 4 sucks. I'm never playing it ever again. You're gonna get both. It's gonna vary person to person. Um... I would say this patch is meeting meeting my expectations for how big it needed to be. I think it needed to be quite significant to win back just about anybody. I think the people who have even a shred of faith in Blizzard anymore will be... I'm guessing they're going to feel pretty good about the campfire. You don't know season. F you don't think season four will be enough, but you don't know what's coming out in season four, right? You guys know that items are changing, right? But do you know all the other things that they're doing? That's not all. They're, that's not all that they're changing. It's going to be a big presentation. That's just one of the topics. You, you want to know something, guys? This happened this morning. This morning. I had a conversation with somebody, with an agent from a sponsor, for, with a, an agent that wants to give me sponsors. And he asked me a question, and he said, Rax, you know, I work with a lot of, you know, top content creators. Do you have, like, a minimum amount in mind that you want me to even consider for a sponsorship before I talk to you? This is what I told him this morning, a few hours ago. I said, you can tell me that I'm, that I have the wrong idea here because you're like the super expert sponsorship agent, right? But no, I never think of it like that because there could be a sponsor where maybe they don't want to pay me very much at all, but the deliverables are very, very easy to do, and I really like the brand. So I think setting a minimum amount of money that I have to make is literally a very, very dumb decision. I will hear... Like I don't, I told him I don't want to do shitty ass mobile games. And if if the sponsor if the sponsor sounds dog shit, then don't don't share it with me. But in general, I'm open to hearing the pitch from anybody. Like let's have a conversation. That's my approach to it. Do you think that that's stupid? He said no. That's exactly the way that you should approach it. But not every content creator thinks like that. This is the same it's the same idea with everything in life guys. I would advise you in life don't make decisions on something until you have the information. A lot of people do that. A lot of people make the decisions on something before they even have especially especially when you know the information is coming. If especially if you don't have to seek out the information, they're just going to hand it to you on a silver platter. I would encourage you, don't make up your mind on anything in life until until you have the appropriate information. Rax, I got all the information I need. Diablo 4 fucking sucks, and so does Blizzard. Okay, fine. Whatever. But I'm telling you, people do this shit all the fucking time. And it, it, it genuinely surprises me. When I've had sponsors come up to me, or I read their initial pitch, and it doesn't really sound very good. I'm like, uh... And I, and I'll, ah, stop doing that. God, I got a fucking teacher, man. Callie. 
No. Sit down. No. Don't. It's fucking gross. You want to know what's weird? Callie never does that. Unless I'm streaming. Ever. She never does that. I, I don't know if she's, like, really done that even one time. And every single time that I stream, she goes crazy. Cody, heavy metal. Thank you so much for the subs, guys. It's not because she wants attention. That's got nothing to do with it. When she wants attention, she sits under me and she crawls on my leg. The reason that she does it is because she hears our neighbors shutting their doors and she starts barking. I've seen that I've seen people make this mistake in so many so many areas of life. I'll give you an example. I used to work uh, I'm going to I'm going to change the names to protect uh, the victims of the story even though there's no victims of this story. I got a new job and everyone warned me that there was this manager named let's call her Mary. There was a manager named Mary, and she was apparently the devil. She was the most mean person ever. She'll make you cry. She'll make your life miserable. Da 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 da. So that's information. Okay, I've gotten information on Mary before I've met her. Okay, I'll I'll keep that in the bank. I've heard this from multiple people, but I still haven't made my decision on Mary. Because I don't know her. You want to know what? She was so nice to me. Always. Never had a problem with her, ever. Never disagree. Never disagreed on anything. We had to work together on multiple different things. It was never a problem. But, if I had made my decision before I had worked with her, then I would have decided that I hated her before I even knew her. It is just such a zombie-like peanut brain way to go about life. For the love of God, don't make your decisions on something before you have the information. You liked Mary too? Nice. Mary murdered my family. I will put that into the bank, but uh, she hasn't murdered my family, so Mary's okay by my book. I'm sorry for your loss, though. But Rax, we already know D4. If you make a comment and you say, I don't like D4, you absolutely probably have the information to make that statement. What people were saying was, the Diablo 4 Season 4 is, is dog shit. You didn't even fucking know what they're doing. <laughs> People are writing off season four in the chat. They don't even know what they're doing. They haven't even heard the presentation. You can hear the presentation then say, those changes don't do anything for me. I don't care. I still hate the game. And then that would be fine. That's not being a peanut brain. Being a peanut brain is season four sucks. You don't even know what the fuck it is. Easy. Too easy. I hope there's matchmaking. You want to know what I would prefer other than matchmaking? I want something different. I want, like, the opposite of that. Instead of giving me matchmaking, stop making it, like, required that you have to play in groups. Like, you know?
Anything in D4 can be soloed. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the ability to solo something. I'm talking about you need to team up for Duriel and share the mats. Otherwise, you're losing all of your all of you're losing all of the value. Not asking to be. I can solo anything in the game. That's that's not a problem. What class am I playing? I am playing a rogue, aka the bringer of death. What would you guys say is the best base class with the most like pound for pound best like leveling and endgame builds across all of their masteries? I would say the best is either acolyte or rogue. I think it's either acolyte or rogue, top two. This Acolyte has the Wraith Lord, it has the Warlock, and even the Lich, the zom I think you the zombie auto detonating zombie build, I think that's Lich. And then Rogue has the detonating arrow marksman and the Falconer. Haven't heard too much on Blade Dancer lately. <laughs> Guys, anybody f familiar with the Helldivers situation? Do they have an update on when the crossplay is going to be fixed? Is that like a high priority for them? Have they said anything? Because I actually can't join Sarah's party. Thank you. Charlton, thank you. And one minute after the campfire is over, if you think it's dog shit, then that's okay. You can spam dog shit in the chat. All that I ask around here, and I ask for this for every gaming company, like Diablo 4 is the one in hot water right now. Who knows? It might be PoE 2 someday. It might be Titan Quest 2 next. It might be Grim Dawn. It doesn't matter. If they're doing well... Or they're doing bad, it doesn't matter. Listen to what they have to say, and then make your judgments. If you listen to their presentation and you still hate it, no problem. That, that will be some people. It will probably be a good amount of people, probably. Because people love to hate Diablo 4. Hating Diablo 4 is the new pink. Got some daggers over here. People hate pink? No. Hating Diablo 4 is the new pink. Two LP smoke weaver, excusey. Isn't that super rare? Two LP smoke weaver. Pink is not a popular. Color, that's dumb. Yo, some of, some of the comments in chat today are actually 
melting my brain. I don't... I don't know if I can take much more of this. God, whenever Diablo 4 comes around... Some of the comments, man. Just when you think you've heard it all. I... He's trolling. I... I hope so. Because if he isn't, may God have mercy on his soul. Take care. May God have mercy on his soul. Heavy Metal Cody, thank you so much for the sub, man. Yeah, there... There's some terrifying, terrifying, terrifying comments being said in the chat in the last hour. You just, we just, we need, we need to pray. Whatever higher being you, you, uh, look up to, we need to pray right now for their souls. We need to pray for their souls right now. All right, let me see if they have fired up the stream. They did. Okay. Let's change our category to Diablo 4. Let's go to YouTube, change our category to Diablo 4. So many people are joining as a member on YouTube. Thank you so much, guys, for the memberships and the donations. I appreciate you. It's harder, it's harder for me to see the YouTube things than the Twitch. I want to merge them much better soon, but I haven't found a good way to do that. You can merge the chats, but the donations is very hard to merge. All right. Let's switch to Diablo 4. Do they have the do they have the live stream up yet, the countdown? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it starts in 30 minutes. <clears throat> the campfire is delayed. <laughs> no, it, it can't be. <laughs> I'm just really, really, really hoping Um, the countdown is up. Okay, let's get that going here. Was it twitch.tv's twitch.tv slash Diablo? Yeah, all right, here we go. How is the volume here, guys? Looks like it's too low. All right, be right back one second. Here we go.
<clears throat> Guys, real quick, I'd like to give a shout out to myself. Chick-fil-A used to have me by the balls with their Coke. They have delicious Coke and the little circular ice. Every time I'd go to Chick-fil-A, I'd get a giant Coke and I'd drink it like a ravenous hyena. But I'm happy to report that I don't do that anymore. I finally get the little bottles of water and they don't own me anymore. Thank God. <laughs> Self control, boys. <clears throat> Did the dev stream crash? Oh no, there we go. Guys, let me let me lay one rule here. Let's lay one rule here, which is important. Some people are going to be spamming D4 bad or saying that they hate the game. Anything like that is totally fine. If you don't like the game, you're not happy, totally okay to voice that. Where you cross the line and where it's not okay is making racist, sexist, personal comments on the devs. Okay? Don't talk about the people. They're doing the best that they can. They're doing their job. If you hate the game, that's fine. But the last couple of campfire chats, people have been just sending out these personal attacks. It's not going to fly here. I will permanently ban you. You can hate the game as much as you want. Go ahead. Spam it. Get it out of your system. Start spamming it. It's okay. No personal attacks. No racist bullshit. None of that. <clears throat> It will just be a perma ban, and don't ask me to unban you. I won't. With that said, go ahead, spam it. Honestly, Seattle, I'm gonna take slow off because it's not gonna matter. I can't read jack shit anyway, so I'm just gonna turn slow mode off. So people can just go crazy. It's not going to matter. It's not going to. I can't read Jack. There's too many people here. Too many people talking. Can't read anything anyway. <clears throat> Captain Faint Dreadnought Ghost Runner Gifted 5. Oh, man. Ghost Runner, please spend your money on you and your son. Thank you, man. Can we put Ghost Runner's money into the Ghost Run Runner fund? Karma, Felden, Sheldon, X till Fruit. Torts, uh, Petito, Crohn's, Cody. Hopefully I got everybody. Thank you so much, guys. <clears throat> All right. Thanks for the good streams. You're welcome, man. Ghost Runner, you live in Seattle, or not Seattle, you live in uh, California. No matter how much money you make, you have to be poor living in Seattle, because or California, because everything's so expensive there. S same thing goes for Seattle, by the way, very expensive city. <clears throat> Diablo 4 is going to be good today. Let's do a prediction. Here we go. Let's do a poll. 
What is your preemptive ranking of the campfire? Not of the game, of the campfire. Did I spell emptive right? It's going to be godly. It's going to be great. It's going to be five minutes. It's going to be terrible. Zero back to last epoch. Create the poll. Paste the poll. Here we go. Everybody vote in the poll right now. Vote in this poll right now, guys. Let's see the poll. Show the results. Preemptive. I spell preemptive, right? Uh-oh. <clears throat> We're going to give it a big fat meh. <clears throat> Down below, yes. On the screen, no. <clears throat> listen before you judge yes sir holy shit there's a lot of people here everybody's typing jesus <clears throat> how many people are here there's 3.9 on Twitch, and there's... <laughs> How many people are here? 1.6 on YouTube? Dude, YouTube is coming back, man. Holy shit, there's a lot of people here. Jesus. Thanks for being here, guys. Damn. Oh, here we go. Oh, something's happening. It houses the loom. How's the, the volume, guys? Is it fine? Long ago by the brilliant mages <clears throat> Sultan Kool and Ayushan of Chaldeum. A lot of people are gifting subs. Derf. Thank you, man. A lot of people are well, subbing on YouTube and on Twitch. Ayushan. Thank you. Only to discover that the demon Someone gifted Malthus 10 memberships. Over the loom to True Tom. Thank you, man. Hell. Ghost Runner. Malthus God damn, is a servant man. of Diablo. He's unlike other demons we've encountered Diablo 4. Good, low. Low. Manipulates others, takes on forms other than his own. He has That's the loudest I can make it. Cool's prized That's the loudest I can and make it. How's that? Work with Ayujan to explore the vaults, gain access to the loom, and defeat Malthus. This season introduces constructs. These elementally powered monsters Turn were originally off created ads. by Ayujan and Zoltan think I to protect can. and maintain the loom. Unfortunately, Malthus is taking control of them. Can I turn them, off ads for this? I don't know if I can. Powered by various different elements, giving them different abilities. And strengths and weaknesses. You'll also find them, of course, in the vaults themselves, protecting the main treasures within. You can't turn As it off. As players engage with you the storyline okay. of the season of the construct, they're going to come across a broken version of. Let the me run an ad now. I will run it now. The Good idea. Is a special construct. I don't even know how to do that. The other constructs based on Ayjan's and Zoltan's direction. I'll run an ad now because it's starting in a few minutes. To follow your orders. Give me a second. The Seneschal Construct is your I don't even know how to it's do a this. Rebuilt construct I'll figure it out. That will accompany you throughout the season. Your construct's power will grow along uh... with you. The Seneschal Construct has many different abilities that can complement the player's build. It can deal damage, crowd control monsters, or even support Here we directly. Go. Run an ad you break. Or providing Here. you a damage bonus. Magical stones okay. are the key to customizing and empowering the construct. Here we go. I'm going to run it now. 
they are primarily found in vaults. The ad the failed stones because the, the channel recently ran an ad. Well, I tried. Playing through the seasonal content. I tried. The governing stone is a core construct ability, Sorry. while a tuning stone is a singular <clears throat> modification for any number of governing stones. As players are progressing through the season of the construct and they're leveling up their center shawl, adding new abilities and improving them, they're gonna find abilities that are gonna deal damage to packs of monsters, to single monsters, and also abilities that are just focused on. That is not what I found, Joe Pipora. I did not so find that my pet was doing damage to the monsters. One cool ability that was my is problem. My pet didn't do anything. Summons a magical barrier just around kidding, your I love Joe. That shoots down enemy projectiles. Another cool ability that your that is not has what I observed. Fire. It is a channeled ray of fire that can chain to multiple enemies. Use combinations of tuning stones to transform a seemingly simple skill into something truly crazy. Vaults are seasonal dungeons that are filled with a high concentration of deadly traps, where you can farm for the magic stones for your seneschal constructs. You can find the entrances in different zones of sanctuary. When the player enters a vault, they are met in a familiar area of sanctuary. Then, the player teleports to the vault proper, encountering great challenges. Vaults not only have our new construct family in them, but also new traps built for this season. Players are going to discover many new hazards inside these vault spaces. You know, whether it is spinning pillars, shooting Seeing out flames, this gives me PTSD. Players need to stay on their toes while they're progressing. Thank you so much for the subs, guys. Alive. I appreciate it. Each vault culminates in a gauntlet of true skill. Players must avoid traps while fighting waves of enemies in a powerful elite. If you survive that, the traps will turn off and the treasure room is revealed. If you get hit by a trap, you lose one stack of Zoltan's Warding. Zoltan's Warding is a special buff players can get by interacting with the statue of Zoltan Cool when they enter a vault. If they have a Pearl of Warding, Ward Woven Chests are special chests players can interact with at the end of a vault if they have enough stacks of Zoltan's Warding left over. If a player has more than one stack, they can open a rare Ward Woven Chest. Those have even better rewards. This season introduces our first stationary boss in Diablo 4. This is going to be a fight against this massive protective golem meant to watch over the vaults. The Malthus, once again, has managed to corrupt and control. Because it's stationary, it gives us the opportunity to include some of the season's new traps into the arena. This presents a lot of unique and new mechanics for the players to navigate and fight. The player is going to need to bring all of their skills and abilities to bear. I would have preferred to Tomb Lord. What about you guys? Controlled constructs. I would have liked to see They're Tomb also Lord again. Use of their own Seneschal. Make sure they remain upgraded in the fights to come. The Gauntlet is a new thick seed nonlinear dungeon where players have a fixed amount of time to achieve high scores by proving their might. Any player who unlocks World Tier 4, Torment Mode, can compete in the Gauntlet. The gauntlet starts several weeks into the season of the construct. At the beginning of each week, a new gauntlet replaces the current one. Unlike other dungeons, every time you and other players enter the gauntlet that week, it will be exactly the same. Same monster positions, same affixes, everything. This makes it a fair competition. Additionally, monsters within the gauntlet But I didn't start have my uber unique. This is meant to test your fully leveled up and geared out build. It's highly replayable, enabling a broad set of I filter choices. videos saved last Here's epoch try for you, hell yeah, and strategies man. for achieving high scores. Leaderboards are a place for top players to compete with one another in the gauntlet. These were set each week when a new gauntlet appears. There are solo leaderboards for each class, as well as party leaderboards that vary with party size. And of course, there are a set of leaderboards just for hardcore players too. But some players may not be ready for that type of play, so we've created goals for them as well. Each leaderboard has a ladder that you climb to reach it. Each rung of the ladder awards a seal that you can show off. And when you earn the seal of the worthy, you'll be ready for leaderboard competition. Can't wait to see you in Sanctuary. Hello, Diablo community. Welcome to another Diablo 4 campfire. How's the chat. volume, guys? Uh, I can't make it go up. We have to talk about Is today. I say that all the time. Uh, but I will say that this, <laughs> this yeah, time we really, we really, really decide. do. Yeah, let we'll, the people we will decide. let the community decide. 
I, I promise you, this this is this is a lot though. Uh, but <laughs> my name don't is trust, Adam Fletcher. Me, <laughs> my name is Adam Fletcher. I'm the community lead for the Diablo franchise. Of course, I'm joined by a wonderful panel a here, tiny plus bit. one How's other that? who is off camera and will be jumping in. Uh, we have Charles Dunn, who's a game designer on Diablo 4. Uh, Mr. Joe Shelley, who is the game director of Diablo 4. And Mr. Joe Pipora, who's the associate game director of Diablo 4. Hello. And we will be joined by Adam Jackson, who's the lead class designer of Diablo Still 4. Still too long. Uh, before we, we um, get to, to the class specific Okay, that should be uh, good, right? That should be good right there. Share today. But I know Joe wanted to jump in, talk a little bit about um, some of the things we're okay. going to be uh, talking about today. And then we will go through a plethora of changes coming to Diablo 4. And of course, details about the first ever uh, PTR, Public Test Realm, for D4. Uh, and for people who don't know, Public Test Realm is kind of like a private server where players can actually end up playing uh, early content and test that out and provide feedback to us. Um, so we'll go through all the details on that as well. But Mr. Joe Shelley, want to kick it off? Thanks, Adam. Yeah, so I want to frame this update. This is a season four update. We're going to talk a lot about systems here. And I wanted to do a little bit of framing. Um, when we think about um, Diablo, right? Diablo is an ARPG. Everybody <coughs> knows what an ARPG is, right? Um, it's an action role-playing game. Um, but it's such a broad category, right? You have lots of games that are ARPGs, um, like a game like Hollow Knight, for example, um, is an ARPG, but it's also a Metroidvania, right? Or a game like Hades, which is an ARPG, it's also a roguelike. Mm -hmm. Or something like Elden Ring, which is an ARPG, uh, but it's also Souls-like, right? So when you think about what is Diablo and what is Diablo for, um, you could call it a Diablo-like, sure. Um, but Diablo -like. another way to describe it would be as a systems ARPG, right? An SARPG. Um, what is a systems ARPG? So what distinguishes this kind of game from those other games <laughs> I don't that even know what that in is. the same space that are all ARPGs, right? And it's really about when you're making decisions and what the most important decisions you're making are. The most important decisions in a game like this are the decisions you're making before combat, between combat. The decisions you make in combat are important too, but those are the ones that are the most important. Action combat, RPG elements, and systems are all foundational elements of any, of any ARPG. I'm not sure I'm following this. But in a systems ARPG, the, the systems in particular, including the end game, itemization, things like crafting, those are what comprise the soul of the game. And they're the lifeblood of a game like Diablo 4, and they don't just have to be deep, but also lush, prolific, uh, exciting. So as many of you know, we've been designing this update for a while. Um, we're putting it on the PTR because it's important, and it's important to get it right, like Adam was saying. He's drunk. And everything you're about to, that you'll hear about today is from that S part of the SARPG, the soul of it. Joe, Adam, Adam, uh, and Charles are going to take you through the changes, all the changes, in detail. And there are a lot. So sit back. Grab a drink, get your React faces ready, <laughs> uh, and let's do it. Awesome. I have a giant well, Coke from Chick Fil A. Um, so I know. Uh, I don't know what that what we was. We want to do first. We we okay. kind of have a, a agenda of items, but one thing we do want to talk about really quickly is about PTR. Um, we do want to get some housekeeping notes and what players can expect from PTR. It's probably with nervous the dates for PTR, so when they can actually jump in. So. Season four PTR is actually going to start on April second, and it's actually going to run for a week through April. Imagine so if they started it on April. Jump into Fools. PTR <laughs> and uh, try everything out that we're we're about to tell you all about uh, here in this uh, stream. Now I know a lot of people are probably asking, like, "Hey, that seems pretty close to the end of season three. Is that enough time for you guys to actually react to you know the feedback that we're going to be getting from PTR?" And I will note here that we do plan on actually extending season three for uh, this. So season three is actually going to have a new end date. We're pushing it back a few I'm weeks. I'm totally uh, to okay with that. To ensure that we get all the feedback from this PTR. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind that at all. To make sure that season four all isn't ready for the love of God are, delay are right season and, three. And work for the I don't mind that at uh, all. Based off of everyone's feedback. So season three for is the now love of end God. on May 14th. For the love of God. And of course, God. with that, season four finish also season four on May 14th. 
So there are some uh, a few different. Uh, it's not even uh, that long of a delay. Up, uh, but for, for the, the love schedule. of God, so you'll see that in-game get it right. uh, message, which actually notes like when the season is actually ending. Change uh, today <laughs> probably um, with this new date for players. Uh, delay so that, it for a year again. We can I mean, make sure that we apply we all have the feedback to. from PTR, which starts on April second through April 9th. Uh, one other note is that again, PTR itself is uh, specifically for PC Battle.net only. So this just allows us to be a little bit more agile on our team. Does this mean that PTR is only going to be PC Battle.net only in the future? No, it doesn't. We are going to try to explore other ways of being able to bring PTR uh, when we do have a PTR uh, to, to players uh, in the future. Uh, but for now, this one is PC Battle.net only. So, And we'll have instructions of how to actually uh, all, get all into of uh, the, the public test realm client on you get uh, plenty of feedback for the PC, PC players client, uh, next week when we actually have a full blog that will explain PC kind of all the details Race. of how to do that well before uh, the start of uh, PTR in itself. Um, but then there's other notes with PTR uh, as well um, because uh, there's probably going to be a lot of questions of like, well, am I starting with like a level one character? Am I taking my existing characters? Um, since PTR itself is a like a fresh new server. Um, you will actually be starting fresh on PTR, but we do have boosting options uh, available um, because we need players to actually jump in and test out some of these, these features that we're, we're obviously in these system changes that we're, we're doing specifically for PTR. So I, I think we actually have a slide, I believe. Um, speaking of which, I know I, I, I'm actually bringing the camera back to me, <laughs> Lucas. Sorry. Uh, I, I've, I've seen a lot of feedback about, hey, you guys have a lot of slides. Sometimes the slides have a lot of information specifically um, in uh, them that we need to actually showcase. Because <laughs> Pull up there the might slides. Be a lot of Wait, Lucas. I will say we, we will use have too slides many slides today because there's a lot to share. <laughs> but we also have a live build, so we will actually be going to the live build to showcase some of the changes. Uh, just because we know that a lot of players want to see more gameplay or see see them in game, so we do have that here today. Okay. Now we can go to the next. <laughs> okay, so, instant slide. boost to a hundred. Uh, so there will be PTR Gold boosting campaign um, completion, uh, mount for, skill for points. Players that are jumping okay. into PTR. So you can just um, be a hundred instantly. Your character immediately up to one hundred. Uh, when you do do that, you will receive a hundred million gold and a thousand obols. You can do this multiple times. You can even trade amongst gold uh, across your characters, of course. And then uh, we will also mark the campaign complete. Com uh, com Completed for your character, as well as offering you a mount, okay, that's good. all your skill points, and more. He said doo doo. Um, skill points again. Paragon. <laughs> skill uh, points, Fog Paragon, of War the map, cleared. Altar of Altar Lilith, Lilith points gear. Will also be cleared. It's actually going to match the renown progress on your your uh, original Diablo 4 okay. account. So it's good. if you've already it's done test all realm. your They're give you everything. and everything, you'll end up getting that completely uh, uh, covered off on your character for PTR. Uh, and of course, all the class system mechanics, things like enchantment for sorcerer um, or, or like Book of the Dead stuff will, will be um, enabled for you for this character that you end up do creating for PTR or any other characters that you create. And then all your Paragon Glyphs will be unlocked and legendary drop rates will be doubled. Um, and I believe um, uh, Glyphs are also... Yeah, Glyphs um, are maxed. Yeah, also. Glyphs are also yeah. maxed up. So you will have that uh, capability there. Thank God. There are like a few things that will be... Um, not present in PTR, but that is, uh, like, for example, uh, one of the things is uh, Codex of Power, mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we'll explain why here in a, in a, in a minute. Um, there, there's some more details related to Codex of Power uh, for players to kind of understand uh, why that's not present there. So we will be accepting, of course, feedback uh, uh, for the PTR across all our different social channels, across all our different community channels, and we will be turning on a specific PTR forum on Diablo4.com. Uh, that is not on right now, so no one can actually see it. Uh, but once that does come online, we will also be checking feedback there. Um, so please provide feedback based off of everything that you are hearing today and playing through during PTR between those dates that we actually mentioned because the team is going to be looking at it and making sure that we um, can make any changes before uh, the start of Season 4. Um, Okay. So with PTR with coming, that, PC Battlenet only. The PTR, the like PTR is going to give you everything. Yeah, um, got it. Joe Pipe. We'll dive in. Okay. Yeah, we'll let's dive, dive in. in. Thank there you. is quite a bit to cover today. So let's we're dive in. Move briskly through parts. Let's go. We can. Uh, so there's three major things we're going to be discussing today. 
Uh, the first, Charles will be br bringing us through a number of itemization and crafting changes that you're going to see when Season 4 goes live. I want to I want to also uh, be very clear. Uh, and crafting. The changes we're talking about today are all going to be on the Eternal Realm and on the Seasonal Realm. Mm -hmm. Not actually talking about the season specifically today. We're really talking about this massive item update and, uh, and other these other updates. Which this changes kind of in parallel game. the season development during this time. So that's going to be the first, uh, this, uh, the first part. Uh, the next, I'll be guiding us through some of the new endgame content that we've, uh, we're going to be implementing and integrating into the, uh, the Season 4 release. Uh, and then uh, Adam Jackson uh, is going to be coming on to talk about a lot of the live class updates we're making across the, uh, the various mechanics of the game. So there's a lot to look forward to. Uh, let's go ahead and just, I guess, dive right in. Charles, if you don't mind taking us away. Yeah, absolutely. Let's start talking about uh, itemization. So when we think about the itemization updates, I think it's really helpful to frame this conversation around some of the goals that we have for the itemization updates. Okay, I like this so guy already. So our number one main goal here is to focus on quality of items over quantity of items. Praise so the So one Lord. of the persistent points of feedback that we've gotten since we've launched Diablo 4 last year was that a lot of the items that you find in dungeons and, and throughout the game, uh, you, you end up just sifting through a lot of items, searching through your inventory, and, and reading a lot of lines of text. And ultimately, a lot of the items just end up being junk for you. Yes! And that was never really... A, yes! It never really felt great. And, and so with this update, that's been our driving... Uh, our number one goal is to focus on making sure that when we do give you items, they're high quality items, they're much more likely to be useful for your build, rather than just flooding you with endless streams of often junk items. The second uh, goal we have here is that the best items in the game, the, the, the really pinnacle ones that you uh, get at the end game, they have a, a journey associated with them. Uh, as I said before, you were kind of sifting through your inventory and, and looking for these items, but once you found it, once you found that, that you know, perfect item. You did nothing. It, you were with pretty it. much done. It, it was basically a complete yes. item, and it, you're already yes, done with the item. You, that. You, you've completed it. He's so trying. You think that the game is a lot uh, more engaging when you have a, a yes. bit of a journey, an investment, uh, whether it be in time, crafting materials, and, and you really get to customize and make items your own and make it feel like this is for me and my build and my character. Yeah, and feel that power progression too. It's so Absolutely. The experience. Yeah. Yeah. And the third goal that we have here is to focus on moments of surprise and delight in, in the itemization chase. Th this you mean like getting a double to, mage blood drop? Moments of, you know, hey, I found the item. You get really excited about it. And you're just, you know... Right, um, right. You have these, these infrequent moments. It's not going to be all the time. But when you do find it, you're going to know it. You're going to feel it. You're going to be really excited about what just dropped. I'm going to feel it. Make me feel um, it, buddy. So with that, we have a, a number of topics within the itemization update. So the overview here is that we've got uh, updates to existing systems, such as uh, base items. Uh, Tempering, updates. greater got, affixes, uh, a few master updates that are kind of adjacent to the itemization They're, system. Are they finally doing the Codex uh, we've of got Power? Some updates to Codex of Power, which we sort of alluded to earlier, and I uh -oh. think those are going to be some Wait really, a minute. Uh, big wins. Um, we also have some new systems being introduced here. We've got. Uh, tempering, which is going to be a new customization system. Greater affixes, which Wait. help to uh, provide some chase in the end game. These are going to be some of those powerful items, ones that have greater affixes. And then once you do reach that end game with, with great gear, you're going to be able to masterwork it to really unlock its full potential and upgrade it to the best possible version that it can be. Okay. So let's hop into some of the base item updates. So this is where we're going to focus on making a smaller pool of affixes that are more relevant I don't and know, more man. potent. I like the damage on Tuesdays, build. personally. So as I kind of mentioned earlier in the goals section, a lot of the affixes and, and stats that appear on items, they were often very conditional, right? You had like damage while berserking or damage to close enemies or, or things that were hyper-specific and, and ultimately just were kind of meaningless in, in a lot of ways. They, they blended together. We really focused the... In this rework, we're, we're focusing on reducing that pool of affixes to be uh, more general. They're more applicable to a lot of builds. They're not going to be this hyper-specific conditional. And they're going to be more potent. So some examples here, we've got ranks of a single core skill. Uh, sometimes on gear, you would find uh, items that have you know ranks of upheaval, ranks of whirlwind, and ranks of double swing, all on the same item. And... Almost no build wants all three of those things at once. So we've made it so that, hey, only one of these can appear. That nice. makes just the subset of items that you find Should have been in the base be game, but I'll you. take it. And in terms of like being more potent, we're looking at things like in World Tier 3, only sacred items are going to appear. 
Um, nice. And then once you get into World Tier 4, only Ancestral. Only those most powerful Should versions of items will appear. Should have been in the game, but This means I'll you're just getting it. less junk, right? Sometimes you'd get, you know, sacred items We're in World Tier 4. Logic. And that never felt great. Because, logic. hey, I'm in World Tier 4, I should be getting the best items now. We also yes. get a pass on the affix values to make sure they're a bit punchier. That, you know, you can feel it when you really equip an item. Uh, this often was just, you know, some numerical tuning. Uh, in the past, you might get an item that said, you know, plus 2% critical strike chance. And honestly, the, it, it was hard to ever notice that. Um, exactly. Or like plus, you know, 5% damage or something like that. And, and those really small values uh, yes. were, were just hard to ever notice when you're swapping it. And, and it never felt like you got to upgrade your gear. Okay. So let's take a look at, at, um, at, at some examples here. Um, oh, right. So the other update is that we, we are uh, reducing the total number of affixes on gear that, that initially drops. So this probably legendary has to do items with the crafting, used to drop right? with four affixes, four lines of stats. This has to be a crafting uh, That's going down move. to three. And it then has to rare be a crafting items, the yellow items sure. used to have uh, up to four, and now they'll just go down to two. It has to be a and, for, for the crafting. Uh, uh, yeah, so it has the, to the be. goal here, once again, is is to really focus on the quality of the, the affixes that appear on the gear rather than just the pure quantity. And this also gives us room to uh, build on it in some of the later crafting and, and tempering systems. You, you are going to get more affixes, but the base item is going to start with a little bit less just so we have room to grow. Yeah, so he just said you end up with more affixes, also. Like, we know that but you right have now, to craft like, with That's what he just said, the with tempering, right? Trade in situations where he you just find, said like, you're going to get more affixes. Powerful template item. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get a max roll helmet with CDR and such, right? Like, there's a, like these are still really important for players. So as part of this change, we're, we are going to open up trading to allow legendary items and where, unique items. Where did Joe also go? Be tradable uh, in the uh, uh, starting in season four. This is a big change for us. Uh, now, one distinction here to keep people on to let people keep this in mind mm -hmm. is that crafting on either of these items, whether you're going to be tempering or master. Did Joe or anything Shelley else evolve into road, Adam Jackson? Uh, these things, like enchanting does today, these make these items uh, account bound. So you can't trade them uh, once you get them and after you've uh, after you've done some cra done some crafting on them. So we think this does a great job of making sure that the trade economy is still interesting and that when you're looking for a specific item or an item is dropped for you that a friend can use, it's going to be a lot easier for you to go ahead and hand those things around now. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's... <laughs> By the way, I'm going to know. Oh, Hi. Adam Jackson. Oh, yeah. Adam Jackson's, Jackson's not so here. Yeah. Trading is a big deal. Yeah. Very yeah. important. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm I'm okay. Literally appeared for trading. Yeah. Appeared, yeah, appeared for shot. trading. No. Trading fairy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's a very important note, and I know a lot of people, uh, you know, Let's might have this. saw this and thought, "Oh, rare items are now, um, you know, so how can much I trade higher it? value. Now you can still be trading these legendary items. Shadow find damage if over time um, for you, or you think they might be useful damage. for a friend? Oh, and also, I should say also, uh, uber unique items. Lucky are hit not going chance, to be six percent right, chance, four. nine everything elites is yeah, gone. Yeah, everything is nine uber unique. Yeah. And uber right. unique. Yeah. Thank those God. Are the most powerful items, and if you want those, you're gonna have to go and find them yourself. That's right. Those are the most powerful items in the game. There. All right. So let's take a look at uh, at. Uh, Closer example here, so we've got, uh, you know, kind of on the left, uh, before, this is a, a boned wand of serration. Uh, this was before our update. This is what you could currently get on live. And you can see how it's got, you know, you plus just intelligence, look at this item in two damage, seconds. damage to look shadow this, damage over time, effective words. enemies. That is a mouthful. I can't read. Uh, same with the lucky hit, uh, chance to execute injured non-elites. These are the, the really hyper-specific affixes that we're talking about that really... Uh, bloat items, it takes a while to parse this, like you just can't at a glance tell, hey, is this even good for me? Yeah, reading through a number of conditional additive damage modifiers is like when you're like item to item, it's just very, yeah. it, is, it is taxing. It, especially when you really fill up your inventory with, you know, uh, 30 plus of these items, yeah, trying yeah. to sort through them all at once when you just really want to get back into the action, right? You want to get back into fighting demons. Mm -hmm. God, so yes. in, in the, after this itemization update, in the after section here, we have got a similar item. It has intelligence, it has plus damage, that just applies to all of your damage, it's not, you know, hyper-specific. And we still do get a, you give you a larger bonus if you're hitting vulnerable enemies with this. Can and you get an item now that gives you, like, int, dex, and strength on it? No, in fact, because this uh, wand uh, is, uh, just has intelligence on it, it is just the main stat for your class. So if you are a sorcerer, you're only going to find intelligence on they items. They put the if main bard, stats find on the right and item so basis? And you still find all stat, right? <gasps> yes, yeah, all stat, yeah. Yeah. you still have all stat, but no more are you going to find, oh, I got you know intellect on my barbarian, that's just basically a completely dead stat for right. you. Got it. All right, so let's take a 
talk about some of the other additional updates that are kind of adjacent Thank to the, the main itemization updates. Um, legendary item drops from monsters that are level 95 and, or higher are always going to be at uh, item power That's 925. way better than farming them only off of Durial in the world bosses. And once you're really facing way better, the toughest monsters way better game, like that. we want to make sure that you're constantly getting the best possible items. This really comes back to our idea of you quality You can actually just play quantity. the game and get uh, good once items. Once you're at this point of the game, you don't really care about anything that isn't 925, so why are we dropping that for you, right? You're gonna be kind of graduating out of caring about item power because you just know that everything I'm getting is the maximum item power. Thank you. Uh, next, we've done a pass to update our gems. They are a little bit simpler. Some of the gems used to have, uh, once again, those very conditional things <laughs> like critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies was like one stat on one gem. Uh, so we kind of simplified it, so now we just have bonus critical strike damage or bonus vulnerable damage. Uh, we've also added uh, some, some updates to have core stats on them. So some of the gems will have strength, some will have dex, and so on. <laughs> and they'll have a little bit of a longer crafting tail. Uh, they're a bit more powerful at the top end, but they do require a bit more investment to really unlock that highest power level. And okay. once you have all the gems that you want, uh, excess gems will now sell for quite a bit more gold. So that way, you're, you're not really going to waste once you, you have kind of found Access those best gems. Access gems sell for gold? Additionally, we've done a pass on the salvage uh, crafting and rewards have all been uh, retuned for this new world where we're dropping you know, drop less rates. items than before. Thank you. Uh, once again, we're, we're focusing on you have less time sorting through your inventory and more time getting back in the action, more time slaying enemies uh, to find those items. Yeah, there's much less cruft in this version of the feature, right? Yeah. Like you, you're not walking out of a nightmare dungeon with 25 items mm -hmm. no. you have to go and deal with it the, uh, back at the... Uh, I right. told them this in the but alpha But the ones that test. you do have are much more likely to be relevant and useful to I you. I said every like dungeon I run, my inventory is full, don't release the uh, game Additionally, like we've uh, item rerolling the enchanting system at, at the occultist. Uh, we know this has been, uh, it has like a scaling gold cost currently. And that just keeps on ramping up. If you want to keep fishing for that perfect affix, it could cost millions upon millions upon millions of gold. Uh, we put a cap on that. Uh, we don't think it's really healthy to have that actually Thank scale infinitely. You. It'll still get a, a little high, but it, it's not going to go to infinity. Thank you. Um, we've taken a pass on the materials, the crafting materials, uh, things like ore and herbs, and some of the other crafting materials in the game. And a lot of the ones, we had some variety of, of like common herbs. So... Uh, that were found in different zones, and, and there was some nice flavor there, but ultimately they didn't really provide much compelling gameplay. So we've consolidated all of like the common uh, crafting materials into just a single type, just, uh, just basically common herbs. And then there are still some rare ones to find, to find uh, you know, to craft the most powerful elixirs and, okay. and so on. I didn't um, think that was a big problem you know, with the game, that but system, that's fine. So your collection uh, I didn't think that is was a little a bit easier problem. and more streamlined. Yeah, we also removed things like there's like a lot of monster parts like uh, like a pale tongue and things mm -hmm. like that are also have been removed as part of this experience. It's gonna make it a lot easier to craft oh, elixirs thank you. in this new world. Absolutely, so, and, and you don't have and, to scroll through that tab so long to see yeah. exactly yeah. what material you want to <laughs> yeah, yeah. craft with. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll get rid of pale just, tongue. You know, thank fed God. towards that same goal. Mm -hmm. um, and then the final update we've got is uh, updates to the Forgotten Souls, right? So the, the late game crafting uh, material that you use for a lot of the enchanting or or other crafting systems. Uh, we're making them a little bit more accessible. Uh, they'll come from Whispers of the Dead caches, and they can also rarely drop globally from, from any elite in the game. And this is a really cool moment. Good. Um, that, that you kind of have this, this jackpot moment. Uh, it, it's pretty rare when you kill elites, but there is, there's a moment where you just get like this explosion of loot, uh, and it you know, you know, sp uh, spits out a ton of, of the Forgotten Souls, or, or other loot, or You're gonna put um, exciting things material. into the and, game? And that's, that's a really exciting moment <sighs> uh, when you encounter it in-game. Is this even it's, Diablo it's rare, 4? But, you know, you, know you kind of hit the jackpot. Thank God. Uh, when, when that does happen. And for Forgotten Souls, that can happen outside of Helltide, right? Oh yeah, that can happen yeah. on literally any It's like a scare up explosion yeah. in PoE. Uh, also, we're looking at uh, updating our uniques. So, unique items are, you know, these really build-defining, flashy, uh, unique items, right? They are, they are very powerful. Uh, currently, they're locked behind just World Tier 3 and onward. They're really late game items. And we thought that uh, to really get you into the fun faster, to get your build online, we've made it so that many You're of our uniques in the game can now start dropping in World Tiers 1 and 2. Wait a minute. So you minute. can start getting them early <laughs> on in the experience the and really word? get your build going uh, much quicker. And then once you do get into World Tier 3, then all of the uniques in the game have the potential to start dropping. Including uber uniques, which are typically those very late game chase items. There is a chance that monsters starting at level 55 
uh, drop these Uber Uniques. It's a pretty small chance. It's very rare. But it's one of those moments that you're going to find, uh, you know, if you're really lucky, you might find uh, a Harlequin's Crest yeah, you remember at level that 55. Play. You'll remember that playthrough for sure. <laughs> oh, you definitely will, all right? Um, and, and of course, they'll drop. Oh, I was going to say, kind of going yeah. back to our goals of the itemization update in general is that, you know, like at any time, something really exciting can happen, right? That's mm -hmm. the main impetus for doing this is that even early on in the game, you can get the main thing that you're looking for. It's going to be very rare, yeah. not very common, but it's possible. And even some of our other updates mm -hmm. coming that you're going to explain is kind of going along that vein, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, we want you to have the, the chance to, to really ha have that high roll moment, that a really exciting moment when you find that awesome loot. Uh, so that covers the uh, additional updates. Uh, we've got uh, to talk about the Codex of Power. Right, so the Codex of Codex Power of is Power. a system that has been in the game for since launch. And um, we, we're making a big update here. We're Extracted. now all legendary aspects in the game will start appearing in the Codex of Power. Okay, they're Every all there, and you can extract it, right? Um, and I believe we even have some, some in-game footage it that we can talk highest and value. Uh, go through an example of what this looks like. Yeah, we'll jump over One to time. Uh, uh, We have behind the scenes, we actually have Ruben, a.k.a. Bloodshed, former content creator, now, now part of uh, uh, the, the Blizzard team here on Diablo. He's actually driving us through through our build here, but he will be uh, driving through all our little demos that we have today. Look how easy so, it is yeah. that, that awesome. item is yeah. to read. So you can see in our inventory right now, we've got Edge Master's Siege Bow. And this has a little icon on it in the upper right uh, in your inventory there. And that indicates that if you salvage this legendary, it will upgrade an aspect in the Codex of Power when Where you salvage this? it. Where is this? That's right. So you no longer need to go to the Occultist to extract aspects. Oh, oh, the right. way. it's aspect in the... Aspect crystals are no longer in the actual thing the itself. It yeah, shows you that you need to upgrade Aspect crystals are gone. It's just when you salvage On the, the legendary, itself. it will upgrade it. So we salvage it. We can see that Edge Master's aspect has been upgraded in the Codex of Power. So we go to our Codex of Power, and let's go take a look. Um, so we've got Edge Master's Aspect here uh, that skills deal up to 6% increased damage based on your available resource when cast. It was one and uh, a half so that is the, it was a two-hander, right? Uh, kind of legendary double, rank of whatever. the one that we just salvaged. Uh, now this says 6% here. Uh, In-game it was 12% because it was on a two-handed bow, and that, that doubles the range. Yep. Um, but you can see it's not a minimum roll. Right now on on uh, live Diablo Four, it's always just a minimum roll, and so once you find something Thank. better, a better aspect crystal, Do you know how much uh, the codex is kind of this saves you. Now the codex this will saves continue you like being relevant spaces. because every time you four find taps. a higher roll of it, it's At going least. to upgrade your codex, and you can continually re-imprint this legendary power onto any <laughs> gear that you find going forward. That's right. So if Ruben finds a ten percent roll, you know, on mm -hmm. something else, then that is now going to he can go ahead and salvage that item down. That's good. That 10% version is now going to replace the 6% version he has right yep. now. And that's the new version that you have. So when we're talking about upgrade, we've been what asking really for like, this as for you a find long the better time. versions Thank of these aspects, God. they replace the older ones. Now, every time you, you decide you want to imprint out of the Codex of Power, loot isn't going to drop everywhere. We're going to have fun. So if you find a max roll the first time, are you I just can, super lucky? You have I can it read it. You are super lucky, and you would have that. And forever. I can upgrade yes. my can Codex of Power, and now I have However, staff space? The, uh, the really? rest of legendaries, you won't be able to find a max roll of these legendaries in World Tiers 1 and 2 when you're just starting out your journey. We have uh, extended the range, so a lot of legendaries used to say, hypothetically, if a, if a legendary rolled between 20% and 30%, uh, now we've extended that range from 20 to 35%. Mm. But those like 30 to 35%, the highest range, the most powerful versions, those are only going to be accessible in World Tier 4 in the later game. So this does give you a bit more me. progression. Least, so it's more you can of a find chase. it early, and you can upgrade that's it, not, but then you're going to find a, even better I don't versions mind that. as you progress through the World it. Tiers. And uh, if, if we actually, can we go I back don't mind to build that. really quickly? Because, yeah. uh, and, uh, <laughs> and if you yeah, can bring pull up, up that the Codex, codex again. of Power really quickly. <laughs> show the UI uh, yeah, a little bit here. UI. Yeah. Yeah. Because one, one big thing is like, there. Uh, I know we blazed My over this class really quickly, only are, filter. Uh, filters, ways of searching Unlockable from a which dungeon. Is really nice. And then of course on the icons as well, I think people are probably seeing these numbers associated. I know yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's uh, something that, w is changed obviously with this new code. They of put power a where filter it's showcasing in showcasing like, hey, there's a gold version of aspect of quickening fog right there, mm -hmm. which is already showcasing, hey, you have it completely maxed at 16 out of 16. And of course, there's different ranks as you're you're kind of like leveling up throughout uh, the the codex power and finding different aspects. Of yeah. It. 
Yeah, I, I really love that gold border to really indicate that, hey, you found the best version, you've kind of completed this. And uh, some of them, you oh, kind of cheat on it, right? That's Things that nice. only have one rank. Uh, yep. As soon as you're on the block, okay, you get that, the best okay, version. That's, yeah, that's a nice an example touch. one that you could max out in World Tier <laughs> <laughs> You probably yeah. have gold, you have the max Most of gold. them have now uh, like you know, up to 16 ranks is kind of our standard, uh, you know, for the most part. Um, and, and those highest ranks are just going like to be that. in the later world tiers. And for a lot of these aspects, too, when we went to 16 ranks on these, we actually extended the, the value, the power of these, and potency of these aspects upwards. Yes. Right? Yes. We didn't water it down. We actually extended it up. The border yeah, instead the should part, have been these, a blue these M. These increased in power at the highest level, yeah. just to make them really rewarding just in saying. World Tier 4 when you find them. And I, I'm sure there's people asking specifically about, hey, is this a seasonal thing? Is this an eternal thing? Um, it, this like, is everywhere yes. forever. The, this is the what? new world. This is the new this is world. A, this is that's right. All the updates we're talking about today, Correct. once again, are for the eternal realm and for the seasonal realm. These are not the season, seasonal updates on only. The yeah. computer. They're yeah. coming with season four, yeah. but they are applying to the whole game. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I, I do want to know, like, Codex of Power with seasonal outside? characters, of course, will yeah, end up vacuum. change like every single time. It does reset. Yes. It does. Yeah. The same way that it does today. But yeah, but eternal characters, you know, will just happen. You can actually fill it out eternally. Yes, eternally. Of course. All right, so that was a ton on the systems that already exist in the game, right? The base item affixes, the other updates, and Codex of Power. But there's also new, new systems coming up. <laughs> We're not done with that was, that was updates to existing things. New but systems. But we've got a lot of new stuff. So let's talk about tempering. Tempering is a new crafting system that will allow you to add really cool new affixes to your items. New and affixes. So I really just want to highlight that that this is not just taking those, those old, really conditional, um, nitty-gritty aspects. Uh, or affixes. This is this also includes a lot of really new, exciting affixes as well that we'll we'll showcase a bit later. Things like a uh, chance to cast bonus projectiles, um, increased effect size, uh, of bonus your skills, projectiles, and other ways of talking bone directly spear to individual skills. Bone spear necros are going to rule. Uh, a lot of this lives in tempering, and so this way you can really customize. Imagine your character, throwing three uh, bone spears. To your build and the skills that you're using and the way you want to play. So you might be asking, well, how do we temper? Uh, we've got uh, tempering manuals. So these are uh, items, uh, manuals that are going to drop from most content in the game. This isn't something you need to go target farm. You're just going to find these as you're playing. And these manuals are going to be a list of possible affixes that are kind of themed to individual builds. So if you are a uh, bone necro, for instance, you know the the um, a- the manual for bone necro might have you know things specifically to bone spear and bone splinters and <coughs> bone spirit. Uh, when you do the tempering, uh, which is done at the blacksmith, it will attach a random one of the affixes from that manual onto the item that you're tempering. Uh, and if you don't get the exact one that you want or you don't get the roll that you want, you can re-roll these affixes up to the item's tempering durability. Now, this is this a lot is last about example, epoch, so man. we've got an example where you can just <laughs> this is uh, last or, epoch. Yeah, like show walk through, it looks right? Like. Um, yeah, right, so here is uh, some screenshot <laughs> examples of the actual recipes that appear. So on the left, We've got uh, the Manual of Natural Motion. This is a generic recipe that uh, really applies to any class. It's got a variety of movement speed options on it. So you've got, uh, you know, you might just attach movement speed to your gear. Maybe you get a higher value of movement speed, but only after you kill an elite. Um, we, we have the option to uh, reduce your evade cooldown or give you mobility skill cooldown reduction. We've tagged a lot of skills in the game with mobility tag when, you know, things like teleport or charge. This is last epoch, man. Um, and then on the right, we've got one that is more specific to necromancers because this is the, the yeah, bone the necro one that I mentioned before. Is we've a got a chance for bone splinter projectiles to cast twice, chance for bone spear projectiles to cast twice, uh, increase the size of your bone spirit explosion, That's very cool. or mm-hmm. increase the duration of your bone storm. So if you're a bone necro, one of these is probably going to be pretty relevant to you and, and will be really uh, a cool way of customizing your character and your skills. Uh, so here's the, an example of the UI. Uh, so on the left, we've got you know the, this choker of ancestral charge, one of my favorite legendaries, uh, currently on season three, um, and and so it's got you know the the relatively simpler as, uh, affixes. It's got just max life, damage, and critical strike chance. And we we go to the blacksmith, we put it into the into the menu here, and we can see that there are kind of six categories, uh, with five of them being highlighted. Uh, these categories are the categories of recipes. So each recipe corresponds to one of these categories. And um, on amulets, you can put anything except the weapons category. So that's why you know offensive, defensive, utility, mobility, and resource are all highlighted here. 
And uh, once we go through this, uh, we, we can do this twice. Um, because uh, most items can only be uh, tempered once. You can get just one affix on them. But ancestral items, these really late game world tier 4 items, can be tempered twice from two separate categories. So you can't put, say, two defensive ones on there. You're going to uh, diversify. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we've got charge cooldown reduction added on the right. And we've also got some bonus damage while berserking. So we've got an offensive one here. And then we've got um, a utility one that, that gives us the, the cooldown reduction. Uh, do we have a, a, a live so example of this, so of going you're end this up actual with flow? So we a can more powerful what, item what than before for like? a lot of yep. reasons. Once again, yep. No, 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 Higher affixes, <laughs> one more <laughs> affix, <laughs> unique yeah. Yeah. affixes that you so chose. So in here we've got uh, you know, our, our bow of uh, branching volleys. So the item's going to be here. a lot more powerful. Because this is a weapon, we can attach uh, ones from the offensive category. And so here's all the examples. You know, We've got five different recipes that we've unlocked here depending on how we want to build our character. So if we want to do, say, marksman skills, so clearly uh, to put you on can there, reuse we can do them, marksman skills. And this will give us either bonus marksman damage. Um, uh, why don't we just temper it and see, see what it looks like? So we get this, this flashy animation that comes in, and we get to see, uh, hey, we added 29% marksman call. damage. Yeah. Right? It actually so, worked out quite nicely. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So Not um, scripted, by the way. Definitely not scripted. So yeah. Actually it wasn't. But it actually was. <laughs> <It's actually laughs> like you were actually <laughs> plugging, but you're right. at the, uh, the, the, in the grips of RNG. <laughs> So yeah, now one you thing have I want to, to call also looking one? at this is that like so we are in the season Ooh. the season four update or this PTR update that we're talking about right now. This is uh, this is our first PR, uh, PTR update. There's mm -hmm. a lot of changes we have going in, and there's some things that are going to be in a, in, are kind of in the middle of being polished now, or yep. kind of getting wrapped mm -hmm. up for some things in dev. So there's going to be some things that players will see on the PTR. They're going to feel like oh, this is like not quite like what I expect, or there's like uh, like there might find bugs and things. Yep. That's kind of the nature of the PTR experience. Yeah. We want you to report those, like Adam called out a little bit yeah. earlier, and that, get your feedback on the experience. Yeah, but, that, that, that's, that's actually a, a really good reminder, because I think a lot of people haven't experienced PTR, especially if you're like kind of new to Diablo and you do jump in. PTRs will have bugs. <laughs> it is yep. an early yep. look and at polish. the build. Yeah, uh, so in. there will be bugs, pol polished things that won't be incorporated. So yes, provide feedback that's, on all those things so that we can actually uh, hear those and make changes for those. But if we throw mm -hmm. back to Ruben real quick, the thing I wanted to point out was like when the master work, when the uh, the tempering process went through, uh, say you got twenty eight percent for the uh, that marksman damage, but the item itself got a slightly different number. There's yeah. just a bug that we've identified that we're in the middle of fixing right now. Yeah. Right, that's, that's a, I a thought they rolled bug. twenty nine. It's one of the things. But then they got thirty four. You know, we're working on. We're that's aware of, and, and going to polish up it's because yeah. that's the nature of game development. Just for the right? eagle eyed among the viewers. Yes. yes. Yeah. This is a thing. All right, so uh, a few other things to call out here. Uh, let's actually uh, close this menu and then take a look at um, take a look at what, when it's in there. We can talk about tempering durability a little bit. Um, so you can see when this is in here, we've got uh, tempered affixes one out of two because this is an ancestral item. You can temper it twice yep. uh, from two different categories. So you're going to be able to get put one weapon and one offensive on there. Um, and then there's this tempering durability remaining. Four so this potential. is how many times you can re-roll the tempered affixes. Uh, the first ones that you attach does not uh, should not be consuming tempering durability. I think this one might have uh, one of those bugs where it, it did consume it, but ultimately this is going to be the number of times you can re-roll. So the yeah. first craft you know, is free. We're actually going to update the string. It's gonna, I think it's going to literally be called tempering tempering, tempering re rolls. Reroll. Okay. Yeah, to make it really really clear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is the kind of things that uh, we're we're actually working on, and we love fine. your feedback. Fine. On there are bugs. Make sure we get, we get it. Just explain right to us really how it's supposed to work. It's fine. Um, so we've attached an offensive uh, affix onto this. Let's take a look at some of the weapon ones that we can attach on. Uh, so here we've got ones that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Whoa, crash! Uh, well, <laughs> build. Yeah, my build. build indeed. My build. Um, well, so we can talk through what what would have happened yeah. there. If that yeah. isn't a metaphor right. for so how you uh, attach the, the weapon know what category, is. those are often the ones that are the more um, I would say more interesting, right? The bonus projectiles, the bonus effect size. Yeah, that would be um, the weapon category that had a chance to be different, like bonus bonus unreal. Yeah, twice rather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's a, in the weapon category. So, so there we would attach God, one of those, dude, and maybe we get can't, a chance for rapid fire projectiles to fire an extra time. If that's uh, not a metaphor we do that, for Diablo, you know, maybe four, I don't oh, know we actually want to play a penetrating shot build, right? Or maybe rapid fire is not that great. We could consume one of the tempering durabilities to re-roll that and try to get that oh, that bonus rapid fire damn, projectile dude. ones that we want. 
At least people now believe it's live. <laughs> so, you know, Did people that's still that's think that's we weren't doing it live? Looking at it. <laughs> I, um, uh, but yeah, I, I know we're, we're, we're getting the build back up here and everything. But There's, sure. there's yeah. a lot of really cool new affixes in general inside the yeah. tempering system. Like, oh, I know yeah. that, like I've been playing a lot of Season 4 uh, like on, uh, on, our, on our dev build. And I'm playing a barbarian right now. And I've been playing a lot with with uh, with dust devils, which I know we'll sure. talk maybe a little bit more well, about. We're gonna later. talk about oh, dust devils. Yeah. 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 But there's uh, but there's like opportunities to like spawn like instead of spawning one dust devil, you'll spawn multiple dust devils. There's mm -hmm. dust devil size. There's uh, there's like there's a lot of really end duration. Like there's a lot of really neat new things to play with to build upon other uh, like play styles. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really the goal of tempering is is customization and really cool new ways of building your character. That's right. not just plus damage. There is still some bonus damage as as you still need to in order to you know actually do damage, but there's a lot of ways you can customize your skills and and make it really your own. Now right now uh, you can temper legendary items, correct, and uh, and and rare uh, and rare items, but you uh, you can't temper unique items, correct. correct. Yeah. Unique items, what kind of what you see is what you get, mm -hmm. right? They they drop still with the four affixes for the most part. Um, you, those are going to be unchanged. You mm -hmm. won't be able to temper onto them. And with, with tempering, yeah. With tempering, right. And then we, we show the tempering durability, yep. you know, as far as, or, you know, tempering rerolls in this case. So the idea here is that, like, when the player has, uh, has you know, it's, you're not happy with the, all the, the affixes you've got, you've kind of rerolled through all of your options. At the end of that process, you simply can't temper any longer on that item. There's not a way to reset that item back down. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, one of the goals uh, that we have for ourselves in terms of like trying to, uh, to have uh, uh, higher quality drops in general is to make it so it's a little bit easier and also ensuring that, like, you know, uh, it's easier for you to reach those 925 capped items when you start to really deeply engage in features like this. Is you want to make it a little bit easier for you to go find some of those really good baseline templated items for you to start yeah. building on top of as opposed to it having it be like, I need to find like 70 helmets in the hopes I find a max roll cooldown reduction on mm -hmm. it, right? Like it's, it, we're in a different place now in terms of how we're thinking about that. In addition to the crafting, uh, the, uh, the trading changes that we've made as well, mm -hmm. I want to make it a little bit easier for you to find some of these things between it being a lot easier to, to, to have drops that are relevant for you up here when you're doing various types of content, but also that uh, if you're playing with friends, there's opportunities for you to maybe trade some things around at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I think you make a really good point about finding really strong base items to build off of. And I think that goes great into our next point where we talk about greater affixes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so greater affixes are affixes that appear in the late game. They are more powerful versions of the normal affixes. This so like exalts. Uh, they come at a 1.5x multiplier on the affixes max roll. So let's say a hypothetical affix might come between like 50 to 100 of a stat. If it rolls greater, then you actually get 150 of that stat instead. Instead of the roll, it always comes in at max. So it comes in at that 150 mark. Um, these are really exciting drops when you get into the late game. They're going to be immediately obvious whenever they drop on the ground. They're going to have a little uh, change to, to the UI so you can see it right away and you know, hey, that one has greater affixes on it. And that's going to be ones that you're really going to want to pick up and make sure that you take a look at and then you, you really want to build off of because they are some of the strongest affixes in the game. Uh, I think we've got an example here. Um, uh, the, and one other note, these, as I mentioned, they're late game. They only appear on Ancestral Legendary items and Ancestral Uniques that are dropping in World Tier 4. It's this. Uh, I think we can zoom in on the, uh, the the top yeah. one here. Yeah, this. Where we can see we've got a little, um, like some Roman it's numerals like at the end of it. There's uh, two. That indicates that this two pair of gloves has on the item. two greater affixes on it. And when you actually go and pick it up, we can take a look at the tooltip of the, of the item itself. And we can see that Intelligence here is highlighted, and so is Critical Strike Damage. Uh, and these are these roll up at the max roll, and I think we've got a comparison. I like these affixes kind of so between, much better, just so um, much easier you know, to a, read. A standard version. So on the left is is a, a you know a non greater version of a dagger. You've got say seventy four dexterity, and maybe it rolled between seventy and eighty four. But on the right, we've got a greater version of dexterity, and that's going to always give you one hundred and twenty six, which is one point five times the eighty four. Same with the critical strike damage down at the bottom. So if you find the dagger on the right, that's a really good one. I mean, not only do you have two greater affixes, you also max roll the attack speed in between. That is a great base item to start building uh, through the tempering system on. I need that dagger. Uh, thing we've got, uh, the next topic to talk about is masterworking. Masterworking is a late game crafting system that we're going to use to upgrade system. the items. So once you kind of find a really good base item, uh, maybe it has some greater affixes on it. Um, 
and then you've tempered on the affixes that you want. You know, hey, you've found the, the exact affixes that are specific to your build that you've attached onto it. Now you're really pushing into the late game content. It's time to start masterworking. And masterworking has 12 ranks uh, where you can upgrade the current affixes on your gear. So this isn't going to change any of the affixes like um, enchanting or like tempering does. This is just going to take the current ones and then upgrade them through 12 ranks. This is kind of like the old gear upgrade, right? Similar, yeah. yes. However, both masterworking <clears throat> and tempering are replacing the old mm -hmm. gear upgrade system. Uh, that the previous system when you just kind of upgraded the item power and, and the values went up by a so bit. Three uh, these two upgrades. systems replace that and now you're going to be able to customize them and then master work them yeah, instead. Significantly more powerful on the back Absolutely. end. Yeah, this is like Weaver's Will. Yeah. Yeah. To item upgrade, yeah. Absolutely. Kind of. Um, so the, the 12 ranks of master working uh, as opposed to the 5 of the old system uh, most of the ranks are going to increase all of your affixes on the gear by a small amount. But then every four ranks, so rank four, eight, and 12, are going to upgrade a single affix by a large Look amount. Look at this color. So here's an example. Uh, the ring on the left is rank two masterworking. You can see that right up there by the item power. It says masterworking two out of 12. Uh, let's focus in on, on like the, the ma maximum life affix there. Uh, so on the left at rank two, you see we've got 880 bonus maximum life. And so we take it, uh, we masterwork it up to rank three, and then that will upgrade that to 920 maximum life. So a little bit of an improvement. But then once we hit rank four, it improved all we the actually steps. get a much larger increase in maximum life. It goes from 920 all the way up to 1,120, while the other affixes on the gear stay static because they didn't get it. roll randomly. Does it, have, does it uh, randomly pick one. one of them? Um, or does it pick all three Joe's of them? To point earlier about we still have some, this some is in development. Uh, this is in development three, content. It's not final, one. as the watermark says. Um, the tempered affixes at the bottom, the golem active cooldown reduction and the bone critical strike damage, those also would be being upgraded all, and all are eligible to okay. have this, uh, this larger bonus. Uh, but in this particular screenshot example, those numbers didn't change, but they will change in the final, and there's yeah, a those chance... also get affected, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they will be included just like all the rest of them. Uh, but yeah, so as you go through it, you're going to get kind of three of these, uh, these effects uh, at rank 4, 8, and 12, and they can all go on the same one. Uh, so if you get really, really lucky and you really needed a lot of maximum life, you know, you might get uh, just a ton of maximum life every time that, that increases. Or it could be on one of your tempered affixes. You could get tons of golem cooldown reduction if that's the kind of build that you're looking for. And once you fully uh, masterworked an item, you, uh, if it didn't really pan out the way you wanted to, the, the random rolls didn't quite go your way, you are able to reset it and try it again, but it, you will kind of lose all the materials that you've invested into it, but you can try that again. It doesn't completely um, lock you out of it. Right, so once you've got like a really great pair of gloves or whatever that you've been, you've been, you've, you've tempered at this point, you mm -hmm. enchanted to get exactly the affix you wanted on, off it, maybe you, you got some greater affixes on it in the first place when you started, uh, then you take that item into, assuming you got through all that process, it, you can take it into the masterworking feature, and then you can kind of keep going at it. Yeah. Yeah, and get the opportunity get to, to kind of hopefully right. crit exactly the affixes you're looking for. Yeah, and, and if you, you do get that right, you find something that's got, you know, critical strike damage, and then you hit all three times on it, super upgraded, uh, that's going to be like one of the best items in the game that yeah. probably no one else has one exactly like that, because... Yeah. You really needed to, to hit the right one every time. That's going to be a really powerful item that uh, is, is going to be very memorable when you get all that coming together. I think we've got an example here to really highlight all of these systems taken together. So on before, this was that boned one of serration that we talked about right at the beginning when we talked about paring down the affix list to just more simple intelligence, damage, and vulnerable damage. And on the right, we can see it after it has been tempered. So we've got bone spear or bone spirit damage. We've got chance for our bone splinter projectiles to cast twice. And then we can see uh, intelligence has been highlighted in blue. That means it's been it's had one of the upgrades for master working. And the damage stat on here has been upgraded twice. That's why it's in yellow. Uh, when we got up to master working twelve, and you can see how we we've taken this progression, uh, this item progression, and, and on so here once you got it all the way up to master working twelve. This is really kind of the pinnacle of what items can be in our new itemization world. It's a lot they better than what they had. That, you know the total comp the total depth of what it's an a lot item better can do than what they had. You know, you can still make an item do a lot of different things, but on that before side, you know, when you're looking for items that are dropping, that's all that you're going to parse through over there. It's just like three affixes, did I get the ones I want, and you can just do that Could very quickly. Could still be better. I can think uh, of a lot of things a lot of that, that could be that better. Way. But 
you're going to be slowly, you know, introducing that complexity over time. But this is much better, a million so times be better than what's currently in the game. Want to be using. Absolutely. In, in terms of like lucky out on this, I think it's 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 fun to call out. Like, it is basically nine five percent upgrades to your affixes during the regular master working process, yeah. and then there's three randomly selected twenty five percent upgrades to the odds to yeah. one of those affixes. Mm -hmm. So if you're very very fortunate and you manage to triple up on a, a, a particular stat. Uh, that's a you can do the math. It's a tremendous, tremendous upgrade for that affix overall. Yeah. For that slot. Yeah. And he's, yeah. if you want to go hard into one affix, <laughs> yeah, Blizzard, let, really let us handle the math. You can go affix, really hard on CDR in this world, right? I'm like terrified. It's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can <laughs> go hard awesome. into CDR, yeah. yes. Or really hard on bonus projectiles, because those are cool and flashy. Or bonus projectiles, yeah. that's actually true, yeah. It's going to be really sweet. Yep. It's bone spears everywhere. Yes. Absolutely. Um, but of course, you might be asking okay, new items are great. Well, what am I going to do with all of these new items? Before we even bridge to me, okay, this <laughs> yeah. is a really good okay. bridge. So two things I want to call out. One, yeah. Masterworking works on unique items. Correct. Yes. So the, you know some of those really, really cool affixes that can appear on unique items? Not the power of the, uh, of the unique item, but right. a lot of like, the really specific uh, unique affixes. Those all benefit from the masterworking process as well. Mm -hmm. You can triple really crit on the right? stats uh, of a unique so I think item? There's, like, oh there's my god. something really, really fun there. Uh, also, uh, you can make sure that uh, like when some of these unique items Jacko are dropping, with plus they also can skills. have greater affixes attached to them. So those same unique affixes that we're talking about, like that is huge. Like now, like now you get an extra like fifty percent value on top of that. Yeah. So like you get fifty percent uh, value on top of a unique item affix, and then on top of that, you masterwork it. It gets it can get really really bonkers. So there's a really there's a good chase in, uh, involved in this. Mm -hmm. Like even allowing for like player trading and everything else, there's still like lots of really exciting stuff for players to find. Yeah, and uh, the other thing I, I, I've seen a little bit of this in chat as well as like a lot of people are going like, hey, when when are we actually able to experience this? PTR, uh, PTR. <laughs> well, first PTR, and also at the same time, this is something that uh, does start immediately with season four when yeah. it begins. Yes. This is all all the item is is that all no, the item no mid season releases will start with Thanks, the start guys. Of season four because I know a lot of people were questioning because they're going Thank like well, God. we had hurt Gauntlet in the past mm -hmm. and then Gauntlet actually started mid season. Uh, the itemization changes <clears throat> and all the changes you're hearing today will start well, at the start. Uh, right at the beginning of season four, which is on May fourteenth. PTR being on April second, so. There's there's a couple other things I also want to say. It doesn't fit I got one too. Oh, do you? Oh, no, you <laughs> go first. first. You go first. All right. Well, I clarify something because I know it's going to be a lot of questions that people have on greater affixes. Yes. Um, so greater affixes, the way that you get them is you can only get them from things that drop. So you're right. actually looking for that moment when you kill the mob. That's exactly the like last drops. That's the exciting moment that we're Exalts targeting. Exalts or drop uh, only. You can't craft them. is still going to exist. You can still enchant your affixes like normal on those three ones that drop. Uh, you cannot enchant into a greater affix you can enchant out of a greater affix. So if you choose to, if you've got like a one greater affix item, you can enchant that greater affix to something else, but it won't change to another greater, and you can't change anything into a greater. It's all about yeah. killing monsters, finding That's that moment exactly that is really exciting the way when last the last epoch works. Seeing if that works for you. Last so I just want to clarify on how enchanting works, <laughs> and kind of what we're going for. Yeah, absolutely. Focusing on the drop, the ex moment the of excitement. The drop is the moment of excitement it. that we're going for there. All right, yep. and then one other thing I want to call it as well that we didn't talk about already, and that is that there are other, there's a lot of other changes that we haven't actually discussed here that you'll see <laughs> when you get to play in the PTR. Uh, but one of them I think is really cool is we actually add a bunch of other new baseline rare affixes that can appear on items yeah. that like players haven't seen before. Yes. You know, yeah. so there's a, as an example of a few of these, uh, we have like fury per second. You know, can, uh, can appear on items, yeah. which is very, very exciting and very interesting for my for my barbarian transformative. friends. Transformative, yeah, it's very like, transformative. Like, pl like there's there's a number of other ones, like 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 life per hit. You know, is now uh, mm -hmm. something that players can find as you're going through the experience. Like, are there any yeah, that you, that you and also, of that were th are kind of cool or and also ones that that are are cool and powerful <laughs> that appear in different slots. So previously, <laughs> weapons almost always had bonus damage of some sort. Mm -hmm. uh, we've extended that, so a lot of weapons can now have resource cost reduction. They can have bonus attack speed and other things that increase your output through not just saying damage, damage. to a certain yeah. uh, way. Yeah. More interesting ways of increasing uh, your output. Yeah, very cool. To me, bonus projectiles. You saw it here. I need to copyright yeah. that. It's so Lee, cool. go copyright that. Yeah, it's right it's now. Really cool. Having bonus projectiles drop and then have that potentially be a greater affix when and it then goes. And then you master work bonus projectiles yeah. and it gets, it gets silly. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I know we want to Lee, talk copyright about it quick. Stuff that's coming to the game. I'm um, actually. I'm gonna. Maybe we leave that for the end of of the stream itself. Uh, right, right before we go into Q and A. Is there? A, uh, I'm gonna ask production here. I'm gonna pivot them. Is there a way that we can jump to?
to class changes coming to me next. Yeah, you next. Oh. I'm not pivoting. You got kind of a shrug. So like, I think I think so. Yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, uh, yeah. We'll go through the end game stuff here um, because we we do have a lot of uh, end uh, game things that we still need to talk about. That no, let's do the end game first. Yeah. Uh, these itemization changes, but we'll we'll jump into class changes really quickly. Sure, we'll we can go to me next. So it's yeah. fine. Do it. <clears throat> Take us away, Adam. All right. So uh, are we ready to go? Yeah. Okay. So we've got kind of three big goals for class updates. We've got a lot going on. Uh, I'm going to try and breeze through a little quick in the interest of time. The first one is going through a very high volume of meaningful class updates. And what I mean by meaningful is, you know, not just moving numbers up and down on things that exist, but kind of either updating systems of how things interact at a systemic level, actually or changing adding things, things that are, are really really powerful and are actually going to move the needle and and change not how you just interact number with the class changes. Of the skill <gasps> and the more than a skill twig? Next one is making flat damage effects more viable. So by flat damage, I'm talking about things like dust devils, um, mm -hmm. earthquakes, good. dancing bolts, <laughs> all these things. I've been, you know, I talked a few campfire chats ago about how I wanted to make these things like a lot more viable and scale better, and uh, we're going to be making good on that in season four. I'm excited. We'll go into more some details. I'll but believe yeah, that's it one when of the I big see things it. That's changing this season. And last but not least, opening up designs to be more generally useful. So kind of similar to item affixes, how you know you've got these like multi-conditional things. We're going through classes across the board and going and looking for ways that we can open up things. You know, so you're gonna oh find that things that were a little more restrictive, we're gonna try and make interact with more different pieces. So you know, something may have only talked to core skills, now it can be any skill, things like that. Where we're trying to make things less conditional so that Tomb you can, Lord can also be an Uber. a lot more often. So, yeah, in addition to those three things, and those are our goals, I'm also going to be talking a little bit today about PTR balance and hardcore updates. And a uh, little uh, you know, PSA, everything that you see here right now, the tuning is still in flux. We're going through the balancing process right now of these things. So any exact numbers that you see of updates uh, is very much subject to change, not only before PTR, but of course one of our goals for you playing PTR is helping us with the tuning and balance because everything is going to be changing. So, uh, yeah, expect things to change, but that's kind of where we're at right now. So, first, let's talk about uniques. Uh, so, in Season 4, you're going to be getting double Terials the normal amount of uniques added to the game. Uh, normally, every class gets one. Every class is going to be getting two this time. So, again, more content. Uh, we're also adding a new uber unique here, uh, Tyrael's Might. Uh, this is a defensive-oriented unique. Uh, it's going to be a chess piece. You can see the stats there. Uh, lots of resistance oriented things and damage reduction. By the way, in this new world, damage reduction is going to be much harder to come by. So it's actually a lot more special that it exists here. And the special power of this is that when you're at maximum life, so when you have you know the entire life bar full, uh, you're going to be shooting out projectiles very similar to the artillery shrine. So you can see here kind of in action, you can Herma see that sometimes it's attacking shrine. and it's not going off. And then as he heals up, you get those uh, bolts that's hitting enemies. It's really, really flashy and cool. So yeah, class updates. Like I mentioned before, we're really looking to move the needle on these. Um, we're, we are still going to be having a number of changes, quite a few of just things going up and down for tuning. Um, but we're also looking at updating some systems and designs. And I'm going to give you some examples. Now, with everything I talk about here today, I'm giving you a small snippet of the things that we're doing, like one or two examples per class. But when you get the patch notes, you're going to see it's like a giant wall. There's, there's a lot of stuff that we're doing everywhere. Just a slice of the overall pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, some examples here. Uh, skill tag updates. So, we're not only doing this on the Sorceress, but on other classes as well, but th this is the one the example I want to give. Minions uh, inherit 100% of, of players' stats. That they have kind of core skills and then mastery skills. Mastery skills are things like Firewall, uh, Meteor, things like that. And the mastery skills, you know, we're, we're always kind of second class to the core skills because we had a lot of things that scaled core skill damage, but not mastery skill damage. So, we've updated our skill tags and, and kind of change things around so that they make more sense. So you're going to see more skill tags added to things across the board. And the example here is that mastery skills will also just have the, score, the core skill tag. They'll be considered both mastery and core skill. So all your core skill damage bonuses, interactions, all that stuff will just work now. Uh, oh, did you uh, something? Yeah, just, uh, we also talked about like mobility skill tag added yes. to a lot of skills as well, mm -hmm. and how that interacts with the tempering system. You have ways of getting mobility skill cooldown reduction that ties into the same yeah, concept. Yeah, so yeah, we're actually adding the mobility skill tag to all things across all classes that have mobility attached to them, mm -hmm. so then they can interact with the itemization system, so and you'll have these things working in tandem skill. together. That's a good point. Yeah, so now can some we, other examples. Frozen there? Orb on the Sorceress is getting a lot of love. 
Um, before, when you cast it, it would go an exact set distance and then blow up, but now it's going to go exactly where you point it at it to with your cursor. Um, so, you know, you're not going to hit your life if you run into, like, a suppressor. How does that for work example. You can actually make it fire point blank or all the way across the screen. Get and we'll actually be showing players. some video of that as well later. We also have a new unique that we're going to have video of that's really awesome. So Frozen Orb Sorceresses are going to be really happy this season. And next, Necromancer. Uh, I've been talking for a while about Necromancer minions and how we're going to make them better. We're delivering on that in Season 4. Uh, the first change is that they're going to inherit 100% of the player stats. So, you know, your crit chance, crit damage, all those things, they're just going to inherit it from you, so they're going to scale way better with you, the player. And this is not only going to apply to Necromancer minions, but all uh, minion types in our game, things like Druid Wolves, are also going to be inheriting this, and you're going to get a pretty big power bump. Um, we're also looking, we took a look at look, look, ah, took a look at the book of the dead. <laughs> Does Vine Creeper and, uh, basically get 100%? Revamped everything. Does Vine Creeper's uh, going to fry the then? almost are getting some type of either number or big functionality Vine change. Vine Creeper's going to be going incredible some examples for leveling. There. But it's just going to be a lot more punchy. Uh, we're not only looking for effectiveness here, like making things stronger, but uh, we also like the rule of cool, where, you know, the things that are awesome and look, look cool and are visual are going to, you know, stand out more. And so we're trying to do that as much as we can. So next, let's talk about game balance. So as I kind of alluded to earlier, you know, the landscape of everything is changing pretty drastically, right? Itemization is going to be changing a lot of how player power works and how things work in the game. We've got a lot of class updates that are going to be changing how things are. Uh, you can expect a pretty big shakeup of like just how all the different classes and builds perform. Like it's going to be a brave new world really here. Um, but, you know, normally we promised a while back that we're going to do lists of everything that's perceived as a nerf. Uh, I'm not going to be going through every single thing today. Um, you'll be able to see everything in the patch notes on the PTR, and that's mostly in the interest of time, just because there's so much change that's happening. But I am going to give you, you know, a snippet to make to do good on that promise of kind of how the game is now, and some things that you can expect that are going to be lowered in power in the future. So some examples here. Um, generally, uh, Tibolt's will, uh, everyone's favorite pants, right? And not only is it really good I because the effect is good, but I also it's no damage pants, on pants, personally. which makes it really, really good. Uh, that damage amount is being reduced. Uh, same with Banished Lord's Talesman. Both of these uh, uniques are insanely powerful. Um, they're still Talesman. going to be really good Isn't after this, Talesman? but the damage is just being lowered so that Talesman. other things can be competitive. Next, the Barbarian, uh, everybody's favorite charging class. Uh, first thing that we're doing is, many of you may not know this, but when we launched the game, we actually gave them 10% inherent damage reduction. This was back when uh, melee classes in general and the Barbarian were having trouble in the early game. Um, our game balance has changed radically since then, and we don't feel like they really need this anymore. Um, and we don't want them to have an inherent advantage over all the other classes in the game anymore. God damn it! So that's going to be removed. There goes my and damage reduction, like I boys. Before when Charles was talking, damage reduction in general is going to be much more rare and special. You're not just going to find it on any uh, defensive stat. When you see it, it's going to be something that you're going to really value because it's hard to come by. And we also think barbarians are still going to be really good in this regard. In this regard, because their skill tree has a lot of it, their skills like uh, Challenging Shout have it, so I think they're going to be fine, but we're just removing this extra part. Also, we're reducing the effectiveness of Charge, Hammer of the Ancients, and Unbridled Rage. Uh, all three of these things have been incredibly powerful. Some things like Unbridled Rage have kind of been stamping out competing things for a Goodbye, long time. Goodbye, Barb. It's so good. Um, we're not, our goal here is not to remove these from the game or make these builds not viable at all. They're, they're going to be reduced, but I still think they're going to be really <laughs> They are powerful too powerful. This is fine. I'm sad, but it's fine. And next, we're going to go over to the Sorcerer. Uh, we got a couple bug fixes here. Um, we have more bug fixes than this, but this is just some that I wanted to call out. Uh, the first one, we had one where the evade cooldown reduction affix was triggering off of unstable currents casts. And so what this basically went, meant was you equip those boosts that have evade cooldown reduction, and then you use unstable currents, and you had, like, infinite uptime on teleport evades, which made you just teleport around uh, forever. Uh, this has been fixed, so now it's only going to work with intentional casts now, as it was intended to. And the next one is uh, Isu's Ferocity. This is a key passive yeah, we, on the Sorcerer that used to apply ex critical strike damage to all damage types, but it was the fire key passive. Now it's only going to apply to fire damage, as it was intended yeah, to. Yeah, Rob's going to have to find again, a new game with those barb changes. Of everything, but there's going to be a lot more stuff. And again, like everything you know is basically going to change because of how many things are being updated in the game. So I wouldn't worry too much about any specific build. All right, so now let's get to the fun part, class updates. So I'm going to be going through all the different classes here and just showing like one to two examples of kind of the ideas of things that we're changing. Again, lots more than what you're going to see. I want to talk about Endgame, Adam. expect in the direction that we're going here. 
So first we'll start with the Barbarians. So I like Dust Devils. I've, been <laughs> liked, I've liked them for a long time. And not just things like Dust Devils, but all those types of extra affixes that spawn things. Um, so here's an example of Wind Slasher. This is a legendary that we updated. So it's the double swing legendary that spawns Dust Devils. Before it was you would cast double swing twice and you like go in and out and in and out. And every other time you make a Dust Devil, right? Pretty cool. Um, we're updating this now, so that every single cool. time that you uh, that you uh, cast double swing, it does a dust level. And instead of every other time spawning one, every other time spawns three. So now instead of going hit, then one, then hit, then one, it's one, then three, then one, then three, which means a lot more dust devils. And I want to call it again, there's tempered affixes that give you chances to spawn additional <laughs> dust devils when you spawn a dust devil. So and affixes that talk to them directly in itemization. That might yeah, actually be like fun if it's strong. Up, that might actually can be go fun. Up. Like we, we're actually going to make this a you thing. Might be I don't talk like a lot about dust devils. There's cool <laughs> stuff for all of them. It's earthquakes, it's just that it's I played a lot of dust devil built on bar. I'll make this on the PTR. I'm going to go a full dust devil. Like these I'm gonna make cool. it. I'm gonna see how many like dust devils I can spawn in the map. And go Anyways, to Helltide. So there's just not wipe just the this full lots of other legendaries with tornadoes. Like this. Druid, for example, a thing that has been long complained about to me I'll is that last rate isn't up to par to other things. So there on the left is what you can see exists today, where the upgrades for last rate are the first one is you heal for a little bit for every hit, and then it's doubled when you crit. And then the, the next upgrade is that it's initial strike crits and does a little bit more damage. We're just merging those together. So both of those combined is going to be your first lacerate upgrade. And now we added a second upgrade there where every time that lacerate crits, your, all of your shape-shifting skills are going to deal more damage for 10 seconds up to 40%. So now we're adding a very strong, potent, multiplicative damage bonus uh, buff after lacerate. So now, you know, lacerate, you know, it's going to give you invulnerability, life leech, crit, and then a potent damage buff for a while after you cast it. So then if you can get cooldown reduction Holy. on it, you can keep that buff rolling. And actually have like a build Holy. going on. Next, the sorceress. So here, instead of just text, I'm actually going to show you some videos. The first one is going to be showing that frozen orb change that we talked about here. So basically, you can see here that where the person is targeting with their cursor is where the frozen orb is going to explode. So now you can make it point blank. You can make it far away. Uh, you know, it's going to be wherever you go. And for you controller players, this is going to interact just like other skills where it just goes to an enemy, and then if there's nothing nearby, it just goes a set distance before blowing up. Next, we're going to be talking about the unique. So, prefacing this unique a little bit before we show the video, um, the basic idea is conjurations are cool and frozen orb is cool. Mm. And what's going to happen with this unique is frozen orb is going to have a chance when it explodes to spawn conjurations, and then any time that your conjurations attack, they have a chance to throw frozen orbs at enemies. So now we're going to see this in action here. <laughs> so it's called Fractured Winter Glass, and this video is just the person casting frozen orb with this unique. So at first it's like, okay, it's fine. You see a couple conjurations, right? But then as you go on, you can see that the frozen orbs are making more of them, and then the conjurations are also throwing out more frozen orbs. Problem is, is that might this be too slow. This is all just from pressing one button. This yeah. is all just from throwing <laughs> out frozen just, orbs. Just been right clicking this that whole time. That would be helpful. Like awesome. Very, yeah, very high end content makes a meteor. for and speed farming. <laughs> that would be borderline useless. Yes, yeah, yeah. but conjurations. But conjurations. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it's a cool <laughs> idea though. It's better. Fire it's exactly better than what they have done. Okay. Fair enough. That doesn't help you with speed farming. But yeah, so this is an example of the cool uniques that we're adding to the game. Next, let's move on to the rogue. So we're also updating some class mechanics and other things. Inner sight has kind of uh, been eclipsed by other things in our game, right? When we first made Inner Sight, you know, it triggered off of trying to, this idea that you were going to target a single enemy, pick on that enemy, and build up this gauge, and then you have unlimited energy, and unlimited energy was supposed to be this really crazy, rare thing that was not, you know, going to happen very often. Uh, it turned out that's not really the case through itemization and other things. You can kind of solve resource uh, a lot easier nowadays. Yeah, it's fun to do that, too. Yeah, and it's fun. We want people to do that. Yeah. So we have to update our other systems in accordance to that, which is kind of what we're doing here. So now, you don't only have to hit the marked enemy, but you can hit, you can charge up inner sight off of everything. So as you're blowing up waves of enemies, you still want to make sure you're hitting the one that's targeted, but now you'll get a little bit of gauge off of any enemy that you hit. And now, in addition to that, the payoff is better. So not only are you going to get that unlimited energy still, but you're also going to get a 25% crit chance boost. So now you're going to be hitting harder when you are in inner sight mode. So now there's actually a damage component there too, in addition to the unlimited energy. Next, Necromancer. So like I said, Book of the Dead is getting upgrades. I kind of picked one uh, slice from each part, from each minion type. So here you can see your Skeletal Reapers, the wind-up attacks now, can reduce your one of your active cooldowns by a pretty chunky amount. Uh, three seconds is insane, but there will be a number that will make sense there. Maybe it is three. 
Um, next one for the mages, you know, one of their upgrades used to be that they've made frozen enemies vulnerable, and now they just make everything vulnerable. So actually, if you want cold mages to solve vulnerable for you, you pretty much can, just with this upgrade. And last but not least, we have your iron golem. So iron golem now that when you tell it to go somewhere and do that slam attack where it pounds the ground, it'll also pull in enemies, very similar to corpse tendrils. So it's not as required, you know, to put that on your bar, you have another way to kind of get that effect. Uh, another thing I didn't put on the slide that I want to call out with golems that'll make players happy. Uh, golem now, while you're CC'd or at any time, when you activate it, it's going to make both your golem and you unstoppable. Ooh, so now you have fun. another source of unstoppable on the Necromancer uh, for minion builds, which I think will make players really happy. Yeah, it's like buddy cop situation. You, get, you, <laughs> yeah, get, right. you, get your, you and your you get buddies going and just, taking just, people out. That's, yeah, right. yeah. that's awesome for a golem mancer build for sure. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so next, like I was saying before, flat damage attack. Uh, effects, dust doubles, are, and, and earthquakes. These are better they're than what they have now. in the game. So before, these legendaries did not scale very well. And what I mean by that is that the damage that they did was fixed. So if you got like a dust level or earthquake or whatever, you got that legendary at like level 25, the damage that it did was just a number, and that number didn't really go up with you or scale with you in a meaningful way. Now, under the hood, all of these things are going to be scaling based off your weapon damage, which means yeah, that these yeah. things will scale with you as a player and be much more viable now. And I believe we can zoom in on this example I give. So this one is Dancing Bolts. I'm actually running this legendary right now, my Lightning Storm Druid. So you can see that, you know, it's the same legendary on each side. This is me just changing out my weapon while I have this legendary equipped. This is in Season 4, so you can see it does an amount of damage on the left, you know, about 5,400 there. Now, that number on the right, I didn't get a new legendary, I didn't change it, I didn't do anything except change my weapon, and that increased the damage that these Dancing Bolts are going to do. So when you get these legendary, legendaries now, they're going to scale with you and do quite a bit more damage and be punchy as you go into the late game. This is in addition yeah, to, like, tempering and other things, talking to these things, so you can actually itemize into making them more powerful as well. And I, I, it's funny because there's there's some people I think that didn't catch uh, maybe they it's didn't Adam catch Jackson. the first part of the itemization, but they're looking at this second legendary, new, but we like the new him. one, and He's they're going smart. like, "Well, it's only got three stats or something." Uh, this is you should probably watch a recording of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's when it drops, uh, not yeah. after you've done yeah, all yeah, your exactly. stuff. Exactly. There's yeah. a lot. There's a lot of uh, itemization changes to to make. Um, you know, the items feel more valuable themselves mm -hmm. in Season 4. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, I recommend watching the recording just yeah, yeah, for, yeah, for yeah. people yeah. that may have missed the itemization or, or checking out our blog next yeah, week. You can separate two more affixes on them. There you yeah. go. Yeah, they got five. That's right. All right, so Nat, last but not least is opening up designs. Like I talked about, one of our goals here, make things more generally useful, less restrictions. We can zoom in here. To, I have two examples. One is Azurath here on the left, a unique sword. So two things going on here. First, you can see before, it was that your core skills have a chance to freeze enemies and deal a bunch of damage to them. On the right, we've removed the core skill requirement, and now any of your skills can have a chance to freeze enemies. So this means you, know, you can use it on, you know, like charge and other similar things like that, where, you know, there maybe you want to make a build around something not that's these, not a core skill to proc this, you totally can, or it's just going to proc more often, and you just play normally. Second thing you'll notice is on the left, it says barbarian only. Well, we just removed that uh, restriction. So now any class that can use a sword can use Azure Wrath. Again, we're just trying to look for places where there was restrictions, and when we can, we're just removing them. Next one is Opportunist. This one I'm really excited about on the Rogue. I think I'm going to play a Rogue this season. Mm -hmm. um, so on the left is the old version, where it says, when you break stealth with an attack, you can drop stun grenades, right? And then those grenades deal damage and stun enemies. On the right, we've removed a lot of these restrictions and made it more useful. So now it's when you enter or break stealth, and you don't need to break stealth when, it, when you attack. So anytime that you cast stealth or go into stealth, you're going to get two sets of these, and it's just going to be when you go in and out, and you just get stun grenades. Uh, you also notice that this is a tuning thing, but the stun duration on stun grenades has been buffed. It's a second now. And then we also did a thing that I'm really excited about here, where every single grenade, stun grenade uh, legendary will increase the damage of your grenade skills, and all of them are going to have this. So if you want to make a stun grenade build, if you collect, you know, the four or five of these legendaries that, that kind of combo together, every one is going to incrementally increase your grenade's damage as well, to a point where, you know, you, you'll they'll be doing a lot more meaningful damage in your build. Okay, I mean, looks good. It's way better than what they have. All right, last but not least, we've got hardcore updates. So for you hardcore players, uh, Elixir of Death Evasion is being removed from the game. It's dying, and it's not coming back, yes! just like you will in hardcore. Uh, we've also redesigned <laughs> the flame this in shield the enchantment. Alpha. So before, it used to be a cheat death mechanic, where when you took fatal damage, it would, you know, proc and save you. 
Now it's going to automatically activate when you uh, lose a certain amount of life, and then it has a, uh, an internal cooldown on that. No so cheat deaths in the we've game. We've heard from cheat the community kind of loud and clear. They really want hardcore to be hardcore, and so we're going to deliver on that. Now you actually have to be careful. The you know, sanctuary is a very scary place, and you won't hardcore have Hardcore is actually going to be hardcore again. Thank God. And uh, finally, PTR feedback. So like we mentioned before, we're going to be looking at the PTR feedback very carefully. Please let us know what you think. Uh, the class team is particularly excited about what's working for you and what's not working for you. Um, when, you're, when you're kind of tuning your feedback and typing it to us, uh, we're really looking at things like tuning and balance. We know that things are going to be pretty wacky in this brave new world that we're going into. Um, we're also looking for what changes really made the game more fun to you. You're going to see a lot of them, a lot more than what I presented today. We really want to know what changes we did maybe didn't hit the mark and why. You know, maybe we didn't go far enough or this thing could have been a little, way better with just a small tweak. And then last but not least, we want to know what would you like to see that didn't make it in, right? Um, we're forever going to be updating this game and we really want to know, you know, Loot a lot filter. of these changes are coming from your feedback, like, you know, flat damage scaling, unstoppable coming on Loot the golem for necromancers who've been wanting more sources of it. You know, what other things are End you game. seeing that you know, have always kind of bugged you or have always been kind of a pain point S SSF. that you would like us to change? And we'll be looking for that feedback. SSF. So, yeah, Loot that's filter. pretty much everything we got for End classes. Game. Thanks, everybody, again. Yes. Yeah, so. We're excited. There, there is a like ton of information for classes, and it's funny because everyone's treating this PTR feedback slide as if as if we're done. No, no, no. Right? Oh, there's more. more. There's oh, more. oh there's I'm, more. I'm sorry. He hasn't even gotten yeah. started yet. Jo, jo, uh, as the chat calls it, Joe Pipe or Rap God uh, has not <laughs> has not spoken yet. Uh, so uh, he will be he will be talking here now about Endgame. Specific End items. game? Sure, thanks. So, uh, wait, a couple hold. things I want to talk about first. We're going to talk about some new content stuff in just a minute, but there are some other things that are also changing at the same time. Uh, you'll see on the PTR, we've made adjustments to, uh, to world tiers and that we've changed the XP modifier that you get for opting into certain world tiers. So, uh, I'm going to, so the reason why we're doing this, we want, we want to get players to end game a little bit faster. So we've made an adjustment where World Tier 2 now goes, instead of giving you 20% bonus XP, it gives you 50% bonus XP. Oh my god. Uh, World Tier 3 now gives you 150% uh, bonus XP, mm -hmm. as opposed to the 100% you got before. And then We're going to level even faster? 250% bonus XP, instead of the 200% that you got before. We need an end so, game again, then. We if we're leveling faster, we need an end game. They're getting a chance to play with these new items. They're mm -hmm. getting a chance to see some of the new content we're going to be talking about in just a minute. Uh, and experience more of the end game and, uh, ha and have a little less uh, emphasis on the, the level up process uh, <clears> being like a, a lot longer as it, as it is today. So uh, this is, this is our, our stated intent. We want more players to be able to reach level 100. We want them to get more of these, uh, these level 100, nine, I, 925 items. We want them to start seeing more greater affixes. We want them to engage in tempering and masterworking. We want them to see everything else the game has yeah. to offer. Uh, we want to make sure that we're removing some of the restrictions and making that possible. And we're continuing to think about that as we move forward. This is just... <laughs> All of the things we're talking about today are just one more step on the journey of Diablo 4. We're going to continue, as Adam already called out, to continue to make the game better based on feedback and just continue yeah. to add more cool stuff that, uh, that we think is great for the game and that also that we're, we're hearing from our player base, our community, would be really, really great for the game experience. So uh, with that quick little thing out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the first major update we have planned uh, that you'll get a chance to see on PTR. And that is we made a, a significant update to Helltide. Now, I think that everyone will remember that in Season 3, we made an adjustment to Helltide timing, where now they're basically up for 55 minutes out of every hour. There's a five-minute gap between each Helltide experience. You know, and we think that that's great. Players are able to get uh, better access to Forgotten Souls and, uh, and, and, other, and all the gameplay there. But we also, like looking back on Season 2 uh, and you know, the, uh, the, the Blood Harvest regions where uh, you know, the armies of Lord Zir were marching across Sanctuary as we all... Recall from mm. quarter four of last year, and you know, capturing people and draining them of blood. Uh, you know, that was uh, we thought that was a really fun, frenetic, uh, like social experience in the overworld. Like it's just a, a blast, kind of go through, kill vampires, save people, uh, and uh, and summon bloodseekers as well along the way, and getting good rewards as you. I go. already thought Helltide so it was, was, just was a, one it was of the better experience. game modes. They're in making three, it way we had better a here. Different take on that idea with the, with the form of arcane tremors, where players can go and engage in a number of different like, small activities and traps. And, uh, and also uh, managed to, uh, to summon Heralds of Malthus in a group and go ahead and get more like tuning stones and more uh, uh, and, and, and governing stones uh, and continue to like, just get more rewards uh, from that experience. And again, we thought that was pretty fun, right? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to take some of these ideas back to Helltide and I'll, I'll be, I'll be uh, actually I think it might be even easier if we, if we could just throw to Ruben potentially who I think might actually be able to be in Helltide right now. 
Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Looks like that's the case. So we want to take some of these ideas back to Helltide. <laughs> Hello, yes, you're being, you're going to get destroyed. Uh, so uh, so uh, yeah, we want to take some of these ideas back to Helltide and make sure that the, the our overworld, exciting, demonic invasion experience that players get to go through here is just more fun to, uh, to, to engage with. Was that you just know, a giant hellworm belching a bunch of enemies at? <laughs> that, was, that was a giant hellworm <laughs> belching a bunch okay. of enemies up. So a, a bunch of things have changed. So one of the things <laughs> that, let me, let me, let me dive in. So one of the, one of the things that, we, uh, that we, we did is we add this new idea of a threat system. Now you'll see the eagle-eyed among you uh, can look to the left of the mini-map. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, can look to the left <laughs> of the mini-map, and you'll see a horizontal bar it's segmented in three pieces uh, next to that kind of like half-completed pentagram there. Uh, as the players are killing demons in Helltide areas, they are slowly growing their threat over the course of the experience. And as they do that, they're going to find like more uh, like ambushes. They're going to find more uh, creatures trying, uh, coming and trying to kill them as they uh, as they kind of like roll through the space. And this, they're earning, they're gaining threat by doing anything. If they're opening tortured gifts, if they are killing like regular monsters and elites, you know, they're they're always earning more threat for the things that they do. The, There's the goblin blood at the top. More attention. So Blood, the as goblin. the player is going to go through this process, they are going to feel, start feeling like more pressure as they go through the experience. Now, once the player has gotten towards the, like, the end of this, like, they actually have, uh, you know, when the armies of hell have been fully alerted, you know, you'll hear a tone, which I think that, uh, I think we might actually hear soon, potentially. Well, I guess we'll have to see. But you'll, you'll hear a tone alerting you to the, uh, the fact that the armies of hell are basically coming for your blood, right? They're, they're coming for you at this time. And what they, in that case, you're going to see that there's going to be a new creature type that's going to appear, uh, which we'll uh, be able there's to get to in just a second. There's a timer on the Helltide? Some of the other that big new? changes that are happening in uh, Helltide alongside this, while we kind of wait for some of is this the stuff to Is the timer happen, new? Is, uh, we're, we have reduced the uh, the level requirement or the world tier requirement for Helltide, so you'll start to see them. No, in, uh, in I haven't played Diablo 4 so in a while. In a, a great way for Maybe. you to level up. Uh, okay, it looks like the forces of Hell have been alerted. So now it's going to be game. like it's, it's going to be a little, a little, almost a little bit more of a holdout. More invasions and ambushes are going to start to occur at this time, you know, and uh, it's going to have a, a, a kind of cap off event towards the end. We'll talk about it as it arrives. But you can see right now that threat is draining while this uh, this uh, event so is occurring. here. So you've kind of like reached that maximum threshold. You know, the the the, 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 the minions of hell are coming for you. Uh, you are you know you're going to be um, you know kind of fighting pretty hard for this stuff. But it's a great way to get like X to a lot of elites. You know, once this bar is all is drained, once again, you can start building it up by, again, going out, doing more things inside the Helltide experience. Uh, you're going to get more opportunities for more cinders and more of these ambushes again as, the, uh, as, as time goes on. Looks like we're getting towards the, uh, the end of this now. Oh, yeah. Should be getting a, this, uh, this Hellborn here. Yeah, this is so a... yes. So yes, and now uh, one of the Hellborn has managed to appear. Uh, Hellborn are, are they're very much a, uh, a similar creature to some of the... Uh, the blood seekers that we've seen in the past; these are adventurers who have fallen to the uh, to the 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 depravities of hell. They're now serving the uh, their his, their infernal masters. Uh, they have great drops, like they'll drop uh, like legendary equipment, uh, and uh, they will also drop uh, summoning materials for Lord Zier uh, moving mm -hmm. forward. So there's more ways ah. for you to get some of those mats as you go through the experience. And that's actually one of the other things that we did as uh, as part of uh, our, our general updates is we we kind of wanted to go through and do a pass to make it easier to find more of those those boss summoning materials, like from doing like different kinds of content. So mm -hmm. while obviously you can go to Hell Tides and open tortured gifts to get living steel pretty quickly, we, we want to make sure that there's like, if you find like a treasure yeah, we bounty, need to, a chance now that a treasure get a better build on that one. boss summoning mm -hmm. material. Oh, you know, when you go right. and you open bounty caches or uh, whisper caches at the end of a, uh, a, a bunch of whispers runs, like in that situation, you'll also get a chance of getting random boss summoning material. You know, and we find more opportunities through different parts of the experience in like local events. Like when you're going and just finding events and you manage to complete the mastery objective of an event now, there's a chance for you to get uh -huh. a boss of new material there. You know, uh, even elites have a very, very low chance uh, to, draw, uh, to drop some of these materials. And again, all to make it just a little bit easier to kind of like gain access to these bosses as you're leveling up and playing, even if you're not saying, saying specifically in just Nightmare Dungeons to get Distilled Fear or something else, right? Um, so yeah, that's. I mean, those. I think those are going to be some pretty fun updates for the players. That's uh, obviously that's pretty not exciting. everything. Yeah. So we. Uh, <laughs> so another thing that we're doing as part of this is that we are adding a new. We're adding a new boss. Uh, a new boss. Pit we're or, adding uh, Tomb Lord uh, and Daryl. So uh, you can so now you fight and Daryl. Uh, Tomb Lord. She is summonable by defeating uh, the Beast in Ice and, and Lord Zir, and she's got the same drop table as Duriel. So we the Andario sure fight that was good in the campaign. Ways to kind of gain access to these really, really powerful uniques. We need Uber drops, Tomb Lord though. That's what the people want. Getting those Uber uniques without always requiring players to go back to those same places. 
Yep. So between opening up the options of how you gain access to materials you can use to go farm Uber Uniques a little bit earlier, uh, to like now saying, hey, go do Nightmare Dungeons, go do some of this overworld content and Helltide content to gain access to Beast and Ice in Lord Zeer, so you can go farm Endurial there. We think that's going to be like a really, really fun change. Uh, and uh, Endurial is a really cool fight. I think we might actually have like a quick little yeah. shot of the summoning for Endurial. As we all know her and love her. There oh, she is. Wow. Cool. She's back. She's tough. You know, it's uh, it's it's gonna be. I want to say the fun. fight's been updated too. It's yeah, not fight. exactly the same as yeah. what you did before. Yeah, so. the uh, yeah, the designer's been very excited about this fight and very excited about Endario for a while, bringing her back into the uh, into the equation. So yeah, she's gonna be a lot of fun to summon. Ah, oh, the poison of the class. Yeah. Okay, uh, enough Endario. Yeah. Yeah. Enough Endario. Yeah. All right, yeah. People see that. We got to, we're, on, we're, on, we're on a timer, people. Okay, I got things to talk about still. Uh, okay, but that's not even all the things that we're changing with regards to, to bosses. There's, mm. there's more stuff that we're doing as well. Um, so one of the things that we're going to be talking about in just a minute is, uh, is a new feature called the pit. And inside the pit, you can be able to, you're going to be earning Stygian stones you'll be able to use to summon higher level versions of all of these bosses as you go deeper into the The pit. So we think this is ex this is extremely exciting. It provides a uh, another way for players to be able to like, express their like their build strength and going and fighting these bosses uh, are going to provide much much greater rewards. In fact, when you kill one of these new very very powerful tormented versions of these bosses uh, out there, uh, they are going to give you a uh, they're going to give you one uh, resplendent spark the first time you kill any of them. Mm. So uh, of like the all the ones that you can summon, the first time you kill one of them, you're going to get a resplendent spark for you to use in the future. Now, and that is not all that we're doing, obviously. I mentioned the pit. <laughs> That's not so it. if we could just go ahead and, uh, well, I guess we'll, I guess we could talk about it. I can speak to it, actually, yeah. yeah. So we've been getting a lot of feedback uh, from like our experience with, uh, with the Avatar of Zir. Yeah. You know, so uh, you know, at the, towards the end of season two, we had this like really, really difficult like dungeon dive. We were going against, against again, forces of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Lord Zir uh, inside this, uh, this uh, experience and fighting blood seekers and, and kind of racing the clock. And when that was a that was a pretty fun experience. Uh, we got a lot of really good information and feedback about how that really played out. We made a number of adjustments in the form of this new content type that we're calling uh, the Artificer's Pit. And what it effectively is is a way for players to go and um, there like once players have have uh, managed to complete a, a tier forty five nightmare dungeon, which is filled with like level one hundred monsters, they're going to gain access to a quest that's going to like send them around the world looking for rune shards. And rune shards are just this new material that players will collect to open up uh, Artificer's Rifts. And they drop mm. from elite creatures, they drop all over the place. Like, it's pretty easy to find. Rifts? So this is like greater rifts. start this process. Uh, and when you have a number of them, you can bring them back to this obelisk in Karagar and kind of use that to, like, form a, uh, a, a your first pit run, effectively. Uh, and there, there's hundreds of levels of this, and the monsters that you will begin fighting immediately are all, like, right at level 100. Do we have a... Uh, uh, we have a video of it. Or a, in, yeah. yeah, yeah, let's see what we got. So we have a uh, Ruben like kind of near live, there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. We have the live play <laughs> with that awesome debug. Text, yeah, there it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With the awesome debug text. Everybody, it's PTR. Look forward. And it's a, we're looking talking about dev stuff right now. This is what it looks like sometimes. So okay. So we see here that, uh, that Ruben's coming. He's already done uh, the the rift before. He's going to go ahead and just open up a tier one uh, artificer's rift, and just we'll see how this goes. So he's going to spend one rune shard to do this. That's going to open up right here in Kargar. Um, and we're going to go, there's, like, there's a little bit of a stacking issue there. Yeah, we're going to have that fixed too. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Again, send us that feedback, everybody. Uh, and you're going to dive into your first pit run. Now, uh, each pit experience is it's a, it's a randomized layout filled with random monsters. You know, uh, there's no nightmare affixes like what we have in, uh, or like afflictions like we have in... Uh, Ten in minute Red timer. Dungeons. Instead, uh, the players really like just pushing themselves up as, uh, against this timer as fast as they can uh, trying to complete it. So as you're going through this, you'll see it's very, very similar to a lot of things that we did in the Avatar of Zir. Now, we want to make sure that this is a, a quick, punchy experience. As you're playing and you're killing monsters, you're not going to be getting any loot from the drops. Like, there's, like that stuff's not here to slow you down. You know, it's just about like, pushing as hard as you can. Now, a couple of the major differences between what we've done in uh, the Artificer's Pit uh, relative to what we did in the Avatar of Zir is first... Uh, in, in the Avatar of Zir, when a player died uh, while going through the experience, they were immediately ejected from the Avatar of Zir. Like, their run was over uh, in the case of death. Here, uh, we want to allow for a little bit more, uh, a few more uh, problems to occur, a few more errors, you know, from the player as they're kind of going through. 
uh, so that every time you, you die, what actually ends up happening is you add 30 seconds to your timer. Uh, uh, so okay. you're, you're, you're less and less likely to beat the timer. And that's important. At the end of the timer, you're not ejected from the pit. Like if you, if you don't actually manage to keep time with the timer, you just don't get the mastery objective completion. And the mastery is tied to masterworking materials that you'll be using to go through the masterworking process for your items. In fact, the pit, as Charles referenced earlier, is the place you need to go in order to obtain the bulk majority of those masterworking materials. So while you can get to the end of the experience and you will get rewards for having defeated the boss by the, uh, by the end of a pit run if you don't manage to finish the, with the timer in mind, you won't get access to those materials. So why is this? So one of the things we recognize we, that we think is very unique to Diablo uh, and, and to SARPGs in general is that a lot of times players are making uh, like efficiency bets about how they choose to engage with content. They're deciding, okay, I, I can kill monsters of this level fairly easily and without much risk. How much further Floor beyond this level two. can I push in order to maximize the rewards I'm getting from the uh, from This other is greater risk. Uh, and while also uh, like maintaining good cadence and like managing my risk. And that's kind of like that, that fun sweet spot that we think works really, really well. You know, AOZ was meant to like tap into a little bit of this we want, but it was also AOZ was designed to be an extraordinarily challenging piece of content from the get-go. Here, the pit starts in a somewhat more reasonable place. I think we understand that like, you know, tier, uh, like tier 45 Nightmare Dungeons are not you know, uh, the most challenging content in the entirety of the game is it goes up much higher than that. And the pit does as well. As the pit can go, like, well past uh, tier 100, so you can be fighting level 200 monsters, level 250 monsters, as you go deeper and deeper into the experience. So, okay, it looks like uh, Ruben's making pretty good time going through this. I think we saw earlier that Ruben actually, like, jumped into a portal to move to a different area. What are the yeah, odds yeah. that the yeah. boss is Tomb Lord? Entire, what are the uh, odds that like the that boss first, is Tomb Lord at the area? end? Uh, you kind of are expected to like move on, but um, you also don't need to kill everything uh, in there are still, these, uh, these areas. There's no progression there's orbs, thank God. In both spaces, you kind of like make up the time that you need. He's making pretty good time here, though. Okay. So the idea is to try and find that level in the pit where you can go pretty efficiently and quickly, but where you're pushing hard so you can get better rewards. Right. right. Okay. So uh, Ruben did a great, great job, Ruben. Uh, so you managed to, you managed to do it. Okay, let's not get too excited. All right, so, yeah. so yeah, so now he's gonna go. He's gonna go, and he's gonna fight the uh, the boss in just a moment. Mm -hmm. Now, the the second thing that's different about the uh, the, the pit, outlaw that, uh, that sharpshooter. <laughs> you just start to see it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, there's different from what we've done in uh, in AOZ in the past. Is that occasionally during a pit run, you're going to be confronted by another major boss or villain uh, that you've seen. Like you'll see their echo occasionally appear just for a moment to perform a big attack. A uh, big sweeping attack, and or that you're going to have to like avoid or deal with while you're dealing with the uh, the the boss you're already fighting, and this is happening throughout the duration of the pit as well, yeah. you know. And as you go deeper, you'll see this occasionally a little more frequently at the same time. So these are just another complication, like another another thing that you're going to be thinking about while you're playing and trying to, to like remember the new sort of bosses. Patterns. Eventually, you'll fight. You'll, and you'll see boss patterns, well. you know. So like you'll you'll be dealing That's with that. That's better uh, than that Tomb Lord, man. As you, as you play deeper and deeper into the pit. better yeah, than Tomb say, Lord. Oh. So, so it's kind of like. Uh, Elias, for instance, like a, oh my. A, a shade of Elias can yeah. appear. Yeah, come and do an and attack. Just yeah. do an attack in the middle a of the A shade of Lilith can appear as well. A shade, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A shade, a shade of, of Lilith can also oh. appear, yeah. which is so yeah. cool. these are These are definitely tough, uh, like tough things as you go deeper and deeper, and eventually you might see a couple of them as well in, in combination. So, okay, so here, Ruben killed the boss, got a number of different drops. There's a there's a bug in this, in this version that we're looking at right now where the items are dropping are not actually ancestral, but that's not the case when players will be playing on the PTR. You all see ancestral items as the rewards for killing the boss here at the end. And then after that, uh, when you open the chest, you're going to see that there's a bunch of obdicite that popped out of it, which is a, a masterworking material. You know, I think he got, I think he got five, you know, from the, uh, from the first run. Obdicite. So as you go deeper in the pit, there's basically three tiers of masterworking materials that you're going to be able to earn through. So there's the, uh, there's the obdicite, there's the ingolith, and then there is the, yeah, the neath iron. Uh, so these are available as you go deeper and deeper into the pit experience. I think obdicite right now is like like tiers Neath one to twenty. Iron. You know you'll be getting uh, like uh, amounts of obdicite as you go from like twenty one to forty. You get amounts of ingolith, and as you yeah. go to neath iron and beyond, mm -hmm. uh, as you go into like you know uh, like forty and beyond, you're starting seeing more and more neath iron. And these things can also be like condensed down to lower level materials if you need them for resetting a masterwork item and starting at a, at a lower level. So you don't yeah. have to go back to the low level. No, you can no, stay no. at the higher. You, you can stay at the higher level. But, level yeah. Yeah. but to be clear, if you want to get to that rank 12 masterwork, the really the best possible items, you do need to be pushing deeper levels of the pit. You yeah, can't just sure. continually farm level one. You you want to push to that efficiency bet that you said. Yeah. Push yourself to your limit mm -hmm. to get the most materials per hour, and just you know. 
really fight that hard content to get the best items. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So yeah, if you want to go through that process and like really get those really be the best items available for your build. I mean, this uh, is going to be better than the abattoir. This is going to be better than the gauntlet, that's for damn sure. Points, right, to get the absolute It's going to be better than those two. Items. You know, so we think the pits can be, it's a really fun experience. It is, uh, it's, it's very extendable, so it goes, it goes pretty deep for players. And again, as you're going, you're getting these Stygian stones as you play. You know, like as you get deeper into the experience, you're going to get those. Uh, you're going to you're going to get the uh, the ability to go fight those those level 200 tormented versions of these bosses. So like a level 200 uh, tormented version of Varshan. So there's you know, an so Uber so version forth. of the bosses. All of these uh, bosses have a, a, a higher chance to drop uh, uh, Uber unique item as well. So now there's even more reason to want to go get some of these uh, these creatures on farm. And they have they have better drops. They have a they have they more prolific in terms of the drops. They drop many, many more items uh, as you're going through this. So there's, uh, these are going to be huge, huge challenges for, uh, for players to go and try to chase, again, just in Season 4. Yeah. You know, so there's, that's, that's like the, the, the current look of some of the things we're working on right now, yeah. yep. uh, that we're, we're currently very excited about. Yeah, so... Ton <laughs> on, the, on, on the content side. Right? Yeah, we, I mean, <laughs> we, we're, we're an hour and a half in of all the uh, content that we just walked through with, with Season 4. Uh, and as you know, Adam had mentioned earlier, you know, we haven't even gone through all the class updates. You guys will actually see that. <laughs> more, more. There's a lot more. Uh, you guys will actually see that next week. Normally, we do have a blog and patch notes kind of available uh, like a day or two after a campfire chat. Uh, I am asking the community if it's okay if we give it to you guys next week because the only reason why is that they're huge. And we actually need to make sure that we get all the information mm -hmm. in there. You guys will have it well before the PTR actually starts. And we will actually have uh, a, a blog kind of going through all the details of this actual campfire chat, as well as the giant list of patch notes for the PTR, yeah. which again will begin on April 2nd, run for a week uh, on PC Battle.net. And we'll have instructions of how to actually get into the PTR, download the client and everything from that end as well. So I know uh, we always end our campfire chats with a, a Q&A session. Yep. So yeah. we do want to make sure that we do a, a, a Q&A session right now. So if you guys have questions, please use Twitch yeah. chat. I can't imagine there's any questions. So. No, yeah, we no, covered everything, this. right? Covered I thought it was a perfect oh, explanation. I have we questions. Did ask earlier this week on the forums if the, you know if anyone had any specific questions. And, uh, and think... So we can actually tee up a question mm -hmm. while people are populating questions in, uh, in chat. Uh, so we'll start off with one that we have here from the forums. Uh, this is from Iggy. Uh, mm. What will happen to current items after this rework? Because obviously we're now changing a lot of things from yeah, our, our past yeah, items going into yeah. season four. Yeah, so all of the items that you currently have on your characters or on the Eternal Realm will be flagged as what are called legacy items. And this means that they are not able to interact with the new systems of tempering or masterworking. Uh, they, they'll continue to function as they are, uh, so that they're not going to break, they're not going to be rerolled or changed in any way. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of say, hey, this was an item that, you know, you, in, in the old system, but if you want to engage with the new uh, systems and, and find those greater affixes and temper all the cool new affixes onto it uh, and, and do mass working, of course, I want to know what they're going to do to bridge the items. graps. Yeah. Yep. Bridge um, the gap there between is a solo question from Toast and Pen, Eternal Realm, Realm what's replace. new. Uh, everything we just talked yeah. about, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything we just there talked about, Eternal. Toast and Pen, so, is going to cool. be available in the Eternal Realm. So, and this will start with Season Four. So, I want to know what they'll do to bridge the gap plays on between Realm, solo and group play. There, of course, you can just immediately especially start for the Uber bosses, everything that we just kind of talked about right here. That's um, what I want to know. J Corsair nineteen. Does yeah, the master working just increase the total range of the roll, or does it get you closer to a max roll? So it increases the current value. So if you already had a max roll, it keeps on increasing. So as an example, you had um, an affix that could have rolled between 50 and 100, and you had a value of 90. Every time you increase it, it's going to increase that 90 um, by, or let's say you, you had it at 100, uh, just to make <laughs> math easier, because <laughs> uh, quick math. Um, if it was already at 100, uh, the first mass working upgrade will take it to 105. Uh, even though the base roll range was just up to 100, you can continue progressing past that. Uh, if you had it you know, down at 50, it would go from 50 up to 55, and, and so on. Hmm. Um, Arrow1357 just asked, like, what about season? Like, is, this, is there season stuff as well? We actually aren't talking yet about 
the the season item. So mm -hmm. uh, yes, this is all part of. So the what season, that means is you would only realm, master work on have, an item uh, there, there are where the affixes that you cared about already started at the top of the range, right? About here, yeah. Uh, in the you would only the start rolling team, the, at the, the top of the range. Really been spent on trying to ensure that this update is really meaty and all including, right? All inclusive. Like when I've talked before about, you know, the. Um, the season two updates where we talk about like vulnerability damage and the many, many yeah. changes we have to make to kind of like make that to kind of like get that into a better spot for the players overall. You can see like the amount of things that we did are kind of all connected in a lot of ways. Uh, and it's important they kind of come out together. It's difficult to do one thing in isolation. So a lot of teams worked together to kind of like bring this update uh, and get over the finish line. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a huge, huge lift. But there's more things to talk about later on. Yeah, for the season. Um, Thorag the Warrior says, uh, can multiple affixes uh, increase per masterwork or only one affix per masterwork? Right, so when, when you're masterworking, most of the ranks will increase all of all the affixes of on the and gear it crits by a small amount. Four. But when you hit those uh, thresholds, the rank 4, rank 8, and rank 12, a single random affix will get a much larger boost. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, because there's three, that happens three times on your journey from you know, rank uh, 1 to 12, uh, in theory, all three of those could land on the same affix if you get lucky, and then that one affix just goes through the roof. Uh, or it could be spread out to three different affixes, for instance. Yeah. Um, that's just the nature of masterworking. Uh, you're going to get a different result every time you go through that process. Um, so I, I've seen a lot of people actually mention this in chat, and I, uh, Riker also just mentioned this in chat. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, and they're asking, is it just me, or was the camera more zoomed out in the dev build? Actually, oh, we didn't even talk about that. Actually, oh, wow. Okay. Oh, you go ahead. Go ahead. In, in, in yeah. season four, the camera will be more zoomed out, uh, and there will be an option. You can, you can. Oh, you thank can God. What we had before, or you can zoom it out a little. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yes. Yeah, yes. there's a gameplay setting. <laughs> it starts at the current default. Correct. You know, which is what we have in Diablo 4 today. But we did. We've been hearing the feedback. We did make a, uh, we did mm -hmm. make a move. Uh, Joe Shelley helped a lot with this, actually. We did make a, everybody helped a lot with this. We yeah. did make a move to like pull the camera out a little bit further. Uh, that's part of like a near far sort of last situation. epoch so needs it's, us it's badly. Good eye. Good eye. Good eye. Good update. Yes, yes, of course. Yes. Yeah, we, and we forgot to say that's another really good one to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, thanks, chat. <laughs> th there are a lot of questions about loadouts. Um, did you guys want to provide any context on that? Yeah, so we are, we've talked about this before. We're very, very excited about bringing in, like an armory-like feature to Diablo 4. You know, we've been hearing the feedback since like the, since the, the gauntlet went up, uh, which we're very excited about. And uh, we see that there's an opportunity uh, here. We don't have anything to announce today, but we, it is a thing the team has talked about, like the UI team is very excited about. It's the thing we definitely want to move on at some point, but nothing to announce. Yeah. Um, that, that, that way I lost my track here. Uh, do you have any intention of reviewing, I'm sorry, this is from, Vix three one one or three ii. Uh, do you have any intention of reviewing class optimization examples like give more customization points or put Paragon uh, after a higher level than fifty? So there's a number of things the, that we're, I don't we're talking the about for the future. What? Things we are, we can't talk about today. You know, but you can imagine that like we're going to be having an expansion soon. Let me ask the question. That stuff then. You know, yeah. we do, we, mm -hmm. there's things for us to be considering. Um, a lot of people mentioning a loop filter, yeah. Um, which I know, like we we had mentioned as well that we wanted to get through the the itemization stuff. So sure, I can talk a little bit uh, about that. I think a lot of the desire for a loot filter in in the current version of Diablo Four stems from the problems that we initially mentioned. With we really do just flood you with I items, think we still need a and loot it's like filter. sifting sand, right? You you need to look through all these items, and uh, the the one response is, hey, a loot filter could automate all this. Uh, we think in this new itemization world, where we are simplifying it in a lot of the ways that we already discussed, reduced number of affixes, simpler affixes, uh, the item power, once you get to the late game, always dropping at the max, uh, will help to alleviate a lot of those concerns, and it will make parsing through the items a lot easier in this new uh, system. Um, Lady Ava I didn't answer the question. Is that a no? actually brings up something that I think we should uh, talk about, which is... Would it be possible to toss a different icon on the map when uh, when uh, specific like uh, greater, the greater affixes, affixes and right. things like that drop? Uh, are there any plans for that um, in, in regards to to changing some of that around? We really want to get feedback from players as you go through the PTR experience. Even the uh, the thing that we showed, like the the Roman numerals, you know, mm -hmm. on the uh, attached to the uh, the item names on the ground, like even that's going through a bit of revision before it actually re is released. 
mm-hmm. as part of the uh, the the one dot four uh, release moment. So like that's going to get a little bit better. But like I think that it would be good to get feedback to see how these things feel, and uh, it's something we'll continue to think about because we we do want those moments to be exciting yeah. when they actually occur. Yeah. Um. Brian C22, uh, you say higher the rifts, the better the items. Are we talking about the equivalent to primals? So the and if people don't know, primals being a, a D3 specific item yeah. that was super powerful. So as you go, we're, we're not changing the rate at which like greater affixes, for example, could appear on like I power 925 items, and we're mm-hmm. not raising the uh, the I power ceiling of items beyond 925 as you're going deeper into the pit. Instead, it's more about like. As you go deeper in the pit, you're going to get more legendary uh, like uh, uh, drops. So this is going to give you more options, more chances of getting things that, uh, yeah. that have uh, like better, greater uh, affix potential. You know, so that's that's really more the way that we're handling that. And then of course the master working materials that we're using to power and uh, juice up. How does it items. give you more greater uh, affix potential if the number of rates of greater do affixes do don't with, drop and they're uh, drop in only? The uh, yes, yes, you, you can party groups. in the pit. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then, let me see. What? Uh, will we be seeing any, like, clan updates, social updates? This is another big question that a lot mm-hmm. of people are asking about from... from More, within the chat. volume uh, of items goes up? That, uh, or any progress in regard the to The volume that. of items so, goes uh, up. So, we oh. have been talking a lot internally on the team about social okay. updates and things we want to talk about soon. Uh, but we we definitely hear the uh, hmm. the the desire from the players that we're, they're looking for more ways to, like, kind of get into groups. And to form parts of people online as opposed to just t- like talking in local chat or trade chat or trying to like. I'm looking for ways to not party with Discord people. Just going to How are we going to bridge so we solo do have versus thoughts on group? We want you to kind of help uh, that process along. Uh, but uh, nothing to announce for season four at this yeah. time. Yeah. Um, I know there's also um, there, there's some comments about like um, uh, the store, the shop, and things like that with related to items. There's actually, I know um, last time we had a campfire chat, I had mentioned like, hey, our. our team that that focuses on like the product team has been taking in a lot of feedback um there's actually going to be some some changes here coming really soon that will be offering up uh new uh opportunities for people to use some of the platinum that they may have uh, uh obtained in the, the battle pass for some really cool looking uh uh sets and stuff that for or cosmetics for their people character. asked and questions also, i believe about taking the, the, um, the and retroactively changing that that portal pack yeah and I, I think mm. it was actually locked per class so you, if mm. you were like a necromancer, you could only use one of the colors. That is changing uh, here in the future where you'll be able to use it. it there's no discrimination amongst portal colors. So yep, yeah, right. it, it, you will be able to choose exactly what you want. And you know, the I, I will say there's gonna be some more significant changes I know coming with the store that that team has been taking in a lot of feedback. So we'll, we'll players will be able to see more uh, related to that here um, soon. Um, let me see if I can get any more uh, questions. Cass- Jordiff says, any PvP news, balance, new rewards? Uh, nothing to announce on PvP right now. The focus of this update has been predominantly on the core underpinnings of our like our SARPG experience, yeah. trying to make sure that it feels like there's a really exciting gear chase for players to pursue once they get to a certain level of power, that we have done a lot, like what Charles talked about, like condensing down a lot of our affixes to make items just feel more engaging in general, uh, going through all of our various classes, trying to open yeah. up a lot of new build opportunities. So it's kind of like trying, like what we're really trying to do here is respond to a lot of the, the really, really big major feedback we've been hearing, honestly, since launch, yeah. and try to like get a, a good, big, sizable update for players to go and engage with there. But we didn't spend time in features like PvP, you know, because and, 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 that would distract us from what we're really trying to focus on at the time instead. These but, things yeah. are going to fundamentally change everything, though, like PvP as well. Like how, how, how you yeah. make yeah. a character, the builds you make, how you do everything fundamentally is going to change from this. Right. So this was the big thing we're trying to nail on all of our... Eyes were focused on that. That's right. Uh, Dristren asks, I know Uber Uniques cannot be tempered, but can they roll greater affixes and can they be mastercrafted? Yes, uh, on both accounts. Uh, yes. Uniques can roll greater affixes, just the same as uh, Ancestral Legendaries. Can it you roll the, the greater so Shaco affix? As before. Uh, same concept with uh, Uber Uniques. And even through the Respondent Spark, the crafting system, uh, there is a small chance that when you craft it, uh, they comes with an Uber, or sorry, the Uber unique comes with a greater affix, even when you craft it, just as if it would drop. That's correct. All right, I'm going to do one last question. This is from GGI 101. Will the aspect changes also apply to alternate characters? Do I need to level up my aspects on alternate characters, for example? Uh, aspects yes. are uh, partition bound. So which, mm-hmm. and what I mean by that is when if you're playing a seasonal character and you want to play an alt on your on the seasonal realm, like that alt will also benefit from all the unlocks you've got within your codex yeah. of power. Dude, I've been begging like for that. For there is a separation system. between hardcore and not hardcore characters. That's correct. As yes. well. yeah. That's correct. Hardcore characters are kind of their own thing, mm-hmm. um, even on the seasonal realm. Yeah. 
Awesome. So a lot of info delivered in this uh, this campfire yeah. chat. Yeah. Probably the most info we've ever delivered in any campfire chat or even developer update live stream. But it's important stuff because obviously with season four, um, we have a PTR coming up for those that may have missed it. It will be on April 2nd through April 9th. Uh, and it'll be on PC Battle.net only. So players who uh, want to help test things out, provide feedback, please do so. We'll be checking all our, you know, our social channels, Reddit, the forums. The forums will actually have a new separate PTR forum uh, available there. This also does mean season three is going to be extended because we want to make sure we grab all the feedback um, yep. from this PTR and all the feedback from the community, and we have enough time to actually implement that for season four. So. Uh, season 3 is going to be extended to May 14th. Uh, season 4, of course, will start on May 14th as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll be coming out with more information on uh, what Season 4 is specifically. And all the details that we actually talked about here today will be in a very extensive blog along with all the patch mm -hmm. notes of all the like small things like the, the class changes uh, that Adam actually wasn't it's able small. to get through. Yeah. Small. <laughs> yeah. 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 small. Uh, uh, we'll be in those patch notes as well. Um, and we still actually do have uh, another update that will be coming out next week for Diablo 4. And this one has actually been long awaited uh, because this one does include um, some big quality features on the, on the graphics side for uh, D4. Uh, and we will have a blog that will be talking about it. Um, as you guys know, ray tracing is coming to D4 mm -hmm. uh, and that'll be hitting next week on March 26. Um, so people uh, will be able to Maybe if you've got it, if you've got a rig for it, you can totally uh, turn up all your your graphical settings, get ray tracing with D4, um, and we'll also be talking about how uh, console players will also be able to uh, take advantage of it in our blog next week. So lots of stuff coming down. Um, That's cool and on the ray lots tracing. To talk about again next like week. That. We'll have all the information on blog and uh, patch notes. Um, but we thanks again, yeah. everyone. Thanks yeah. again, Joe Shelley, who's <laughs> also still in the room over here. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Uh, and uh, yeah, huge shout out to the community. Thank you guys again for all the wonderful feedback that you guys have been providing. Um, and we're really excited for you guys to jump into PTR, jump into all the season four itemization, class changes, and of course our new end game uh, changes as well. So uh, we will catch you soon. And uh... okay, so let's talk about Diablo four. In particular, let's talk about the things that are still problems. Uh, what else can you guys think of? That is, let me, I have way too many tabs open. If a thousand tabs, give me a moment, please, to close them all. Close the ones I don't need, which is almost all of them. Close that. Okay. All right. Guys, there's so many people. Hog rated me. Thank you, buddy. So many people who subbed and gifted subs everywhere. Thank you. Yeah, map overlay. I guess I don't know if stash tabs are a problem anymore. They might still be. I guess we could put it as a question mark. Not sure if they're going to be a problem anymore, but they might be. Oh, yeah, with the shop. Yeah, we we need need lots of lots of MTX to spend money on. Yeah, that's a huge problem. In fact, I'm going to put that at the top. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Can't miss that one. Okay. We'll put it at the top. Oops. Uh, what did I do there? Did I just delete one of my... Oh, here. Here's the problem. There. Okay, yeah. We can't forget that one. Thank you. God, Rax, you become so cringe. Just stick to last epoch. Hey, uh, I want to show you something. This works on Twitch, and it works on YouTube. So if you open up Twitch right here there's a search bar at the top you can search for last epoch there are so many people streaming this game bt is streaming it i really love him but there's a lot of streamers you can watch instead of me if you don't like my stream go ahead and use the search bar at the top and go watch somebody else i'm just trying to help you 
Okay? If you don't like my stream, leave. Okay, back to it. Guys, what else is problems with Diablo 4? Auction house. We don't, we don't want an auction house. Dude, the, the chat is going so fast, I actually can't even read it. Okay. Actually changing the Pinnacle Endgame bosses. So they have the Uber version. The camera zoom out. They gave it to us. What, what's the problem with the camera zoom out? The skill, the, the skill trees. That is a major, a major looming problem. What's wrong with the codex? Didn't they just fix the codex? Thought they just fixed it. Hey, uh, real quick, let's do a poll. Let's see how people feel about it. Let's see how people are feeling about this. How are you feeling about season four? One thing that we don't have is the theme. So we don't know what the theme is. So I think there's a theme on top of it. It's from the even team, so it might be good. Okay, so let's create a poll here. Let's see how people are feeling. Here's the poll. Vote in it if you would care to. Okay, I posted the link a million times. And let me look at the results. How are you feeling about it? Oh my god. All right, this is a lot more positive than I thought it was going to be. I'll be honest with you, that's nice to see. I'll be honest with you, I'm happy to see it. Thank God. Most people would give it between a seven and a, half, a five and a seven and a half. You can't see the poll. Okay, paste it again. Here you go. Thanks for all the subs, guys. I appreciate it. Is this an Oreo? I have an Oreo. People are really delusional. Delusional about what? All right, one sec. I have a question for you. Even if you love Diablo 4, you're indifferent, you hate Diablo 4, would you agree that at least these changes are making Diablo 4 better than current day Diablo 4? I think this is making the game way better. Is it enough to move the bar for some people? No. Some people are going to hate it no matter what. But the thing for me is at least they're moving the game in a better direction. Which is not much. And a lot of these things like world tier 3 items are always sacred. It's like, that should have been on the launch of the game. Tony, thanks for the raid. Um, think there, there were a lot of things going through there. I was like, that should have been in the game from day one. So I think it's, I don't know if I should give them credit for adding that into the game now. It's like it should have already been there. But at least it's there. I mean, I'll take it late than never, I guess. But 
the thing for me that I give Blizzard credit on is they hit several different areas that I thought that they might not all hit in season four. They hit the fact that uh, with their item, their itemization redo is not just trimming out the damage on Tuesdays. It's having more meaningful affixes, new affixes, multiple crafting systems, having an actual plan to work on your end game items, putting in the surprise moments, changing the way that you acquire uber uniques and the different crafting materials spread out around the game, changing how you get 925 gear. Adding an endgame system, we'll see if it's fun. Once again, trying to make some of the legendaries that don't work, work. Making the Codex of Power, not only giving us the, the feature that we wanted, but also changing the UI with it and adding all the legendaries in the Codex. I didn't think we'd get all three of those. I thought that they would make the Codex auto-upgrade, but I didn't think they'd give us a new UI, and I didn't think that they would put every legendary power in the Codex. So what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing some level of effort. I didn't expect them to color the, the, the affix gold when it was maxed. It's like I'm seeing some effort here, which I will give them credit for. Um... I'm not sure if this is going to be a problem. I, I don't know if I'm going to have a problem with stash tabs anymore. Because we have like six or seven, right? And all I was ever, all that are in my stash tabs are Codex of Power stuff. Maybe you save a bunch of really good yellows for like master working. But are you going to really get seven stash tabs of godly yellows for master working? I mean, maybe. Maybe. What? They they mentioned that, that that's coming. Not in this season, but the... You mean the armory? They said that that's coming, but not in this patch. Glyph XP. DM just raided me. DM, uh, do you want to talk about the updates or you got you got to head out? Yeah, that's a good point. The er, the early game, they said that they were going to buff the er, uh, the early game for some uh, things. Is DM here or did he leave? He's drunk. He's going to go make a video. Okay. Okay. Who cares about DM's opinion? He hates it. Did did DM hate the update? By the way, guys, there are, there are so many, there are so many people here. This is unbelievable. We have like ten thousand people on Twitch. We have five thousand people here on YouTube. This is actually pure madness. Thanks for being here, guys. Except for that one guy who said that one thing. That guy can go fly a kite. But everybody else, thank you for being here. Rax, check Discord. Oh God. This is actually pure madness. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That's what my mom always used to say when I was growing up. Whenever she didn't like anybody, she'd say, that guy can go fly a kite. I think the idea behind that statement is they can stand out in the fields accomplishing nothing away from the rest of the world or something. I don't, I don't know. That's just what my mom said, so I just repeat it. Quinn's not here, so you guys are here. All right, well... Quinn will be back next week, I think. It's not the same without Quinn around. Okay. Um, what else is a problem with Diablo 4? Another thing that we could do, another thing that I want to list, I need to test some specific things on the PTR. So I need to test the flat damage, flat damages. I need to test leveling builds i need to test minions i need to test what do i need to test idols 
auto pick up. What would we auto pick up? Movement in town. See the the theory behind that. The theory behind that. I don't know if this is true or not. Is they don't give you movement skills in town, so you can see people's cosmetics. Thank you so much, guys, for all the subs and the super chats and the member. There's so many people here. Thank you. I appreciate all of it. Uh, you're right. Obviously, the pit. They, they said loadouts are coming. L loadouts, they said, are coming later. Loadouts are coming later. They said that in the, Q in the Q and a We can test. Yeah, we can... We can test the, the, the zoom. We can analyze the zoom. That's true. Does the, pit, does the pit have leaderboards? Like who's gotten the furthest? That would be something. Yeah, I need to break all of the craft. I need to try to break all of the crafting. Helltide. Oh. Hmm. You know, what I used to do is I used to do all this, all of these analytics for how to level up as fast as possible with the sheet. But I don't know if, it seems like day by day that's less and less valuable because they keep making leveling easier and easier and easier. Yeah, I should test frozen orbs specifically. Yeah, the crafting will be uh, master working and tempering. I have a feeling that master working is going to be a little bit bottlenecked. And the reason why is, okay, so, okay, you have an item. You have, uh, let's go gray. You have you have fifteen percent, you have thirty percent, and then you have seventy one percent on an item. All right. Now uh the range here is five to fifteen percent. The range here is twenty to forty. And the range here is 50 to 100. Now, when you're master working here, the way that I understand it, there's 12 levels, right? And the first three levels are going to increase all three of these based upon this value, these values. And let's say that this is the most important stat to you, this one. Okay, so the first upgrade might go 16, 31, 72, and then it might go 17, 32, 73, and then 18, 33, 74. And now let's pretend that we got what we wanted. On the crit, the crit changes this to... 81 and these would not change at all at this level right is how i've illustrated this as you understand master working it works like this right all three it upgrades all three and then you crit on the fourth one on one of the affixes i'm pretty sure this is how it works every level it increases all of them a little bit and when it crits it picks one of them and then you do it three more times i'm pretty sure this is how it works well we can go back and watch it but i'm pretty sure this is it okay the others still go up i don't think so let's pull up let's pull up the uh, let me pull up the rebroadcast. I'm going to look for it. I don't think so. I think, 
I think the way that I showed it is how it works, but we're, I'm going to look for it here for a second. They said it's bugged. Uh, well, okay, but, but that... Uh, okay, all right. Let, let's say it, it actually doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter either way. Whether they increase or they don't, it won't make a difference. So that's not, that's not my problem with master working anyway. So I'll illustrate both scenarios, and you'll see it doesn't matter. Wh whichever one it is, what they showed, what they said it was, bug, no bug, it doesn't make a difference, and I'll show you why. So if it doesn't increase, it would be 18 and 33. And if it does increase, then it would be 19 and 34, right? Either way, it's going to... My problem with master working is going to be the same. Okay, so my problem with master working here is I got this item, and this is the problem. It starts working from the, the number that you rolled on the affix that you wanted. So even though I got the desired outcome that I wanted, I got the crit on the third round. This is way, way worse than if I had just found a base item with 99%. If I had found a base item with 99% and done master working and incorrectly crit, I crit up here and this became a 29, then I would still be at like 104 down here. A million times better. This is why I still think you need a loot filter. Because I need a loot filter that says, if you give me a sword, I don't want you to show me a sword unless, unless this affix has 95% or higher. I don't care if it doesn't have this higher. Because the fact that he said that it operates out of these bases... I don't care if I crit all three times. If I crit all three times, I'm going to get as good of a roll as if I had just started with a 99% weapon. This They trimmed the range? That's exactly... No, they said the opposite. They expanded the range. They expanded the range. They didn't trim it. They expanded it. It's the other way. Not true. What's not true? You mean that they trimmed the range? They said that they expanded it. My math is wrong. Guys, don't look at the math. The math here is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the high-level concept. I'm trying to show you a high-level example about how starting at 99 is way more important than how well you can master work with a 71. As don't look at the math. That's why I said the math doesn't matter up here. Whatever the math is, whatever the numbers are, you're mi what you're miss you're missing twenty eight percent that you will never get back on your best affix if you don't start with something this good. And the only way that you're going to be able to filter something like that to correctly identify this is with a with a filter, right? We can rewatch how it works. Yes, we can watch it again. Let me find it if I can. Uh, okay, it was toward the beginning. Here's master working. For I found it instantly. Okay, I found it instantly. Uh, where you can upgrade the current affixes on your gear. So this isn't going to change any of the affixes like um, enchanting or like tempering does. This is just going to take the current ones and then upgrade them through 12 ranks. This is kind of like the old gear upgrade, right? Similar, yeah. yes. However, both master working <clears throat> and tempering are replacing the old mm -hmm. gear upgrade system. Uh, that The previous system, you just kind of upgraded the item power and, and the values went up by a bit. Uh, these two systems replace that, and now you're going to be able to customize them and then masterwork them it's instead. Significantly more powerful on the back Absolutely. end of this as well after these uh, these things are done. Yeah, yeah. to item upgrade. Yeah, absolutely.
Um, so the, the 12 ranks of matched working, uh, as opposed to the five of the old system, uh, most of the ranks are going to increase all of your affixes on the gear by a small amount. But then every four ranks, so rank four, eight, and 12, are going to upgrade a single affix by a large amount. Ranks four, eight, and 12 upgrade a single affix. A single affix, okay? Your affixes on the gear by a small amount. But then Go ranks back, of mashed working, uh, as opposed to the five of the old system, uh, most of the ranks are going to increase all of your affixes on the gear. Most of the ranks increase all of them. Four, eight, and 12 increase one of them. Here by a small amount. But then every four ranks, so rank four, eight, and 12, are going to upgrade a single affix by a large amount. Okay, so it's, it's how I illustrated it, right? So it's not this, it's what we had originally, right? Okay, so there is something though, there is something that will make this a little bit better. I don't know if it will perfectly, uh, not open, it won't perfectly solve it, but there is something that will make it better, I think. Remember that there's another thing called greater affixes. Keep watching, keep watching, keep watching. So here's an example. Uh, the ring on the left is rank two master working. You can see that right up there by the item power. It says master working two out of 12. Uh, let's focus in on, on like the, the ma maximum life affix there. Uh, so on the left at rank two, you see we've got 880 bonus maximum life. And so we take it, uh, we master work it up to rank three, and then that will upgrade that to 920 maximum life. So a little bit of an improvement. But then once we hit rank four, we actually get a much larger increase in maximum life. It goes from 920 all the way up to 1,120, while the other affixes on the gear stay static because they didn't roll randomly because uh, we're only hitting one. Um, to Joe's point earlier about we still have some, some in-development, uh, this is in-development content, it's not final, as the watermark says, um, the tempered affixes at the bottom, the golem active cooldown reduction and the bone critical strike damage, those also would be being upgraded and are eligible to have this, uh, this larger bonus. Uh, but in this particular screenshot example, those numbers didn't change, but they will change in the final, and there's yeah, a those chance- also get affected, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they will be included just like all the rest of them. Hold on, what did he just say there? Uh, but yeah, so, Particular screenshot example, those numbers didn't change, but they will clear about maximum life. And so we take it, uh, we master work it up to rank three, and then that will upgrade that to 920 maximum life. So a little bit of an improvement. But then once we hit rank four, we actually get a much larger increase in maximum life. It goes from 920 all the way up to 1,120, while the other affixes on the gear stay static because they didn't roll randomly because uh, we're only hitting one. Okay, so what he said there, for those who were confused, okay, this is how it works. When you upgrade it, one, two, and three, every affix will go up by a little bit. The rank four will hit one, and it will be a much larger increase. What he said about certain affixes weren't being hit, he was referring to these affixes. He was referring to the fact that this to this didn't upgrade, but they will. This is the bug, not this. Right? So what I had in the paint is correct it originally, right? And it's not final. They could change their minds. He was, the bug was this to this. Not that only this received the update, but there is something that fixes it and it has nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with master working. It's greater affixes. And the reason why is greater affixes kind of serves, serves as a bad loot filter. Because if you drop, these are all items that drop on the ground. This one might have a one by it and this one might have a two by it, right? And if I remember correctly, did they say that greater affixes always have the max roll? So at a certain point, you would only pick up these two items 
and you would just look to see, did you get critical strike chance? And if you did get it, then you would master work on this, right? I'm pretty sure that they said that greater affixes always give you the highest roll. Uh... And uh, anybody remember where it was? So this serves as a bad as a bad loot filter. It's not as good as a loot filter, but it's like a it's like I'll call it a bad loot filter. And it's one point five x. It's one point five times the highest affix, and I I believe it's always max rolled. So this is your this is your bad loot filter, but it's better than nothing. Right? Cuz eventually, once you have your base gear, you're not going to are you going to waste your master working materials on any item that doesn't have a greater affix of something that you really want? Would you would you do that? I doubt it. Yeah, so you get the greater affix that you want, you temper it, and you get fought. They said the first craft is free, so I'm assuming you get seven, seven tries, because on an ancestral item, on an ancestral item, you have two slots, the first two are free, and then you get five rerolls, right? So the, I assume the weapon one is free, the offense one is free, and then it's five rerolls. So you get seven tries to get the perfect amount of affixes. Then you take it to master working and you try to crit into whatever you're looking for. I have a question though. Is it smarter to not do that? It depends on how good the affixes are for tempering, but what if one of the first three things that drop are the thing that you want to crit in what if you master work it first to only give you a one in three each time versus a one in five if you added if you added the tempering first the problem is is you would be burning mats if you didn't get the right rolls but this would give you a higher chance to get the god roll if this was the best stat So there's going to need to be great, great. Oh, sorry, Cammy. Hi, Cammy. I just, I just kind of kicked you in the back, didn't I? I didn't realize you were sleeping under me. No. It's going to be case by case. I'm going to have to look at like all the S tier meta builds and come up with what's the best. What are the BIS items and where do they roll in the stat ranges? Are they a unique roll from tempering or not? you would lose four out of five Mastercraft updates. How, how would we lose them? Well, you, right, you can reset, right, but yes. But to, to illustrate this though, Okay, so there's two things, right? There's tempering, and there's master working. That, that. Tempering, English is hard. Okay, and then master working. Okay, so tempering, you get seven tries. So this is how you're limited. You're limited by seven tries. Masterworking, in order to get the materials to masterwork, you have to go deep into the pit. So this is limited by mats. So for a casual player who might find monster level 100 difficult, which is the beginning of the pit, and they, they explicitly said at pit level one, 
that you are not going to be able to get the mats that you need to do great master working. So you need to go much further than monster level 100. So if we have an item, here's a sword. If we have an item with three stats on it, and we got the greater stat on this one, we could master work it first to try to hit this beautiful stat. But the problem is, is while, and by the way, you can't reset this, and you can reset this one, you would be burning through these expensive mats. So that's another consideration. Because even if master working first is the smarter thing to do with infinite mats, people might not have infinite mats. So since tempering is a lot lower of a cost, you might add four and five before you masterwork to make sure that the one time that you can masterwork is on a completed item. Because if you screw it up, then you'd have to reset it. But you'd lose the free general tempering steps for not tempering it first. Oh, that's true. You're right. So then it then it becomes an even more complicated math equation. So how much does this upgrade matter to you? Would you be willing to give up the little upgrades right here? Probably not, right? Probably not. So I guess you temper first. It probably wouldn't mean that much to you, would it? It might get the upgrades automatically. That's true. Maybe. Okay, I have to test this. These are these are actually gr this is actually this is actually getting me excited cuz this is actually going to take some math and some calculation. That's a great question. Which one first does does master working retroactively apply if you temper afterward? We must we must know if that's true or not. That's good. That's nice. The thing is, is master working is global on the weapon. It's master working 12 of 12 with the crits aligned to it. So that makes me think that the auto might be happening. I think they said any stat can crit. The only exception is the legendary power or the unique power at the very bottom cannot crit. Any stat, any affix can crit. The only thing that can't crit is a legendary power or a unique power at the bottom. If it does auto apply, it shouldn't, and you'd still miss out on critting the four out of the five. But that's by, isn't that by design though? That, that's why we, what you said is what, why we want to do that. That's the whole idea behind it. What if this is the stat that you want and not the ones that are tempered? It gives you a one in three instead of a one in five to the third power, right? It's a 1 in 27 versus a, what is it, a 1 in 125. If it auto-applies and you want the stat, why wouldn't you do that?
there's definitely some theory crafting and some calculation and some mechanics that must be understood. And then it seems like there will be a right answer here. Like you will be able to calculate for an individual item the correct answer. But I need to, we need to know the answers to these mechanics before we would know what the right answer is. Right, but yes. So what you're saying is true. What what you're saying is true, but it still is a choice, right? Okay. So so this is confusing. So let's let me illustrate this in a simple way. This is tempering. This is master working on an item. Um we will start with one, two, and three. Let me start over here. Let me make this one, two, and three. Tempering is gonna add four and five. Okay, so we this is the question we're this is the question that we're trying to answer. Should we temper first or should we master work first? Now, we, we gain something and give something up in either situation, right? If we temper it first, again, it, it's, you have to make a lot of assumptions here. You have to make a lot of assumptions. Like, if, the, if, you, if you master work at first and temper after, if you don't get the nine upgrades that you would have otherwise gotten, then it's going to be tempering. Um, Let's say it auto applies. If it auto applies, then we ask, all right, which one should we do? So if you master work, so the, the thing that can brick the item more is tempering. Because tempering, you have seven tries. That's it. Seven tries. And if these things don't turn out well, it's bricked. It's over. It's gone. Master working is only limited by mats, which might be a big limitation to casuals, depending upon how, how the Blizzard explained it. You get seven tries because the first two are free. First two are free, so you get seven, right? The first two are free. Okay, so... If we temper first, and we uh, we don't care about succeeding, we only care about bricking the item. If we just brick the item immediately, what did we gain? We gained the master working mats. So when we temper first and we brick it, we gain mats. But if we master work first, we gain math. And that's only if you want one of these three stats. Because when you're going, to crit, when you're going through and crit, you, ha you have to hit a 1 in 3 three times, which I think is a 1 in 27. If you temper first, you have to hit a 1 in 5 three times, which is 1 in 125 going to take you five times more tries to hit the perfect item five times if you temper first so here we could gain math like 5x the number of items and then we try to brick it which it could brick afterward but maybe you're okay with one dead stat if you hit the miracle affix if you just if you just brick the master working, you don't ha even have to temper it. You could just throw it away. Does it now? Does it make sense that in some cases one or the other could be better? We won't know until we understand the mechanics. 
And we also need to understand if there's ever a situation where these three are better than the special affixes that tempering can put on. If four and five are always the best affixes, then there's no question about it. Tempering is always better. If it doesn't auto apply, tempering is probably almost always going to be better. But if those two things don't apply, then actually master working the end game thing might be smarter. You can't brick master working. You can always reroll. People don't have infinite time. You and I might have infinite time. Casuals, they don't have time to go really deep in the pit and live there all day long and build up a ton of mats to master work 30 items. So yes, you can reset it, but it doesn't sound like you're going to be able to master work an unlimited amount of items. Remember, you have a whole character. You also have to do your helmet, your gloves, your chest, your amulet, your ring. Screw, but screw the casuals, Rax. If you're rich and all of this stuff works, you'll probably master work first. If you can just do it infinitely. Yeah, guys, you will always, you're always going to add the affixes. There's no universe in this whole crafting thing where you won't upgrade everything and add the affixes. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the order in which you do it. This is the only thing that we're trying to solve. Which order should you do it in? I'm not talking about skipping either of them. I'm only talking about the order. You'll do the tempering first. Okay, well, I'm going to go to the P... What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the PTR. I'm going to test it a million times, and then I'm going to make a video telling you what you should do. But if you just want to temper all the time, you can. But I'll go, I'll go test it for you if you want. I'm going to test it. And I will figure out what the right answer... There's definitely a right answer here. There's certainly a right answer. We just need to figure out what it is. It won't be hard to figure it out. It's, it's not going to be hard. We will solve it probably within an hour. Maybe faster. Can you make summon druid work? You know, one of the best leveling skills in the game is... I think they changed it. Is it... It was Poison Creeper, now it's Vine Creeper or something, one or the other. This, this thing absolutely fries. And now it gets 100% of your stats. So I think, uh, does that include the weapon damage? Do you get the, the weapon damage from your, from your weapon? I mean, does that count? I mean, the Poison Creeper is just going to annihilate everything. No, it said every... No, Athos, it's not Necro Minions only. It said, every, it said everything in the game on the slide, right? Didn't it say exactly the opposite on the slide? It said it applied to everything. Not only Necromancer Minions, like Druid Wolves 2. Not only Necromancer Minions. It's all Minions. You guys are making me very self-conscious. Everything that I say to chat of how I think something works, chat tells me it's wrong. You guys are making me question my reality. Ignore chat. I love chat. But you guys are making me anxious. You guys are keeping me on my toes, yeah.
Okay. Well, huh? What a day, dude! I have a chess game going. Hell yeah! <sighs> All right. Um. Do I think it would be better if you couldn't hit the same affix three times like master working? Someone someone gave me um someone made a comment to me the other day and I actually thought it was very brilliant that I want to share with you guys. I thought this was absolutely brilliant. He didn't really he said something simple to me like I made a comment in one of my videos saying that I can't remember. I can't even remember what game it was. It was last epoch or Diablo four or Pew. I can't remember. And I said, the game is trying to give you steady progression. And he timestamped that moment in my video. And he said, that is exactly what I hate about ARPGs. I started to think about that. And I actually, the more that I thought about it, the more that I thought that that was actually a pretty brilliant comment. And they actually kind of talked about it. Um, they actually kind of talked about it in uh, the campfire here. So he, this, is, this is time played in the game, and this is your power. Okay, this is your power. That's PWR, power. That's a, t oh, Jesus, all right. P-W-R, your power. So let's pretend that someone, like the average person's progression in a game is like that, okay? If you made this game, the more that I think about it, this game would be terrible. And the reason why I think it would be terrible, the more that I thought about this, is because you need opportunities in the game to, great at, at a minimum, greatly succeed and greatly fail. So, for example, uh, when you're going through and you have a chance to find the unique that you need in your build, there needs to be the opportunity for something like this to happen and then your power level barely increases because that thing is carrying you so hard, and then uh, maybe like you don't get anything for a while, and then all of a sudden uh, you hit like a greater affix that's really good, and it brings you back to even. And then you try a slam, and it does this. And then you try another slam, and it bricks your really good items, so maybe your power actually goes down for a little bit. But... The thing about this moment, this moment, you know, all these different moments, is it actually made you felt feel something. You're interacting with the game. I finally get my Wraith Lord helmet with 2 LP, and I slam it, and I miss it. It's, it's even though this moment feels so bad, it's going to make the moment where I hit it feel so good. It's kind of like the analogy, you never know if you have a good day if you've never had a bad day. So the fact that they're trying to give you these moments where things can go horribly or fantastically well or horribly bad, I think is actually a much better video game than this just stagnant plus two damage plus three int. Oh, world tier four, you gained 20% uh, damage. You got an uber unique plus 20% damage. This is exactly the way to make the most boring shit ever. You know what I mean? You're ignoring the new you're ignoring mob scaling. I'm talking about everything relative. I'm talking about I'm talking about everything uh, I'm not cons I'm encapsulating every single factor into this graph for an overall experience. Yes, I haven't plotted every single every single variable here, but the general idea it's the it's the high level idea here guys
you want your you want your experience to be the green line even if you end up at the same spot than the red line so i thought that first of all it, it proves to you that i actually read the comments and it, when he said what you just described rax this straight line is what i hate about arpgs he said i missed he didn't say this but what i assume he meant he's like i miss going through diablo 2 and in like act one nightmare or something you get an oculus to drop do you have any idea how fucking powerful you are if an oculus drops in act one or even if you get like if, if when you finally get your base in like the cows in normal to make your your spirit sword or or your insight when, when this moment happens, you become so much stronger. Where, where is that in Diablo 4? Where am I ever getting the rune that I need to make insight? Where am I ever getting my base to make a spirit? When do I ever get an oculus that carries the shit out of me? It never happens. And even though the people on my chat every day say, God, I just found the thing that I needed and I went in the forge and I slammed it and I didn't get what I wanted. Well, for some people, they would say, yeah, no, but no, Rex, that's actually not what I wanted to happen. But you need to have those moments in order to make the moments where you succeed feel so good. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Friction. Friction in the game. Yeah. Th that, that's part of the point, though. What Jet said. It's not even... It's not just the fact that the green line does happen. That's not really what I'm worried about. I'm worried about that it can happen. This, this, this in the current game, it doesn't happen, and it can't happen. At least now, sort of, maybe, it can happen. Because you're kind of playing with hope, like, oh, I'm finally killing this boss. This boss has a 10% chance to drop Oculus, and if I get the Oculus, it's going to carry me all the way to World Tier 4. And usually he doesn't drop it. But the one time he does, you're just having like the greatest season ever. You can drop Uber Uniques at level 55 now. Yeah, it's going to be like a 0% chance, but. Does trade mess up the curve? To me, this curve really applies like in the beginning of a season, right? Any ARPG that has trade, you can just trade for Twink Gear later and you just determine your path from, from then on. So this is mostly just at the start of a season. Everything is manipulated past that point. By the way, just... If you guys don't mind, let me generically thank everybody. Thank you so much for all the subs, gifted subs, follows, memberships, everything. I appreciate it. Normally I read every single one, but there's been so many today. If you don't mind, let me just thank everybody uh, generally. I appreciate it. Thanks for everything. Do I like the new updates? Well, here's, here's the way that I, I view it. 
So what has Diablo 4 gotten since the launch? The Nightmare Dungeon teleport was huge. They fixed a million. The, the game was so buggy. So many bugs. Uh, Helltide is now way better. Now they have the item system. The item system and the resistance and armor is way better than what they started with. I'm, inclu I'm including the changes that are coming in Season 4. Um, uh, the Codex is better. We get to keep our renown now. The horse actually does things. We didn't, we got a couple of stash tabs. We did get a couple of them, but I think the stash tabs are going to be a million times better next season. So I'll give them credit on the stash tabs. The gems is better. WASD is a thing. By the way, another thing we need to cry about is the fact that we don't have an overlay. We have a pinnacle boss system with some new bosses so that might be better. They changed, this kind of goes into items, but they, they increased the item level and they made a much better allocation for how 925s drop. It now actually has crafting in the game. Well, they do have, they have pinnacle bosses. You can you they, you can summon two level two hundred versions of the boss, right? That's what the Stygian thing. You can fight level two hundred and Dariel and level two hundred Duriel. It's with the Stygian whatever Stygian in very far in the pit summons uh, level two hundred Uber bosses. With uh, I don't think they had this in the slide, but they they have ten x the drops. By the way. Yeah, I don't think they explained it very well. But the quality of the bosses is very low. I think the only boss that they designed, granted, her hitboxes are stupid as hell. Other than the hitboxes and everything being red, I think the only boss that was very well designed as an actual challenge is Lilith. Like, they need to make some bosses that actually, like, oh, and, and Tomb Lord. Thanks for the donation, man. We need to ask for slight recolor on items that drop with greater affixes outside of these icons. <laughs> Sir, and that will be a slight middle ground to a loot filter. Eno, your comment is so nice. You say, hey, Blizzard, don't give me a loot filter. Just give me a recolor. That'll be like a good middle ground and that'll be okay. You are a lot nicer than I am. That is not what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, give me a fucking loot filter. And then if they won't give us that, then we'll do your idea. But you're very, very nice. Like, I want to invite you to Thanksgiving dinner and my birthday party. You're such a genuine nice guy. I'll be the bad guy. And I'm going to say, where the fuck is my loot filter? And then if we don't get that, then we'll try your nice idea. I'll be the bad guy, and then when it... <laughs> yeah, you can, Frosty. <laughs> Frosty's here getting clips for his next video. <laughs> That's going to be the start of the next video. Anyway, okay, so back to the point. How do I feel about everything? This is what they've done in essentially one year, right? May The game launches on like June 1st. It's May 14th or whatever the launch is. That's two weeks off of a year. So in one year, they did this. And another thing that cannot be underestimated 
is think about all the things that they did that didn't work that hopefully they won't repeat the same mistake. They learned to stop nerfing everything mid-season. They learned that these really slow seasonal mechanics suck. Um, you know, there are a lot of also hopefully learnings that hopefully copium they won't do again. So if Diablo 4 had released, like, let's, let's take a moment and let's do Men in Black. Oof. It just wipes everything that you know about D4. And D4 is coming out on May 14th for the first time. You never played it. You have no clue. Minions are now good. Minions now get 100% of your damage. So minion builds now will actually just fry. If the game launched with all of these things on May 14th and you had never played Diablo 4 before, what would you give it out of 10? If this was the launch, if you forgot all of the drama and all of the bullshit and it launched like this, what would you give it? Okay, I'm seeing maybe the average is like an 8. Maybe the average is an 8. Maybe an 8.5 as an average. And so if Diablo 4 had launched like this, I think it would be considered a very godly ARPG as the starting point. Um, so I do think after this patch, Diablo 4 as, as a video game will be in a good spot for its future for season five. You, you want to hear a little spoiler? You want me to give you a little spoiler? I, I actually don't know. I'll give you I'll give you as much information as I know. But uh Blizzard Blizzard ran these ideas by the content creators the previous week, right? There was a presentation and one thing that they did mention is season 5 is also going to be a very high like magnitude. They said season four is going to be our biggest season yet with all these changes, but season five will also be a very high magnitude. So, I mean, I, and season five might be the last season before the expansion. But they did mention that, uh, again, I don't know what season five is. I don't know what they're doing. I, I couldn't spoil it for you if I wanted to. But what they did tell us privately is season five will also be a very large magnitude. It's not just season four is their, is their huge season and then they're getting complacent. They said the next one is going to be uh, significant. Yeah, we might even get the seasonal theme triple goblins. Rax, that's marketing. Mm, maybe, but when 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 the content creators are talking to Blizzard privately, it's it's usually pretty uh it's pretty direct. It's less uh uh orchestrated, is that a word? We we just sit there and talk. Like let's just we, we can just get straight down to it. We talk very plainly, like, about the state of the game. There's less PR. It's less orchestrated. It's, let me, let me tell you how it is for real. Confirmed racks pitched last Epoch ideas to Diablo 4. Yeah, so you want to know what? When, D, when last Epoch released and when it was in open beta, Blizzard Every single person, the thousands of people that worked at Blizzard, they were completely oblivious to the game. They didn't pay attention to it. They didn't see their systems. It was all because of me. I sent them a message. And I said, have you guys taken a look at Last Epoch? And it was only in that moment that Blizzard figured it out. Only in that moment did they go take a look and put it all on Diablo 4. 
No, I'm, I, and for anybody, any of you who don't understand sarcasm, I'm kidding. Rax is the king. Thank you, Rax. <laughs> yep, there's another clip for Frosty's video. We're pretty much making the whole video right here. I did get a message from someone on the last Epoch team. I'm not going to say who it was because I don't want to throw them under the bus. But they did send me a message in the middle of the presentation. And they said, don't they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery? Lol. It was carve, it wasn't carve. We need to see gameplay though. They're hyping things up for no reason. I'll go there. I'll be there on the uh McFluffin. Hey McFluffin, what did you think about the uh what did you think about the uh the presentation? Are you heading out, or do you want to chat for five minutes about the uh, about the updates? I'd like to hear your thoughts. You guys know McFluffin? He writes the last Epoch guides for you, and he writes the Diablo 4 guides for you. He's one of the rare content creators that writes for both of them. You guys know McFluffin? You guys want to see what McFluffin has to say? Okay, most people know him. Hey, dude. Hey, can you guys hear McFluffin? Does he need to go up or down? Say something, buddy. What's up? Up, up. Okay. So, okay. Well, I have that already on. Can you keep chatting, buddy? Yeah, sure. No problem. Oh, I see. Yeah, that, that was a pretty crazy uh, campfire. That's the craziest one so far. There. That should be good. How was that, that I guess? Now we're good. All right. So tell me what you thought, man. They've been hearing from me for a while. Tell me what you think. Yeah, I can probably um, I can describe most of my thoughts in like two statements. Uh, itemization, way better. Thank you for taking stuff from Last Epoch. That was a good move. Good job, <laughs> Blizzard. Um, the pit is greater rifts, so if you enjoyed Diablo 3's endgame, you got their endgame. If you're like me and you didn't enjoy it, well, it sucks for us. Okay, so you, you don't like greater rifts. Why don't you like them? There is not anything like special going on in them. They're very, very basic content. So it's like, you know, you just run a greater rift and then you run the next highest greater rift. You run the next. I like juicing. I like um, more engaging mechanics. I like more meta progression. There's nothing of that in there. Okay. So let me, n not really playing devil's advocate, but let me, let me give you an opinion here. Let me ask you a question. Do you, pl uh, are you a PoE player? I am not a heavy PoE player. I play it more than I play Diablo 3, but there's some non-meta progression reasons why I just never really got into it super, super far. Okay, but y have you played it enough to understand, like, the mapping system and you get you, yeah. you go toward uber bosses, da-da-da-da-da? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let me pin PoE's mapping system against Diablo 3 Greater Rifts, all right? I'm going to give you a, maybe a hot take on this, and you tell me if you disagree with me and why I'm wrong. Sounds good. Okay, so the reason why... So I think PoE has the best endgame system of any ARPG, and the reason why I think the mapping system is the best is because of everything that is connected to the mapping system. The fact that you have a gotta catch them all system that where you get the Atlas passive points, which dictates your entire like end game uh, currency farming strategy. And the fact that some of the maps are very difficult and some of them are very rare, like some of the 
uh, unique or legendary maps. And then you also have the invitations where you do certain things or go through the map in a certain way. Um, and uh, then you fight the bosses, which can give you your... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember all the terminology from PoE. It's so overwhelming. You get your void stones. You get your favorite map slots. And then there's another component to it, which is the actual running through the map where you have a bunch of things going on. Some of them are actually kind of worthless, but then you can just block them out if you don't spec into them. But it spawns all the leak mechanics. It spawns the Val side areas. There's a bunch of crazy things going on there. And the, the, way, the reason why I would categorize the PoE as the best endgame system is because all of those things that are connected to the actual gameplay of running through the map. So this in every way completely eclipses and dwarfs Diablo 3's Greater Rift system. Everything that I just said almost completely does not apply to Diablo 3 Greater Rifts. You just increase the number by one. You try to get the highest thing on the leaderboard, and that's it. There is one thing, though, that I think Diablo 3 Greater Rifts do better than PoE mapping, which I also think is one of the most important things. The actual idea of going through the floors, the randomized tile sets, the randomized monsters, getting the pylons, and the way that you actually do the fighting in the, in the rift itself, I think, is more fun than PoE mapping. I also think it's more fun than going through a last epoch echo. So I think the only singular thing that greater rifts do better is the fun aspect of actually pushing the buttons in the rift itself but poe has so many beautiful systems connected to doing that it just completely dwarfs diablo 3. so if the greater if system could be brought forward that fun aspect of it and then you attach all of the beautiful systems that diablo doesn't have i think it could be godly what do you think about that take that's interesting. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd say the first off, we're not very far off on what we think the big differences are, if, if at all. Um, I don't know that I think that greater rifting is more fun than mapping baseline, but I don't know how to I don't know how to piece that apart because the fun thing about echoes or not echoes, not echoes at all. This is one of the areas where Ellie's pretty weak. Uh, the fun thing about mapping in PoE is that you do have all these distractions that are fun distractions where you're like, oh, there's a league mechanic that's like really cool and potentially very valuable. I should go do that. And so you're constantly getting these um, cool like hits of, oh, there's a piece of candy, piece of candy. I don't know how you do that in a rifting system that has a timer on it. Like, how do you get distracted? Because the entire goal is to not be distracted, have this singular goal of going as fast as you possibly can, which is a problem in LE right now as well. Um, to get to your objective, and that's all you want to do. I don't know how you bring that forward into into a system like that. So the greater rift system is is like the end game thing. The way that Diablo solves that, again, not in a very great or deep way, is in it. Well, now they have the visions of enmity, which is kind of a separate thing. But the way that Diablo solves that and makes it fun is with goblins. And goblins have, there's many, many more goblins in Diablo 3, but that's just one thing. PoE, again, completely eclipses it in types of activities and variety of activities. But goblins are kind of Diablo's uh, piece of candy. It's like getting candy corn. Uh, dude, like some of those goblins are good. Dude, the green goblins? The green goblins are godly. They give well, you the... I'll give it. I'll, I'll give you this. It's better than the D four goblins, <laughs> dude. I, dude. One of the only good things about Diablo three were the different goblins. How are we one year into development and the only goblin is just the stupid ass regular goblin? How is that yeah, even really a thing? Bad. It's really bad. I mean, at some point they're just not even trying, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the goblins as being that concept is actually, it's funny because um, Mike, the dev from EHG, has described a very similar thing, which uses goblins as an example of things that happen inside of, an, of a map or an echo or a, or a rift. But they're like the most basic concept of that, right? Like, you can't really get much more basic than a loot pinata. 
And this is what I worry about with Diablo in general. I'm not worried about itemization anymore. I think they're showing that they can adapt that. But I have not seen them do anything on Endgame ever that shows they know anything about how to make a deeper system that's more engaging and exciting and can be juiced. We've just seen two Endgame systems announced or launched in the past few months that were both about the most basic standard versions that you could possibly have. I need to see them show me that I can do juicing mechanics, I can have exciting, engaging things happen um, that are dynamic inside of the the gameplay that um, are also rewarding. I haven't seen any of that yet from from Diablo three or four. Yeah, I think uh, I think one of the one of the biggest problems, like one of it, one of the problems could be exactly what you said. They don't know how to do it, and if they and we're absolutely doomed if that's true, and it could be true. Another thing could be, I don't. I don't think it's been their focus. Like they, they keep saying that they're working on end game, but that, you know, actions speak louder than words. And I guess they have tried different things, but they said gauntlet is not an end game system. It's only like monster level 124 or something. The abattoir is here was an attempt, an attempt at an end game system, but that was pretty simple. And that also launched in a very, very terrible state. And this thing is just copying what they did in the last game. So it's like, is it that you can't make an endgame? Or is it that you're not working on an endgame like you're saying you are? And I, I yeah. guess I don't know. I, I thought it was really interesting, too, when Joe pointed out how, you know, how good the AOZ was. I'm like, did we see a different system than they saw internally or something? <laughs> That was not good. Um, it just was a very interesting lead into the pit by saying that was good, and here's what we learned from it. Like, well, oh, maybe not start like that. But um, but to your point of are they even really working on Endgame, I think that is the thing that I am still somewhat, I don't want to say optimistic, cautiously optimistic that they haven't really dug into the concept of Endgame the way they have clearly just dug into itemization and clearly looked at what other games were doing in the genre, which is now apparently an SRP, SARPG, it's a Sarpka, I guess, but uh, that uh, they haven't even looked into Endgame yet. And so when they do, they'll be like, oh, you know what? Actually, there's these other features to Endgame we had no idea about because we never look at other games and now we have. It's time to open up and like do some new things. So that's what I'm hoping will happen like season five, season six. So I'm not even trying to troll here. This is like an honest question. With like that opening speech in the campfire chat, if you were there in the beginning, I, I was genuinely listening and I was trying to understand what he was saying. Did you have any, like, did that make sense to you? Like, if it did, can you explain to me what they were talking about? It didn't make any yeah. sense to me. It, it was it was an odd way to describe. And I think what they're, what he's trying to say is, hey, guys, we understand that the systems of a game, of the game, or the systems that are in an ARPG are what's important and meaningful. And they have to have depth and they have to have excitement and they have to he's alluding to like PUE having multiple systems of league mechanics and the mapping system and the atlas passageway and like oh, these are exciting features um and i think for some reason he wanted to be like hey this is this is actually how we're describing the genre it's not a diablo like it's a systems arpg which is totally different than hollow knight which apparently now is an arpg i had no idea um so i think that's what he's trying to do so hey guys we understand that systems are important but he did it in a way that made them sound really boring which is you know, kind of unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, I I just think he was nervous, and I I feel bad for him. You know, the the one thing, the one thing that I think is true, which is like a, like I'm looking for a silver lining here. The one thing that I think is true is even if they had a really good end game system idea, and let's say they had uh, released it with season three or something, I don't think. The end game system is really even going to work if all of your underlying foundation building blocks of the game have these massive problems. When your items don't work, when your resistances don't work, when your armor doesn't work, when some classes are 300 times stronger than any other class, everything. So I think that whether they're working on the end game or not, this is the order of operations that had to happen. We needed to get the codex updated. We needed to get an item overhaul. We needed to get some form of crafting in the game. We needed to move 925 items away from just boss drops and world boss drops. 
So they keep talking about Endgame. We haven't really seen it too much. We're getting great riffs. Might be good, might not be good. But at least I think they did it in the right order. Yeah, I completely agree. What's the point of having like juicy mechanics and, you know, deeper end game system if everything that you're going to get rewarded for kind of sucks anyway? Uh, so getting good items and getting a good pro progression system for the items, I definitely think was the right approach. The, I think the only area where maybe they faltered here was by releasing an end game system with this that doesn't have any sort of depth and being like, oh, so that's what we're going to keep getting. Huh? Okay, that's not not great. I think that's the only thing that maybe they should have talked about this a little bit. If they have plans on using, maybe this is just a, you know, like a, it's a template, not a template, but like a starting position for an endgame system. And they want to add on more things. And if that's the case, if they would just say that, like, hey, guys, we understand that endgame systems, we want to have some depth and we want to have some juicing. We want to have all these different things. If they say that publicly, I think then a lot of this goes away. But as it is, we're just getting a system without any context like that within um, a patch that has a lot of depth and the itemization. Be like, well, wait, why is one of these getting deeper and the other one's still as shallow as it started as? Yeah, I think uh, I think at least at least part of the audience would have been OK with that. I also think there's a very large part of the audience that would have crucified them with this release without some kind of an end game release because what's going to happen here i'm assuming i mean we, we haven't we haven't tried it right so we'll just have to just have to see how it goes but what they keep saying is you're going to lose damage reduction it's going to be way harder to survive okay so that does impact me i'm playing hardcore and now i don't have my cheat death elixir so there is actually maybe a very real chance that i will die on day one, which is exciting. It's going to make the game better. Um, but essentially, if they hadn't released some kind of end game with this, what I'm assuming is going to be a power creep. I'm guessing that this is, I mean, we'll have to see how the balancing goes, but I'm only assuming people are going to get more powerful with these greater affixes, getting an extra stat on items, making legend, making the uniques like much more interesting and higher affix ranges and da 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 da. If everyone's getting more powerful, one of the most common complaints is why are we getting powerful? It's another thing that people say in Last Epoch all the time. Rax, I made my full detonating arrow marksman. What do I do? Oh, you just push higher corruption. Oh, well, right, but I did that. I'm a corruption 600. Well, then what do I do? Well, I don't know. So we get the pinnacle boss system next season. Um, I think a lot of the I think a lot of the internet would have said it's been one year, and we have the massive item update and we don't have anything to use it on, I will never forgive Blizzard for that. I don't know if a statement saying, we're working on it, it comes later again, was is going to cut it here. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe I should clarify it. I didn't mean that they shouldn't release this at all and then say they're going to do more, but maybe um, you release it and say, hey, this is the first iteration of this system, and we have bigger plans for it. We're going to broaden this thing out and make it really, really cool, but we want to get something out for you guys that gives you that scaling and that difficulty that allows you to really enjoy the itemization. I think if they would have done something like that, it'd be a nice like balance between you're still giving you something to push for and to strive for and to make the game more challenging. But we also recognize that this system is still a little bit bare bones, and we need to do more, and so we're planning on doing that. If they would have said something like that, I think they would have been in a good spot. Do you think, like in your estimation, do you think if these changes go fairly well into the PTR and they have a pretty fun season four, do you think a season four will capture your attention and be fun for you for at least a while? Yeah, here is my prediction for most players, and I think I will fall into this, but maybe a little bit farther along. My prediction is that players are going to really enjoy the new itemization changes. They're really going to enjoy doing the crafting, getting exciting dopamine hits from um, the, what are they calling them? The not exalted, exalted items dropping. Um, they're going to really enjoy... Greater them. affixes? Yeah, greater affixes, that's it. Uh, they're really going to enjoy the, the um, crafting mechanics of adding affixes to them. And then they're going to get to the pit and they're going to start to craft on those things. And it's going to be every four before they get a, a nice hit because the first three are not that exciting, but there's something, they're good. And I, my expectation is that Blizzard is going to completely screw up that balance and they're going to be extremely grindy and in a system that's very basic and players are going to burn out on in that pit. 
Yeah, so I think my my prediction without having tested it is going to be very similar to yours. I think uh, the people who still play Diablo, who still quote unquote enjoy Diablo, the way that I envision them playing is they make one or two characters, not a ton of characters. They currently level up. It's not that fun of a process because they don't have the dopamine hits. There's no crafting. There's no real end game thing other than just hunting Duriel. They get to the, they get kind of the end game and they're kind of like, well, there's not too much to do. I tried the season. I leveled up my pet a bit. I, I made the charge barb and then they're kind of burnt out. So I think the, the pro, the, the length of time here playing the game will probably be similar. You're going to level up one to a hundred faster. You are going to craft some end game stuff. You're going to jump into the pit. Helltide might be a little bit more fun. You don't maybe don't have to farm Duriel as much. Go kill Andariel for the first time. And maybe all of that balances out to roughly the same amount of time, maybe slightly longer. And then, yes, I think it's going to be a burnout because the end game system isn't as good. But one prediction that I will make is I think the journey is going to feel a lot better. You're going to level up faster. You're going to have more dopamine hits. If these class balance shakeups are as good as they say they are, might be some new builds to play. There might be some really cool uniques. Crafting for the first time, killing Andariel for the first time. The pit is probably the first system that might actually be a little bit of fun. Maybe people will have more fun in the gauntlet when nobody, everybody has shit gear and nobody has the uber uniques. Week one of the gauntlet might be somewhat entertaining and uh, fun to compete in. So I think the, t- the, the time that people play the game might not go up, but I'm expecting the quality of that time to go up. Yeah, 100%. I, I think the time will go up a bit too. I think it'll take people a little bit longer to get to the point to where they're actually running into the pit and figuring out that it's, you know, it's grindy and then maybe get burnt out on that. But up until that point, yeah, all the things that they added, especially itemization wise, but even like the hell tides is going to affect this in a positive way. If, if that system just feels better and you can do it from, uh, from tier one. So world tier one, world tier two, you have more activities to do. You have more interesting loot to get, uh, more things you can do with that loot. All that stuff's got to make it feel better. Yeah. Do you think, if someone were to ask you a simple question, do you think Diablo 4 did enough, whatever whatever that means? What would be your answer to that question? I would say if they did enough for now. That long term, this hasn't fixed everything, but this is a massive step in the right direction of showing that they ha- they're starting to get some idea of what an ARPG looks like, apparently an SARPG looks like. Um, and so if they can take what they're learning here and apply it to the other s- systems of this systems ARPG that they've got, then they could be in a pretty good state in the next six to 12 months. Yeah, I think for me, like the analogy that I would draw is like the chain reaction of some of the unfortunate things that have happened over the last few months has been like a ship sinking and like it's just pointing further and further down and it's almost like teetering to the point of no return where a lot of a lot, i know some people that have already written off diablo 4 i don't give a shit about this update they're already checked out um, a lot of people really regret unfortunately spending the 70 bucks uh one year ago on this game they'll have there's no chance they'll ever buy the expansion for any amount of money I think for anybody that's not in that state, I think they've done enough to at least make people question continuing, at least maybe to log in and give it a try. And that to me is actually a pretty a pretty big step because they were they were at a pretty steep incline straight into the ocean yeah. with uh, how the last couple of months went. So I think there will be an I think they've done enough to get people to log in for season four and give it a try. And we'll see how the quality of the experience is there. Another thing that people are missing that has a huge factor on your fun in Diablo 4 is a seasonal theme. This is just the changes to the game. There will be a theme on top of this. And the, the, the team that's designing it is the only team that made anything that was any fun in the game ever. So there is a possibility that there might be a fun theme on top of it. And then we might be able to get something going for a few weeks of fun. Maybe. Yeah, my my only worry about this season, and to be clear, if this season isn't any good, like the seasonal actual mechanics, I'm still 
pretty happy overall with the, with with season four. But if um, the one thing that stood out to me that Joe said when he was talking about the season is that it was like kind of all hands on deck with this other stuff. Like he made that pretty clear, which makes me think that maybe the seasonal mechanic isn't going to get as much love as it otherwise would have. That is definitely reading into it a little bit, but because of that, I am kind of, I'm my optimism, I'm keeping it, you know, I'm reserving. Like, this might not be a very good, if it is a good seasonal mechanic, I'll be blown away. I'll be, that's exciting. But uh, I'm kind of kind of expecting right now that it won't be amazing. I don't think, um, so I understand that that's how you feel about it. You'll take, like, the general updates to the game and be happy with it no matter what. I don't think that's how the general public is going to feel, though. I think if the seasonal theme sucks, you're going to lose something majorly. Uh, the, all the fans are going to lose the faith in in the seasons. Like the seasons of Diablo are a defining characteristic in what get people to come back and check out the game every once in a while. There's almost no one in the universe, I don't even think Rob does this, where you play every single day of every single season. I think it is critical that they have a very good season because you can't have people lose faith in the whole idea of seasons. So I think uh, I think there's still a lot on the line here, man, if I'm being honest. Yeah, that's fair. I, I would also say, though, I don't think D4's had a good season yet. Season 2 is the best of the seasons they've had, but if you compare it to you know other games with seasons, which right now is PoE, they've never come close to what you know the, the level of of a design that Pee Wee puts into their seasons. So um, I, maybe the bar's not that high anyway, and they can't hit it. It's just, it, it purely was from what Joe said that I started to think, well, maybe that season's not going to be very good, because this is the team that did season two, which was definitely the best season so far of all the seasons. So, um, but yeah, you make a good point that uh, if the season just looks absolutely terrible, then some players won't even get far enough in to look at the itemization change to to care about that, and they really care about the theme of the of the season and they're just not going to get what they're looking for. You want to know something that honestly kind of shocks me. Like I I've said this so many times and I, I don't mean to keep beating a dead horse and it's in the past and it's whatever, but it actually just continues to happen. So I guess it's still relevant. I remember when they promised us over and over and over that seasons in Diablo four will be a much greater magnitude than anything that we've ever seen in the Diablo franchise. In my opinion, as someone who knows all of the Diablo, I've never played Diablo 1, but I know Diablo 2, Diablo 3, and Diablo 4, all of them very, very well. I think the last four-ish seasons of Diablo 3 have obliterated anything that Diablo 4 has done by a huge margin. Diablo, the, the Diablo 3 team introduced an entirely new endgame progression system that sent you to every single corner of Diablo 3 to complete it, and it was actually fun. They released an entirely new item class called Ethereals, which gave you god-tier powers never before seen in the game for like 30 different class or 30 different builds on every single class. Then they came out with sanctified items, which were so godly they implemented the mechanic into the into the game itself. Then they did things that manipulated the cubes, which enabled completely different builds that were never possible before. And in Diablo 4 Season 1, we got malignant hearts, which takes five seconds for the heart to rise, five seconds for the heart to go down. And the powers there were way worse than even some of the powers that they put into the ethereals. I mean, it's just not close. Like, I, I, I really don't understand who at Blizzard was looking at the two seasons and was brave enough to go out there and say, Diablo 4 seasons are on a completely different magnitude than anything you've ever seen in a Diablo game. Like, uh, I think they actually did have some internal talks of, like... Like, Diablo 3 team, can you, like, uh, stop doing all this stuff? Because you're making us look bad. But, I mean. Yeah, it's one of those areas where you look at it and you're like, this is an example of why we're not sure they understand what an ARPG is uh, or what the genre has become. And, yeah, it's an interesting point that the D3 seasons, at least mechanically, were, were more interesting. My guess is that they looked at it and be like, well, we're adding more content, we're adding a boss and we're adding malignant tunnels and we're going to make a joke about that on on our fireside chat that's going to go viral so clearly this is way better 
Um, but that's not what people are really, I mean, that's good stuff, but if all of that is also just shallow in every, in every respect, it's just not, it's not what people are looking for from a seasonal mechanic. Yeah. Well, well, here we are, man. It feels like every time I reflect back on this whole thing, I feel like I'm like 90 years old, man. It's like, Jesus. It's only been five years, but it feels like it's been 50 years. I'm chatting with Mick Fluffin, guys. He's a max roll writer from, he's on the D4 team. He writes the Druid Guides with Boiler, and he's on the uh, Last Epoch team. You write, you write all kinds of guides for Last Epoch, right? I've got, I think, 54 guides on the Last Epoch branch. He wrote 54 of the guides on the Last Epoch branch. You should know Mick Fluffin if you don't know him. He's a god. Yeah, when I saw that you had been streaming for five years, and then I looked back and saw how long I've been streaming, I've got to say, it made me a little depressed, because I've only been streaming like uh, 11 months less than you or something like that, and look at look at how much you've grown. You are, you are an absolute god. Like, it's, <laughs> it's pretty awesome to see how much you've grown. Um, and then realizing that, actually, I started like 2019. That's like not that far away from Rax, and here I am. I mean, I'm doing okay for myself, but holy, my, Rax is just unbelievable. He's so good. Dude, I dude, I am not the god around here, man. And I I I really consider you and everybody from Maxwell completely my equals, honestly, usually way smarter than me. Uh I, I really don't know. Like I just made a I streamed every day for five years video. What I was originally gonna do for that video is I was gonna make like tips and tricks to become a streamer. I literally sat there and I was like, wait, what would I even say? Like, I don't even know, like what dictates success in this, but um, I am not a god. The, in no way is that who I am. And I don't know. I, I'm really, I feel very lucky to have worked beside you and everybody else on the Maxwell team. And most of chat, not everybody, some of the people in chat, you should have heard some of the shit that they said to me earlier. But uh, I don't know, man. I just feel, I just feel very lucky to be here. It's just, it's just a great time. Even when Diablo Four, the ship is sinking, it's still it's still fun to be here. Well, I appreciate your humility, Rax, but I will tell you it in the most positive way. I look up to you. Like I just think you are. Uh, you, there's a reason why you're as big as you are. It's not pure luck, man. And I, I don't know that you could transfer that to other people. I don't know if it's possible. So that video would be very difficult to make. But uh, you deserve everything that you have. Well, we're we're gonna we're gonna get you up to the same level. Uh, you have. The, the the thing that I don't like about the whole content creation thing is a lot of the best people never get the credit. I feel like my entire career, I get 10 times the amount of credit for anything that I do. Like, and it, it it's really not fair. And I've thought, tried to thought, think of a million different ways to try to even the scales. And I have never came up with some great solution, but, uh, I don't know, man. We're we're all equal here. It, we're all equal. Hey, and I uh, just appreciate getting to come on your stream and talk to you like this about this kind of stuff. This is so much fun for me. It's why I got into it in the first place. So even if I was, I don't ever have to be as big as you. As long as I can be big enough to just keep doing it, that's always been my dream. We can easily make that happen, man. And by the way, if you guys wouldn't mind, watch this one. If you guys don't mind, let me uh, give a shout out. I never remember. I always type your name and then it says it's not a uh, not a name. Let's see, shout out Lone Star underscore McFluffin, right? Correct. If you guys wouldn't mind, over on the Twitch side, throwing him. By the way, he he. This is the guy that says he looks up to me. This is the guy with the master's degree in AI. McFluffin has a master's degree in AI. Me and chat argue about AI. We did it today for an hour in last epoch before before uh, D4 started. If you guys want to chat AI, this guy has a master's degree in it. So when the AI robots are, are ruling us, he's going to be the only one who can fight them. Oh, no, I could just tell you why philosophically they, they decided to take over. That's okay. that's that's where I'm good at because I got the the philosophy stuff, but I can't tell you how they like mechanically got there. That's way aren't aren't don't you have an engineering degree? I started in engineering, but then I didn't want to do engineering. They wouldn't give me a full ride, so then I 
worked full time. And then my job gave me a full ride in whatever I want. So I got my degree in mathematics. So no engineering. Okay, no, only degree. mathematics. I see. Yeah. I can see why uh, you think you have to look up to me and my, uh, my, my philosophy degree. You over here in mathematics degree. Blizzard could use you, by the way. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> Blizzard could use all of us, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, mathematics, dude. That is so beyond uh, that. And engineering are so beyond what my brain can comprehend. You are, uh, well, you are incredibly intelligent. Well, after I graduated, let me tell you something. I never once had to find the volume of any hyperbolic paraboloids. So I don't know how useful it really is, to be yes. honest. Would you wait till season six? Season six, they're releasing uh, the the third the third axis in calculus. If they do that, then I will have a major advantage. We did. I did ask for a deeper, more complex endgame. Well, not technically complex, but that's how they're maybe going to read it. And so here we go. Now your mathematics degree is going to come into play full force in season six, and you're going to absolutely dominate even more so than usual. Oh my god, dude! All right, well, McFluffin's giving me too many compliments, so we're gonna have to let him go. I'm probably gonna end the stream here, guys. I'm also, I'm, I'm just, I'm just exhausted. This is, this is so much D4 for one day. Hey, man, I appreciate you. Keep doing a godly job. I see you. I know you've raided me a thousand times. I gotta raid you back. You're never on when I'm done, but I'll get you back. Hopefully, got some follows from this, uh, guys. Can we have a round of applause for McFluffin? Isn't this guy great? Thanks, dude, for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Always fun to talk with you. We'll chat again. Later, man. Later, dude. McFluffin, guys. Follow him. Talk to him. He's real smart. He's, he's given me way too much credit. He's doing exactly what everybody does. Way too much credit for everything. You bought McFluffin. Your, you bought Last Epoch because of McFluffin. <laughs> you bought McFluffin. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Rax. And to the Maxwell team, at the end of the day, we're all gamers looking to have fun and escape reality for a bit. Too many people forget that we all want the same thing. We want fun games. We want fun games, exactly. You hope he streams PoE? Tell him to stream PoE. He probably will. Yeah, McFluffin, you guys should know him. He's very smart. There's very few max roll riders that we put on two branches. He's on two branches. So he's he's real smart. Your first ever Twitch sub to any content creator was McFluffin. That's that's a good choice, man. Does McFluffin have a YouTube? I believe he does. I believe so. I don't know. YouTube, McFluffin, Last Epoch, McFluffin Gaming. Yes, I'll sub to him. Here, here's his YouTube if you'd like to throw him a sub. He's got 7K subs. There you go. I just pasted it in chat. What's the copyright status of Last Deepak? I'm sure people have already stolen my idea and put it on Reddit. But you guys saw it here first. I have video proof that I came up with it. I did it in paint live. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to hang it up there. That was, that was fun. Going to let's raid Woody. Let's give Woody some love and see what Woody thought about it. Yo, Asmongold's Asmongold's title is the Riot MMO was canceled. It better not have been. That better not be true. It's delayed by years? Oh my god. No, I didn't see it. I'm going to have to look it up right now. An indefinite delay. God damn it. That is horrible news. Guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you. We'll be back on tomorrow. We'll do last epoch. Or no, tomorrow's PoE. 
Well, we'll play last. We'll do the same thing. Play last epoch and then POE news, right? Man, it's going to be a good day. Good week for, uh, it's going to be a good week for ARPGs, man. It all went to shit when Gro Ghost Crawler left. Maybe that's why he left. That's very bad news. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you so much for all the gifted subs and the raids and the donations and everything. Thanks for being good people. Thanks for the follows, the likes on YouTube, everything. I really appreciate you guys. We go again tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be PoE. Can't wait. Good night, guys.